Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And uh, I thought it might be useful to start with a little introduction, une petite introduction. And basically, uh, well, in this introduction, it will be quite short, don't worry. So welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And I just wanted to let you know a few things. And the first one is that you should definitely have a look at uh, the version because I am doing quite many videos and uh, it might be so that uh, this version, I mean the version you are watching right now, is not the latest one because I will add uh, regularly new videos, new lessons. So basically have a look at uh, the version just to be sure that you get uh, the latest one. Okay. The second thing that uh, we should uh, actually define or see together, because I've been having so many questions regarding this topic, uh, what French do I speak or uh, so what French do I uh, teach and I'm coming from France and I'm coming from this area that we call Les Pays de la Loire, uh, which is somehow considered by the French Academy as without any accent. So basically the French I will teach will be the French from France. Okay, so basically nothing to do with uh, uh, Quebec, Canada or uh, Belgium or basically it will be the, the, the French from France. Okay, uh, the third thing I wanted to actually clarify or see with you uh, je suis à votre écoute. So basically, I am listening to you, and uh, normally I try to make the videos according to the the feedback I receive from uh, from you. Uh, it is really difficult to please everyone, so I try to make videos that will uh, basically please everyone, but it's quite difficult. So um, use the feedback. We use the comment. Uh, options if you want to actually ask for uh, specific topics or uh, if you didn't understand everything and I will try to reply or I will try to make a new video and include this video in the next version okay and the last thing is actually if you want to go further then there is a website and it's www .net. so there you can find quite many uh, other well, things like uh, PDFs and like flashcards and uh, well, you, you can you can go there and have a look. If you want to have some uh, private tutoring, it's always uh, well also possible. We just need to 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 find uh, suitable times uh, and uh, we try to arrange ourselves. But uh, it's it's another option if you go if you want to go further in your studies. Okay, so we can start right now. Avant de commencer, so before we start learning French together, um, I just wanted to actually tell you something. And it's the fact that uh, French language and English language, well, they've got a special, special relationship. Um, well, the, the first thing that, of course, you probably know, like many other languages, French uh, tend to take quite many new words from English. So these, these are called les néologismes. Okay? So it does mean that you already know quite many words uh, in French. Uh, when we're talking about the new words, of course, you will have to pronounce them a bit differently. And the second thing that you should keep in mind, maybe you don't know that already, but the, until the 14th uh, century, uh, approximately 10,000 words were introduced into English language and they were coming from French and Norman. So what does it mean? It does mean that uh, you know a lot, and really I mean a lot, of French words already if you master uh, English. Uh, if it's your mother tongue, then it's it, it's quite uh, quite good for you. If it's not your mother tongue, then you will encounter while we do these uh, this series of videos uh, many words that you already know because you've been learning them already in English. Okay, so this is the thing, and well just wanted to start with that. Uh, keep in mind that you already know quite many words in French before you even start learning it. Okay, but now we will start with a serious thing and we will start learning French. Get ready. 
la structure de la phrase. So, the structure of the sentence in French. Okay, so you'll see that in a way it's not that different from uh, English because we are using English here to study and uh, for me to teach. So, it means that uh, for us it will be uh, quite nice because in a way French language will actually work or behave uh, in a way similar to English. So first, normally, will come the subject, le sujet. Then you will put the verb, le verbe. And after that, will come what we call les compléments. Okay, so this is the normal structure of a sentence. You start with the subject, then will come the verb, and after that you will complete the sentence with more information, so basically des compléments. Okay, so let's see now an example. Je suis français. Okay, je, I, so it's the subject here. Suis, so it's to be, you conjugate it. I am français, in that case it's an adjective and it's French. Okay, je suis français. So it, it goes in, in that order. You will start with the subject, then you will put the verb. You can see that the verb is conjugated here, so you will have to modify it according to the subject. And then after that you will put more informations, adjectives, or then, uh, well, other things if you want. And then a second example. Tu habites en France. Okay. Tu, it's you. Habit, the verb is habiter, and then you conjugate it here. Habiter is to live. En France, in France. Okay, so you can see that in that case, it's what we call complément de lieu. Okay, you introduce a place here. Tu habites en France. Okay, so, but then we keep the same order because that's normally the way we should do it. So, first the subject, then the verb. Same thing here, you conjugate it according to tu, and after that, in that case, you will put en France. All right, so this is what we call a normal sentence, une phrase normale. Okay, but then, of course, as usual in French, and this is something that you will discover uh, with all these videos that I will make, uh, we've got some exceptions po possible, and then the, the modification, you can modify the sentences um, in some cases. Okay, but then this is um, the basic, okay, you should keep in mind that first you will put the subject, then the verb is coming, and after that, les compléments. Le sujet, le verbe, les compléments. Je suis français, tu habites en France, and that's it. Les phrases simples, so simple sentences. And we'll see that right now. So, les phrases simples in French language are... La phrase interrogative, la phrase affirmative, la phrase négative, la phrase exclamative, la phrase impérative. Ok So, la phrase interrogative, interrogative sentence, la phrase affirmative, Affirmative sentence, la phrase négative, negative sentence, la phrase exclamative, exclamation, la phrase impérative, imperative sentence. And we'll start, of course, with the first one. So for each type of uh, sentence, I will put an example. Okay, so let's start with la phrase interrogative. Aimez-vous le fromage? Okay, so the first thing that you should notice is this point d'interrogation here. And then keep in mind that in French we will put a space before. Okay, the second thing that you can notice is that you've got the verb here. Aimer, aimer is to like or to love. And then you will have this vous. So it's the you. 
okay and it's the plural form aimez vous do you like do you love do you love sorry le fromage so it's cheese of course uh, it's a question that a French person could ask you know do you love cheese do you like cheese and well the, the first thing uh, or the second because the first one was le point d'interrogation the second thing that you could notice is that if we want to respect uh, the rule uh, when we ask a question we should change the order of the sentence so normally in French we've got first the subject then the verb but when we ask a question like that and we want to well respect the rule then we should first put the verb then the subject okay I will make some videos explaining how it works uh, in real situations or if uh, this is the way that uh, people uh, do normally when they ask a question okay but this is the way it should be done okay so this is a question say d'une phrase interrogative aimez-vous le fromage aimez-vous le fromage and remember you need to raise your voice a little bit at the end aimez-vous le fromage phrase affirmative oui j'aime le fromage so in that case you just want to say that you like or you love cheese and then this is affirmative you will start with oui here oui j'aime le fromage okay so you can see that in that case you will use this je okay i will explain in a the next video why the e is disappearing here but then it's I like I love okay oui j'aime le fromage so you keep the same order subject and then verb okay so the order that actually normally we've got in the French language you will start with the subject and after that the verb is coming la phrase négative Okay, so in that case you want to say non okay non je n'aime pas le fromage no I don't like cheese okay and in that case well we'll see that a bit later as well you will use this ne and then pas so basically when we introduce the negative form in French we will have two parts that will be before and after the verb okay non je n'aime pas le fromage la phrase impérative mangeons ce fromage okay and in that case you can see quite clearly that you've got what we call le point d'exclamation here at the end uh, keep in mind that you should put a space before it okay so point exclamation and normally it means that you will use that whether to give an order in most of the cases it will be for an order or then if you want to give an advice it's possible as well okay and in that case mangeons so it's at the uh, new form okay so we eat okay so let's eat but then in that case it could be an order so eat this cheese okay you can see that we will see when we'll uh, discover l'imperative form together that uh, this nous so the subject is not here it's something quite special for the imperative form you take away les pronoms personnels mangeons ce fromage okay and in that case this sentence is une phrase imperative phrase exclamative and in that case it's actually interesting because it's so short and in a way it's a sentence even if you don't have any verb because here quel what and then bon good fromage so one more time cheese what a good cheese quel bon fromage okay it's a sentence but then clearly you don't have any verb okay so it means that in some cases like this one for instance you can have sentences without having a verb in them okay and it's here in phrase exclamative quel bon fromage
le sujet. And we'll see actually in this video what in French can be subject of a sentence. Okay, le sujet, the subject. And basically it can be un nom, un pronom personnel, un pronom interrogatif, un pronom indéfini. Okay, so when we're talking about, sorry, when we're talking about a subject, it can be un nom, and it's a noun, un pronom personnel, and it's a subject pronoun, un pronom interrogatif, interrogative pronoun, or then un pronom indéfini, indefinite pronoun. And we'll see, and we'll of course start with the, the first one, un nom. Okay, so let's start with un nom. And I just wanted to have a simple sentence in that case. And it will be Vincent enseigne le français. Okay, so Vincent is a first name and it's mine, by the way. Enseigne, here you've got a verb. So the verb is enseigner and it's conjugated in that case. Le français. So it's French and we're referring to French language. Vincent enseigne le français. And in this sentence you can see quite easily that Vincent here is the subject of the verb here. Okay? So we could also change this Vincent, take it away and then put le professeur and it means the teacher and it will stay also the subject of the sentence. So it's connected directly to the verb enseigner here. Le sujet peut être un pronom personnel, so it can be also a subject pronoun as we saw. So let's see now how it would go. And in that case, same thing, simple sentence to start. Il visite Paris. Okay, so you get il here, il visite. This is the verb visiter, you conjugate it. Il visite Paris. So, in that case, you can see also quite easily that this is the subject of the sentence. And it's what we call un pronom personnel. So, in English, it's more clear because it's subject pronoun. So, no doubt about the function. And actually, we'll discover them together. So, the first one is je, I, tu, you, il, he, elle. She. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle. And then for the plural form, we have nous, we, oui, vous, you. So for the plural form, as in English, we tend to use it, well, of course, for uh, the plural form. And also for the polite form, if you meet someone for the first time, it would be nice to use vous instead of tu. Il, they, so it's the masculine in that case, and then elle, they, but it's the feminine in that case. So in French, we make the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form when we use les pronoms personnels at the plural. Okay, so je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. All right. And so let's see now, uh, un pronom interrogatif. So, same thing, simple structure, simple sentence, and the sentence is qui parle, so it's a question, okay? So the verb is parler, parler is to talk, okay? And then when you put this qui, and qui is who, basically this qui becomes of course, the subject in this sentence, and it's a question, who is talking? Qui parle? Qui parle? And the last one will be un pronom indéfini. And it's also quite useful, and I just wanted to make a simple sentence as well to make it clear. Same verb, parler is to talk, 
and then quelqu'un, someone or somebody. Okay, and in that case, quelqu'un parle, somebody is talking, someone is talking, and in that case, you can see quite easily that quelqu'un is the subject of the sentence. Le sujet et le verbe, so the subject and the verb. And it's actually quite important when we start to learn French just to know that in French, basically, the subject will affect the verb. Okay? So, I just wanted to take a simple example first because we will focus on the conjugation a bit later. So, it's not the idea of this lesson. The idea of this lesson is just to show you that basically the relationship between the subject and the verb is quite close because the verb will be affected by the subject. So, the verb is marcher. Marcher is to walk. Okay? And let's take the example of il. Okay? So, it's he. And basically, when you use il, you will have to conjugate the verb. So, conjugate the verb means that for each form you will have a specific ending. Okay? This is the basic form here, marché, it's what we call the infinitive, all right? But then you don't reuse marché just like that, you will have to conjugate it, so you will have to modify the ending according to the subject. In that case, il requires that you will put this final e uh, here so you will get il marche all right so whoops sorry <laughs> the r is coming now and then it will be exactly the same thing for the plural form of il so they il marche and if you look carefully the ending is different okay we will see everything covering the conjugation a bit later. It's just to show you that the subject is basically affecting quite much the verb. Okay? And so, when we're talking about this topic, basically, it's quite good to have a, a general view of the conjugation of marché, so how it will be modified according to the subject. So, the first person, je, I, you will get je marche, tu marches, il, elle, okay, so tu is for you, the singular form, and then il, he, elle, she, marche, nous, marchons, so it's we, the plural form, vous, you, the plural form, marcher, and then il, oops, sorry, elle, and the plural, marche. So you can see that basically the forms are different and it's one important thing that you've got to keep in mind uh, and that can be a bit tricky or difficult at the beginning but then once you get used you will remember the endings, okay? So basically the subject will affect the verb, okay? And it was the topic of this Video. Les lettres, so the letters, and basically it is quite important because, of course, when you learn a language, well, you get to know the letters and uh, you want to pronounce it correctly. So, this is exactly what we'll try to do here. I will show you the letters, okay, so we'll divide them into two groups, the vowels and the consonants, and then I will pronounce them, okay? So let's first start, sorry, with the vowels. And in French, we have six vowels, si voyelles, okay? Si voyelles, and the first one is a, e, i, o, u, Y. Okay, this one is quite tricky for some of you maybe because maybe in your languages uh, this Y is not a vowel but a consonant. Uh, in French it is a vowel. Okay, A, 
E, I, O, U, Y. Okay, and then let's see the consonants, and we've got the consonant, so 20 consonants, and the first one is B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it's B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Z. Okay, so it was just to present you these uh, letters, so the six vowels and the 20 consonant that we do have in French. Uh, don't worry, in the coming videos we will focus on the pronunciation and we'll see how to go combine them and uh, how to pronounce them when we combine them, okay? But then keep them in mind and try to practice on your own, okay? Les modes et les so basically when you translate it that directly we're talking about moods and tenses so basically like in English uh, if you want to use a verb and normally when you will use a verb you will have to basically decide whether you are using a certain mood and also whether you are using a certain tense for this verb just because the moods and the tenses will be used in specific context or situations okay so let's see now les modes okay and basically in french we've got the first one that you will use and the first one that we will see together in the coming lessons will be l'indicatif okay and l'indicatif is used to express the reality so what is really happening then we'll have le conditionnel okay so basically like in english we will use it to express what we call l'eventualité something that might happen okay and then we'll have this imperative form as well so imperative mood sorry just to express l'ordre the order or then le conseil advice and then we'll have this subjunctif, which can be quite tricky, especially at the beginning, because it doesn't exist really in English, and it's to express what we call le sentiment. Okay, so basically we'll have these main moods, so l'indicatif, le conditionnel, l'impératif, and then le subjunctif. It does mean that in all these moods, dans toutes ces modes, you will have different tenses as well, okay? And that's what we are going to see next, because basically when we're talking about les temps, the tenses, well, I will make it simple, okay? And we'll see in the coming or in the next videos uh, how it will work, but mainly you will express three things with these tenses and the first one is le présent okay the present then le futur the future and then le passé the past and we will see that for all these three options we will have different ways of expressing 
them so it does mean that we will have not only three tenses but much more okay no stress about that don't worry we'll do it little by little so but just to to keep in mind that when we're talking about the tenses well we express normally le présent le futur and then le passé okay so keep in mind that we've got les modes okay so le mode and you get to decide what mode or what mood sorry <laughs> you will have to use indicatif conditionnel impératif or then subjonctif and the second thing that you have to to choose is the correct tense le temps and then it's présent futur and passé and keep in mind that as i said we've got quite many tenses but we'll see that a bit later les signes diacritiques and i know that the title is quite scary and you probably think that oh i don't want to watch this video but trust me it's uh, i mean it's quite important uh, for a good reason and well basically what is les signes uh, diacritiques it's the idea that at one point in the language we will use un signe a sign something that you will add to a letter and by adding this sign to the letter it will make a new letter okay and it's something quite common in french and we'll see exactly what we are talking about because even if it's scary the good news is that we've got only cinq signes diacritiques cinq signes diacritiques and the first one is accent aigu okay the second one is accent grave third one is accent circonflex then tréma and last but not least cédille okay so accent aigu accent grave accent circonflex tréma and then cédille so let's start with l'accent aigu and it basically it looks like that okay so this is l'accent aigu and let's see you will actually put l'accent aigu on the top of e okay it doesn't come on the top of a i o u y it's only on e okay so keep in mind that l'accent aigu is only coming right here on the top of e okay then you will have l'accent grave and it goes in the other direction okay but then l'accent grave is actually more used because you can put it on the top of a on the top of e and then on the top of u all right after that you get l'accent circonflex so it's like a little roof here like a little hat and it's it will come on the top of a e i o and u then tréma just like two little dots dots here and it will come on the top of a e i o and then u okay and the last one la cédille if you look carefully basically it will come right below your c letter okay so remember l'accent aigu l'accent grave l'accent circonflexe le tréma la cédille all right and the idea of course in this video it's only is only to present these five signs so in the next lessons in the next units i will focus on explaining how to pronounce them because of course the pronunciation will change if you put l'accent aigu on the top of a uh, basically you won't pronounce it like you would pronounce it without the accent okay but then keep in mind that we've got these five signes diacritiques
accent aigu, accent grave, accent circonflexe, tréma, cédille. Les ligatures. So, even if it's a bit scary, let's start the video. And basically, what are we talking about when we're talking about les ligatures? Well, we're talking about two letters, uh, some strange letters, you might say. This is the first one, and this is the second one. They are quite rare in the French language, but basically you can see them and you need to know what they are and that's the reason why I've been making this little video. So the first one is this E dans la. Okay, so basically if you translate directly it's E inside or in a. And that's the reason why because if you look carefully it's only one letter here and like if these two letters were glued Okay, or connected like that. So it's E dans la. Let's see a few examples of words that use this E dans la. And the first one is curriculum vitae. The second one is ex -eco. Then etc. And then ad vitam Eternam. And so if you look carefully at these words, you realize that this letter is coming directly from Latin. Okay, so uh, and it's quite rare to see this letter in French language. Well, you've got here some examples, but uh, I've been choosing the, the, the more common examples because the other one probably you won't, you will never use them or maybe never encounter them. But anyway, uh, it is rare, but it does exist and uh, it can be a challenge in some cases for some of you to write this letter correctly if you want to write it with your computer because you've got to go through insert and then after that symbol so basically it's up to you if you want to write it correctly you should put of course this e dans la uh, if you don't manage to put it then just put a and after e uh, maybe your computer will correct it automatically you never know okay the second one is this one and it's E dans l'eau. So basically the same concept. So E inside O. All right. So because it's only one letter here and you get this O and E connected like glued okay, to each other. So let's see because this one is uh, actually uh, used a bit more often and I've been selecting few words. And the first one is un boeuf, un coeur. Un cœur, it's actually quite interesting because even if you write them differently, you pronounce them the, the same way. Un œil, un œuf, une sœur. Okay, so un bœuf, un cœur, un cœur, un œil, un œuf, une sœur. All right, so these words are actually not that rare, and we'll see exactly what they mean. The first one, un bœuf, okay, steer, ox, or then un cœur, heart, un œuf, egg, un cœur, is it choir, choir? I'm not really sure about the pronunciation in English, sorry about that, I don't want to make any mistake. Then we've got Un œil, I, and then une sœur, sister. Okay, and this letter is actually uh, more often used, okay, than the, the previous one. Uh, and then it's, well, basically it will be exactly the same challenge if you want to uh, write it correctly with your computer, uh, whether you try to find uh, this letter by inserting uh, a symbol, okay, or then you just put O and then after that you will put a. Uh, okay, technically it's a mistake, but then basically if you cannot make uh, uh, in another way, then just write it O and E. Uh, okay.
le masculin et le féminin. So the masculine and the feminine. And actually, uh, in French, uh, when it comes to grammar, we've got uh, the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, and we'll see that it will affect uh, quite deeply the, the, the language. For instance, uh, we've got, when it comes to les, les pronoms personnels, we will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine. So we'll start with the feminine, ladies first, and it's elle, okay? So she, so in that case, it is the feminine singular form, elle, okay? For the masculine, it will be il. So in English, it will be he, okay? Il, so in that case, it's the masculine singular form form. When it comes to the plural, actually in French we also have the difference between the feminine and the masculine. So basically here, elle, it's the feminine plural form, okay? And then in the same way here, il will be the masculine plural form. So if you look carefully, the only difference between the singular and the plural, it's this final s here. Same thing here between il and il, it's the final s. And if you listen carefully, basically you don't have any differences. So it's l and l, il and il. Okay, the grammar rule is quite strict in French. If you've got a group of persons and um, in this group you get at least one man, it will be masculine. Okay, so let's see now if you discover a new word. Okay, so it could be a noun, it could be an adjective. Um, in that case, the, the good uh, reflex would be to try to see and to try to remember whether it's uh, feminine or whether it's masculine. Okay, because it will basically uh, affect after that, and we'll see that in this video what will come after. And in most of the cases, we're talking about uh, the adjectives. Okay, so it's always good to remember the gender of a word. Okay, uh, of course, in that case, if you're encountering a new noun so basically you try to remember the gender at the same time i will make some videos uh covering the topic and that um well giving you giving you few tips to try to see you know whether it's masculine or feminine according to the ending of the word in some cases it can help, but in most of the cases, you will have to remember the gender. Uh, just when you when you discover a new word, try to remember the gender at the same time. Okay, so for a good reason, and this is now what I will explain it. Uh, I will explain. Sorry. Well, basically, when you get a noun, it will actually be connected to an adjective and whether it's masculine or feminine basically in French the adjective will be changed also so let's see an example here we've got un pays chaud so if we translate directly it's un pays it's a country a country and it's chaud is warm hot okay un pays Sure. So you can see that here, P is masculine, un is the article, the masculine article, un pays show. And in that case, your adjective is like that, written at the basic form. So the masculine form is the basic form. And if we take another word, like boisson, boisson is feminine, une boisson. Okay, so here you've got the article, and it's the feminine form of the article. Une boisson. And you can see that here your adjective is changing. You will have to put this final E, chaud, okay, at the end. And then the pronunciation will change a little bit. Chaud. So here you pronounce the final D, whereas in the masculine form you don't pronounce it. Okay, all right, so it's just an introduction, don't worry. In the coming videos, I will explain everything. So the articles, the adjective, the way to put the feminine form, everything. So in this video, it's just to show you that 
basically the masculine and the feminine so whether it's a noun at the masculine and at the feminine it will affect uh, the adjective connected to it okay and then it's also uh, actually possible that the noun or as we saw le pronom personnel will affect the verb we are talking in that case about uh, what we call compound tenses so we will cover that um, probably in unit four five or six uh, have a look there we're talking about le passé composé for instance so the past tense and basically let's have a look there you will have il est allé okay it's the masculine form here so allé is to go and this is the compound tense of il est allé all right and then you will have here elle est allé so basically he went she went all right and here you can see that you will have the difference between the masculine and the feminine but don't worry about that because i will explain that later it's just to show you that basically the difference between the masculine and the feminine will concern of course the subject so pronom personnel and then the nouns but it will also affect what is coming after so it can be an adjective as we saw or it can be a verb in that case it's a compound tense so it's this past uh, tense le passé composé all right so no stress about that i will explain everything after okay just keep in mind that we've got a difference between the masculine and the feminine and so my tip for this video will be when you discover a new word as i said try to remember whether it's masculine or oh, sorry feminine here or masculine okay merci beaucoup oui et non oui et non so basically yes and no oui et non so because i thought you know it might be useful to make this video uh, in some situations i've been assuming that people would understand and would know how to use oui et non but it's not always the case and um well basically i don't expect them to do that and as i am doing this video and this series of videos for beginners and total beginners then this is the reason why i thought it might be useful to introduce oui yes and then non no so basically when you have a question here uh, well in french you can answer with oui yes or then with non no it might seem simple but it's just the way it is and let's make it quite clear and that's the reason why we have this question vous parlez français okay basically do you speak french i just put that in that order because normally it should be verb first and after the subject if we want to construct a correct uh, question but in many situations especially when we talk we can keep the same order we just need to raise the voice at the end so of course l'académie française would like me to put them in the other order but basically you will hear many french people and many french speaking people just keep the same order and raise their voice at the end okay vous parlez français so basically it's a question do you speak french and in that case you've got well two possible answers and if you want to actually enter answer sorry uh, in a short way the first option would be oui or then non of course at one point and that's the reason why we'll have these videos uh, you will have uh, the possibility to construct sentences but basically if you want to answer shortly it's not rude it's quite um just you you just show that you don't really want to 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 talk that much but basically you just answer to the question so oui yes and then non no let's see now how it will work if we have a question but if this question is at the negative form okay because in that case it's somehow a bit tricky because strangely for the affirmative answer it won't be we oui, but it will become c si. 
and then for the negative it will be exactly the same it will be no okay so keep in mind if you get a question but then this question is at the negative form then instead of using we oui, you will use si but then no will be the same okay so let's see the same question vous ne parlez pas français so you don't speak french okay so this is how it works for the negative form don't worry in few videos i will explain you how it works exactly okay but at this point it's only to introduce oui non si non okay so it's a negative question in that case you don't speak french and the answer would be si or then non Obviously, at one point, you would like to uh, make sentences instead of using these two uh, possibilities, okay? But it's just to show you that, you know, <laughs> actually, you've got these two options. So, if you've got a question, the first one would be oui or then non. If it's a negative question, then it will be si or non, okay? La ponctuation. So let's discover together the punctuation in French. Okay, so we can start, and I thought it might be useful to start with this one, and it's le point. Okay, so le point. And for this video, I will actually tell you how to put uh, these uh, punctuation signs, and if we need to put some spaces or not because it does change a little bit if you compare it to English for instance so let's see now le point so let's imagine that you will have your sentence or it could be a word like that and after that you will put le point then you will have to put a space and the next word will come okay so it could be a sentence before a sentence after but the main thing is to remember that you don't have any space before but you will have one after okay so let's see now the next one and it's le point virgule okay le point virgule and le point virgule works like that mot numéro un then you will put you would put sorry le point virgule without any space then a space and the next word or the rest of the sentence okay La virgule, okay, so la virgule. And for la virgule, actually, you will have the first word, then la virgule is coming without any space, then you will put a space, and the rest of the sentence or the next word is coming after, okay? Nothing before, one space after. Le point d'interrogation. Le point d'interrogation, okay? And in that case, keep in mind that you will have whether your sentence or this word, then, and this is quite important because it does change from other languages, you put a space, you put le point d'interrogation, okay? Then after that, a space and the rest will follow. Okay, so this is quite important. Remember that we will put in French a space before le point d'interrogation because it's not the case in, uh, well, some other languages. Okay, and now le point d'exclamation. Okay, so le point d'exclamation, you will have your sentence and then the previous word, then un espace, space. Then you will put your point d'exclamation here, after that a space, and the next word is coming. Same thing as we had for le point d'interrogation, remember that you will have to put a space before. Les deux points, okay, les deux points, and then they work like that le mot, then you will have to put space, les deux points, 
are coming right after another space after then the rest will come okay so remember one space before one space after les guillemets okay les guillemets and concerning les guillemets actually it will go like that so you will have your sentence or well the previous word then a space then the first one after that a space then you put what you want to put between them <laughs> another space guillemets again space and the rest of the sentence or the next word or whatever you want here but you've got to keep in mind that here it's quite tricky space then guillemets space what you put between space guillemets space and what comes after les points de suspension les points de suspension and regarding les points de suspension it will become it will come sorry like that so what comes before le mot or then the sentence and then les points de suspension space and then the next word or what comes after the sentence if you want okay so nothing before a space after les parenthèses les parenthèses okay and regarding les parenthèses well the first word then you will put a space then the first part so la première parenthèse your word or then a group of words fermer la parenthèse then you will put a space and after that the next part is coming okay so remember before and after nothing between okay écrire en français so write in french and uh, well i thought it might be useful to just make this little video because I've been teaching for quite many years now and I've been noticing that at one point um, my students tend to be a bit disappointed or sad because they just realized one important thing in French and it's the difference between what je prononce I pronounce and j'écris I write because basically you can see that of course you will have some connections between what you pronounce and what you write but we've got many many things that we will have to write and we won't pronounce I thought it might be useful to start uh, and give you an example here with the verb parler okay so we will make the conjugation remember that we will focus on the conjugation in another video that will come a bit later okay but it's just to give you a good example here so parler is to speak or to talk and it's a regular verb so it belongs to the first group ending with a air so let's see how we conjugate it at the present tense je parle tu parles, il, elle parle, nous parlons, vous parlez, il, elle parle. Okay, so basically you get here this je and it's I, je parle, I talk, I speak, tu, and tu is for you, okay, and it's the singular form, tu parles, here, you talk, you speak, il, it's for the masculine form, he, il, and then elle, feminine form, she, elle. Okay, so il, elle, and then we've got the same form, parle. Then comes the plural form, nous, so we, okay, and in that case it's nous parlons, 
v u so it's the plural form or then we will see a bit later that it, it can be also for the singular if it's the polite form okay vous parlez and then we get il so they but then in french we divide and we make the difference between the masculine plural so il here and elle the feminine plural il elle parle all right so we get je parle tu parles il parle elle parle nous parlons vous parlez il parle elle parle and if you look carefully you write it with e here e s e then you get a n t here so i only take these four forms just for a good reason it's just because if you look carefully and if you listen to me i will pronounce it je parle tu parles il parle elle parle il parle elle parle so it does mean that even if you write them differently e e s and then e n t you will pronounce them the same way and this is basically the difficult thing about french uh, language it's just a the big difference between what you say what you pronounce and what you write okay so in this example for this verb actually if we finish it like that you can see that you've got three phonetical forms the first one is parle okay the yellow one then you've got nous parlons and then you've got vous parlez but of course at one point if you want to write it correctly you will have to remember the endings and you will have to put this s here for instance if you want to write it correctly or then a n t here even if you pronounce them the same way okay so my advice would be <laughs> if you want to be happy <laughs> uh, well basically when you see it's coming yeah when you see a new word a nouveau mot uh, well word in general so it can be a verb it can be an adjective it can be a noun whatever when you see a new word uh, try to remember of course how you will pronounce it but then try try also to remember how to write it correctly and in this first lesson I thought it would be or it might be useful to start with the pronunciation of the vowels okay and after that of course consonant will come but it will be in, uh, in the next lesson okay so let's see now for the the vowels how it goes so the first one is a okay a so not really difficult to pronounce for most of you second one is a repeat a okay remember that on this vowel we can put some accents okay and then it will affect the the way you will pronounce the uh, okay but if it's like that without any accent and you you need to spell it or to uh, to pronounce the letter it's a uh, okay a uh. next one is e e then o okay so don't be afraid to put your mouth really round o o okay so it's quite deep o okay then u u so this u can be tricky so uh, from my experience of teaching i've been noticing that uh, well in most of the cases uh, for american people it can be quite tricky at the beginning so you really need to insist on that it's u okay Spanish speaking persons can have some difficulties as well for that okay so don't be afraid to pronounce so really it's not because in most of the cases that's the, the mistake people tend to make they pronounce it like okay now in that case it's really so really narrow sound okay so don't be afraid to insist on that and the last one is uh, well it's y so if you need to spell it then you say y 
okay when you pronounce it it's like e e okay but the name of the letter is y okay so if we check them again one more time this one is a then comes a e o u remember u and the last one y for the name okay but then the pronunciation is e all right and in this uh, lesson we'll discover the pronunciation of the consonant so les consonnes are you ready so let's start now okay so les consonnes b b okay so this one shouldn't be that difficult to produce b b then comes c okay c d d f f g g okay so if we want to repeat them one more time b c d f g okay let's see the others h h j j k k l l m m okay one more time h j k l m okay and then of course it continues n n p p q q r r so it's quite important because people tend to think that french people are making this air like that really deep and really uh well it, it will hurt your uh, throat if we, you try to insist too much on that and if you listen to me well basically it's not that strong air air okay so it's quite soft air air the next one is s s okay so let's see them one more time n p q r s and the last consonant are t t v v w w okay so we've got this double 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 and then v w okay x x and the last one z z okay so remember to pronounce this d at the end z z okay so let's see them one more time t v w x z discover les accents so the accents and normally when we talk about the accents we tend to insist on the accents which are on the top of the letter e uh, okay because they will change the the pronunciation of the the letter when you put the accents on the top of o e or a uh, well nowadays we don't really pronounce the the the, 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 the differences uh, but then e uh, is still affected by that so you should really really first remember the name of the accent okay and it's normally like that okay and then the sound that you will have to pronounce uh, or to produce when you see it 
on the top of the uh, okay because so without any accent this letter if you remember we saw that previously is pronounced uh uh okay but then when you put this this one so this one is called accent aigu okay it goes like that in that direction okay and you will pronounce the the, the letter like a okay listen to the difference without the accent uh with the accent a okay without a uh, and with a all right second accent that we can work on it's a little bit the same but it goes in the other direction so if you look it goes like that okay and then it's called accent grave accent grave okay and the sound that you will have to produce is a so it's really open I mean the sound is really open and normally your mouth should be opened a little bit more than with the accent aigu as well okay so it goes like a all right don't don't be afraid to insist a little bit on the pronunciation okay uh, first and then you can make it uh, shorter after of course a a all right so let's compare them the first one is a and then the second one is a all right the good news is that the next one so accent circonflex is pronounced like accent grave okay so it's the same pronunciation here okay and it's the open one okay a Ray, okay a all right so you can see that it's just like a little hat that you get to put on the top of a okay so let's see one more time the differences this one a okay and then these two accents like here a open a okay the last one tréma well basically it's quite rare and the tricky thing is that in some cases you will have to you will have to pronounce it like a okay like for instance noel okay but then in some cases as well it can be pronounced like a okay so my advice would be try to remember the word and they are really really ra rare so don't don't be don't be afraid about that okay so but that let's focus on the three main accents here okay the first one accent aigu remember a accent grave a and the last one accent circonflex a so we'll focus on the les caractères spéciaux so the special characters that maybe you will have to use if you want to well spell your name or then if you want to uh, give a web address or something like that so because normally they can be quite useful and at the at the really beginning so it, it's quite useful to to uh, spend a little time on them okay so let's start now uh, les caractères spéciaux the first one okay if you look at it it's here okay and we called it tire okay tire all right let's see the second one same thing but it's you know the low one so we call it tire ba tire ba okay so remember the first one located in the middle is tire and the other one here is tire ba okay let's see the the other one so officially we called it arrobas arrobas okay but then well let's be honest we can hear many french people or french speaking people using this at okay uh, but then the french were of course at all right uh, but officially it should be arrobas okay so don't be surprised if someone is using that or then uh, you can use it as well because that's the way it should be it should be used so arrobas okay um here so the dot okay because it's not always easy to to spot here uh, we we call it point okay point all right so one more time tire tire bas arrobas point okay and then 
it continues a little bit. So if you want to indicate that you've got well double a double letter, okay, um, you can say so. In that case, it's p p, okay. So you say de, okay. De it's two in French. De, okay. P, de p, okay. If it would be another letter, then you would say de, and then the name of the the letter, of course. Then this one here is called apostrophe. Okay, apostrophe, apostrophe. Okay, and the last one for this lesson. Here you can see that in some cases, so we'll see that a bit later. I mean the reason why, but still you can have this little thing beneath the C. Okay, and that's what we call cédille, cédille. Okay. Cédille, yeah, 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 cédille. Okay, and we'll discover a quite important thing uh, because uh, it's a verb and uh, it's the verb être. Okay, être means to be. Okay, so as in many many languages, the to be is quite useful uh, just for a well simple reason. You tend to use it quite often, and then we can use it to construct some composed tenses that we'll see a bit later okay so let's see how it goes at the present form le verbe être first is je suis je suis okay je it's the pronoun personnel so it's i okay suis i am okay je suis all right then second person, tu es, okay? So remember, être is really tricky, especially when it comes to pronunciations, okay? So first one, sui, as you've been noticing, you don't pronounce the final S, okay? And for tu, then you've got this combination of letters, okay? But then basically the sound you will pronounce or you will produce is a, okay? Tu es, all right? Je suis, tu es. Okay, so let's see the next one. So you get this il, okay, so it's a capital letter, but then it's still it's i and then l, okay, il, so it's he, okay, masculine form, and then l, she, so feminine form, okay, and this is the verb. So il est, or then l. So you can notice that even if we write them differently, this a like that and a like that, we, pron we pronounce them the, the same way. And that's usually the difficult thing, you know, with a f French language. Uh, what you write and what you pronounce can be quite different. Okay, so remember, je suis, tu es, il est. A, L, A. Okay, so let's see how the next one comes. Here it's nous, nous. Okay, ah, sorry about that. Oops. <laughs> nous sommes. Okay, nous sommes. Okay, so you don't pronounce the final S here, it doesn't exist. Some, nous some okay then <laughs> the next one is coming vous et same thing here notice that final s is not pronounced et et okay and then in french we tend to have this liaison so liaison it's like a link okay that we can make between the words so in that case Vous is ending with S and then you tend to make a little link between them. So, vous êtes. Z, it goes like that. Vous êtes. Okay? Vous êtes. Vous êtes. Alright, so let's see one more time. Je suis. Tu es. Il est. Elle est. Nous sommes. Vous êtes. Okay, and let's see the last one. Il, okay, so you can notice that even if you've got this S at the end, 
and then here you don't have anything well you pronounce them the same way okay il singular form il plural form okay il son final t not pronounced il son elle son okay il son elle son so let's see it again je suis tu es il est elle est nous sommes vous êtes ils sont elles sont all right one more thing to notice because it's quite important this vous form okay can be used for the plural of course and then it's the polite form that we use uh, if you meet someone for the first time uh, let's say it's uh, it's someone that you are uh, connected to uh, professionally or uh, it's well someone important or then well in that case or then you don't know this person uh, you should use definitely this vous okay uh, for the first time it's the polite form after that you can decide whether you want to use this to form okay which is normally quite common in French but then first remember that vous is better okay let's see a few examples now okay first I've been no writing this uh, this question so quelle est votre nationalité okay so here to show you that it's here quelle means what is votre your so it's uh, according to to this vous okay so the polite form of your and then nationalité nationality okay so let's repeat the question quelle est votre nationalité all right and in French we tend to raise the voice at the end when we've got this little point d'interrogation if it's a question don't be afraid to go like Yoop! and raise a little bit at the end okay so quelle est votre nationalité okay quelle est votre nationalité so if you want to present or to say uh, where you're from okay so we're using this être for that you know je suis okay so you've got here it's already and then you put this français français okay it's French je suis Français. Je suis français. Okay. Then another example. Quel est votre nom de famille? Famille, family, nom, name. So nom de famille, family name, last name if you want. Okay. Quel, it's still what. Okay, in that case, it's written like that. So we will see that in a coming lesson. But just to inform you, that's the masculine form, just because non is masculine, and here you've got the feminine form because nationalité is feminine. Okay, but then we pronounce them the same way. So quel est what is votre your nom de famille? So family name or last name? Okay, it's a question. Quel est votre nom de famille? Okay, so it's not the opera or uh, something that you want to sing. Okay, so just raise a little bit your voice at the at the end of the the question. Okay, so the answer c'est le François. So it's interesting because you can see that we've got this c here and it doesn't show in the the. The, the, the examples that we saw previously or for the, the, the conjugation just because it's so well basically you can tr you could translate it like it is or this is or yeah it is okay c'est le François okay and the last one quelle est sa profession okay quelle est sa profession what is so être hein, same ça so it's her profession profession okay elle est directrice elle est directrice okay so she's a director and then it's the feminine form here all right so the last lesson was uh, introduction of uh, le verbe être okay and i thought it 
it would be more logical to uh, continue with uh, le verbe avoir. So avoir means to have, okay, and for the same reason as uh, to be, okay, it's uh, it's really useful and really used. So you should definitely know this uh, verb avoir by heart if you want to master uh, French language, okay. So let's see that, the verb avoir, okay, and so we'll see the different uh, forms. So the first one is j'ai, okay, j'ai, all right. So if you remember correctly, we had this je, personal pronoun, and then when it comes near another vowel like a, for instance, then it tends to disappear, okay? So just to avoid pronouncing this je, because we think that in French it doesn't sound, doesn't sound that beautiful, so we tend to take this e uh away, okay? So that you get this sound, je, je, okay? So j apostrophe a i. Remember, when you combine this A-I, you get the E sound, okay? Second one. Tu A, okay? As usual in French, final S is not pronounced. Tu A. Tu A, okay? First one. J'ai Tu A. Then comes Il so masculine form he okay il he l she okay and then a so as you can notice second form a s is pronounced a and this is a same pronunciation in both cases okay then nous avons final s not pronounced Avons, okay, and then we tend to make this little link, as I said previously in the lesson, uh, uh, for uh, être, you make this link between the two, so nous avons, nous avons, okay, nous avons, nous avons, that's it, next one, same thing, a little liaison, little link between the two, okay? Vous avez, vous avez, all right? And the last one, so same thing if you can see, you get this final S and final S here, okay? And then you will have to make the little link between the two. Ils ont, ils ont, ils ont. Okay, and then feminine form, elles ont, elles ont, all right, let's see the whole thing one more time, j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont, okay. So let's see now, just to make it more clear, remember, so I in French is je, you, it's tu, he, il, she, elle, we, nous, you, so as in English, first use for the plural, a group of person, okay, and then second use the polite form for you, one person, okay, vous, il, elle, one last time, je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. Discover le verbe aller, so the verb Aller, aller means to go, so it's really useful because, well, we tend to use it like that, so for the main to go reason uh, quite often. And we use it as also like in many languages uh, for what we call the future proche, so the near future. I am going to, and then you put a verb at the infinitive, 
so it is it is quite quite used, especially in the oral language. We tend to maybe use it a little bit more than the the real future. Okay, so let's see how you conjugate this aller verbe. The first form is je vais. Okay, so remember final s not pronounced here. Je vais. Okay, when you combine this a e, you get the sound a really open. Okay, je vais. D'accord. Tu vas. Final s doesn't exist. Tu vas. Tu vas. Okay. Then we've got this. Il, so remember, il, uh, it's for the, the, the masculine form, so he, okay, and then l, she, okay, and then you get the va form, basically you pronounce it like for the tu, because you don't pronounce the final s, okay, il va, elle va, okay, je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va. Then, nous, so we, plural form, nous allons, okay, and if you, so final S not pronounced, and then if you are purist, and I'm sure you are, you want to make this beautiful and little liaison, so this little link between the words, so it does mean that you will have to pronounce this zzz uh, sound, okay, listen to me, nous allons, nous allons. Okay, nous allons. That's it. Same thing here. We'll have this little link between the two. Vous allez. Vous allez. And the last one. So remember, here you get this S just to make the difference between the singular and the plural. Because when you put the plural form normally, you tend to add S at the end of the words. Okay, like here. But then you don't pronounce it. So... Ils vont, final day, not pronounced. Ils vont, and then feminine form, elles vont. All right, let's see everything again. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez. Ils vont, elles vont. All right? And then, just a few examples, just to show you how uh, useful this uh, aller verb can be, because we tend to use this uh, aller verb when you want to ask uh, if someone is uh, doing fine, okay? Uh, so the first question, how do you do in French is, comment, so how, comment, allez-vous? And then, same thing here, little link between the two. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? All right. So I've been putting this vous form here for the first example, just to show you that if you meet someone for the first time, then it's, well, it's better to use this vous. So here, the vous form, so because it's the polite form. Okay, comment allez-vous? Okay, it's a question, so raise a little bit your voice at the end. Like, comment allez-vous? Okay, you see? Comment allez-vous? All right. So, answer, when you want to say, I'm doing fine. Okay. Je vais bien. And then you say, merci. Thank you. Je vais bien. Merci. So, now, if you know the person, okay, you get two options. I mean, normally that's the most used one. The first one would be, comment vas-tu? Okay, so in that case, you just switch and you change this you, so polite form, and you change it with this tu form, comment vas-tu? Okay, well, answer can be the same, you know, je vais bien, merci, okay? And the other one, comment ça va? Okay, it, it, it would be like impersonal form, okay? So you're not really addressing uh, directly to the person, uh, how is it going? Could be translated. Uh, could be translated like that in, in in English. Okay. Comment ça va? Okay. You raise a little bit at the end. Comment ça va? And then same thing. You can answer with ça va, merci. Okay. So let's read them. Comment allez-vous? Je vais bien, merci. 
Comment vas-tu Je vais bien, merci. Comment ça va Ça va, merci. We will discover le verbe s'appeler. So, uh, previously we've been seeing uh, three verbs. So, the first one was uh, être, to be, yeah. And then after that it was avoir, to have. And then in the last, uh, last or previous lesson, it was uh, aller, to go. And I thought it would be useful to introduce this s'appeler verb because normally that's the, the, the verb you tend to uh, use uh, at the right beginning when you want to introduce yourself because if you say my name is, uh, well, in French we will use this s'appeler verb, okay? It is always tricky and a big challenge for a French teacher uh, to introduce this s'appeler verb at the real beginning because... Um, It belongs to this group of verbs that we call uh, 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 verb pronomino. So you'll see why. Because if you compare it to the others, something is coming there. Okay. So if you remember, when we conjugate uh, a verb, first we put the pronom personnel, so the personal pronoun here. So je is like uh, I. Okay. And then, so basically, the verb appeler appeler means to call. Okay, so without this S, okay, a place to call, okay, and then when you had this S here, and then if you transform it like in this form, I call, and this is a pronoun, it's like me, so it's like I call myself, I call me, so it's just the way we've got in French to introduce ourselves, okay, so it's je m'appelle. Okay, je m'appelle. All right, second form. Tu t'appelles. Okay, remember final S not pronounced. Tu t'appelles. Okay, then il s'appelle. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. And then the funny thing for nous or vous, you'll see that, well, basically we repeat it or repeat, it's just a pronoun. So we call ourselves if you want, okay, but then we put the pronouns before the, the, the verb, okay. Nous, nous appelons. And then little link would be Perfect, so let's pronounce the whole thing again. Nous nous appelons. Nous nous appelons. Okay, final S doesn't exist. Nous nous appelons. Okay, then. Vous vous appelez. Vous vous appelez. Okay, so you can hear, we put the little link again here. Vous vous appelez. Alright, and the last one. Il s'appelle elle s'appelle okay so one thing that you should remember and probably you did here okay so here for nous and vous so we've got only one l like here in the infinitive form so that's the reason why i've been pronouncing appelons okay and then Appelé, all right. But for je, so if you can spot it here, look, we've got double L here, double L, double L, and then for the plural form, double L. So when you get this E vowel, and then you get a double consonant, and well, they are the same, then it does change the pronunciation of E. Uh, you tend to pronounce it like E. Eh. Eh, really open. That's the reason why you pronounce it appel, appel, okay? Appel, 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 and appel. All right? So, as I said, that's the tricky thing with French language. I mean, you write them like here, without S, here, with S, and here, with E, N, T, N, T. You pronounce them the same way. Je m'appelle, tu t'appelles. Il, elle s'appelle. Il, elle s'appelle. Okay? All right. And now, a few examples. Comment 
vous vous appelez. Ok. So, comment vous vous appelez So, when you want to know the, the, the name of someone, you know. Comment vous vous appelez Answer. Je m'appelle Vincent. Et vous Ok, so, I am Vincent. I call myself Vincent if you want. Vincent. Et vous And you, okay, so you want to know the name of the, the person who is asking this question, okay. Uh, the other possibility that you would have, you know, so first you've been starting with comment and then vous vous appelez, okay, so that's the, well, a common way of asking the, the, the question, all right. Other possibility would be to start with vous vous appelez, okay, so technically you just take the verb and then you put this Comment, how, at the end. Okay, it would be possible as well. Okay, remember to raise your voice. Vous vous appelez comment? All right. And the last one is the more correct form. Okay, so first you should start with comment, how. And then, as in many languages, you should, well, change a little bit the order of the structure of the sentence. Okay, vous appelez vous okay that's the real correct way to ask the name of someone you know comment vous appelez-vous all right and you, then you raise your voice comment vous appelez-vous all right so let's repeat them comment vous vous appelez vous vous appelez comment comment vous appelez-vous All right, we'll discover in this lesson pour se présenter. So if you want to present yourself, okay, so it will be a really short lesson, but still quite useful because, well, technically you will have to present yourself at one point when you speak with French people or French speaking people. Okay, so let's discover how it goes. The first one, well, I tend to use this appeler verb, okay, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. So you use this s'appeler verb. So uh, I did introduce this verb in the previous lesson. So it was uh, leçon H. Okay. So if you didn't see this lesson, I uh, definitely invite you uh, to, 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 to watch it. Because uh, I tend to explain the reason why, you know, I've got this, well, there is this je m'appelle form, okay? So, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. So, that's the first possibility you will have. Uh, the other possibility is to use this être, so to be verb, je suis, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so the first one, je m'appelle, so basically, s'appeler or je m'appelle, you could translate it directly, but, well, it's not really interesting, but still, you know, I call myself, okay, so that's the verb we tend to use when we introduce ourselves, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois, okay, and then the second one, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois, and the last option we will have is mon nom, my name, mon nom est, is Vincent Lefrançois. Okay. First option, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Second, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Last one, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Of course, the first one is the most used. Okay. Even if the verb is a bit tricky at the beginning, definitely you should work on it and uh, you should well master this uh, sapli verb because that's the one we will use when we introduce ourselves. Okay, we'll discover les articles définis, so definite articles. Uh, in English, it would be the, okay, but in French, of course, as usual, we've got the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form, okay? And we start with the masculine form, so we've got le, le, okay, and then in some cases, this vowel, e, uh, If it's close to other vowels, so if there is a word after that starting with a vowel, in some case it, it will have to disappear. Okay, so you will get this L apostrophe. So that's the reason why I've been writing it here. Okay, but then the main form is L. Okay, then La, feminine form, La. Same for the same reason, you know, you will have this option L apostrophe as well. 
and then the plural form is le. Okay, so where are the in, whereas in English you get only there is only this the form in French we will have the difference between the masculine form le, the feminine form la, and then the plural form le. So of course according to the word you will have to choose the correct article. So we'll take a few examples here. The first one is chien. Chien is a dog. And in French, chien, like that, it's masculine, so le chien. So basically, you just put the article le and then chien, okay? In that case, second case, ordinateur, well, you can see that it starts with the vowel O, okay? And as I said, you know, E and O, they don't get along that well, so you get to take this E away, and then you get this l'ordinateur, l'ordinateur, all right? And... Third example, so I took on purpose this hotel, okay, because it starts with H, but remember that in French we don't pronounce H, okay, so basically the first sound of the word is the vowel O, okay, so for the same reason, E needs to disappear, l'hôtel, okay, so we re if we repeat them, le chien, l'ordinateur, and then l'hôtel, okay? Feminine form, la famille, okay? So no problem, so family, la famille, okay? Then we've got argent, money, argent, same for the same reason, so a, a. l'argent, okay, you get to take this other way, l'argent, and same thing as previously when what we saw for the, the masculine part, even if you've got this H, then the first sound you hear is A, ah, okay, so for the same reason you will have to take this A ah away, and then you get this l'habitation, l'habitation, okay, and then I've been taking, well, basically, the example from here, chien, okay, and then I put S at the end, and it's the mark of the plural, okay, so you put les chiens, the dogs, okay, les chiens, and then you take famille, family, okay, you just add this final s, and you get the plural form, les familles, okay, remember, chien, singular form, chien, same pronunciation, but you put this s, okay, final s, not pronounced, Famille, singular form, famille, plural form, same pronunciation, S, not pronounced. Okay? We'll discover les articles indéfinis. So, indefinite articles. So, any, um, in English, uh, there is only one and it's a uh, or un. Okay? And in French, we've got always the difference between the masculine form the feminine form and the plural form as we saw in the previous lesson remember for the uh, definite articles okay it was the same okay and in this lesson so article indefini well it's the same we'll start with the masculine form and the masculine form goes like that so when you put these two letters together it can be quite tricky to pronounce at the beginning of course after that you will master it without any problem and without any doubt but you've got to pronounce it like un. so it's uh, what we call the nasal so it goes in your nose okay un. so if you listen to me you don't hear any n okay so it's just a combination of the two un. 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 all right okay so that's the masculine form then the feminine article is here and it's easier because if you you have this u n e then you pronounce it un un okay masculine un feminine form un un okay and then the plural form de all right here a s you pronounce it you pronounce it like e okay un un de all right let's see few examples now okay here ami means friend okay un ami and then we tend to make this little little link between the two un ami un ami okay soleil sun un soleil un soleil livre book un livre 
un livre. Voiture, car, feminine. Une voiture. Une voiture. École, school, feminine form as well. Une école. Une école. Décision. Une décision. Une décision. Don't ask me to translate this decision. Come on, please. Ami, so I've been taking this now. Look, Ami here. So we've got the masculine form and it's the singular. Remember, if you want to put the plural form, then you just add this final S here. Okay, but then technically you pronounce it the same way. So singular form Ami, plural form, you add this S, but it's Ami as well. Okay, in that case, you get de, so here de, okay, here, and then there is this little liaison, remember, it's been introduced in a previous lesson, you put this little link between the word, des amis, des amis, okay, I've been taking wa voiture here, voiture a car, okay, just add this S at the end, and then you get the plural form, des voitures. Okay, and then I've been taking back this livre, same thing, you just add S at the end, des livres. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Un, une, des. Un ami, un soleil, un livre, une voiture, une école, une décision, des amis, des voitures, des livres. Please cover together l'article interrogatif. So it's really useful and we'll see that now. So l'article interrogatif, here you get the masculine form and it's quel. Quel means what. Okay, so that's what you'll use when you want to ask a, a question with what. Okay, and you've got a good example here. So quel est votre nom de famille? What is votre your, so the polite form of your. Nom de famille, family name, last name, okay? Quel est votre nom de famille? What is your last name? Second example, quel est votre prénom? Prénom is first name. What is votre, the polite form for your? Quel est votre prénom? What is your first name? Okay, so you can see now, more in detail, that. Nom, prénom are masculine words. And that's the reason why, in that case, you get to choose the article here according to the gender of the word it is connected to. Quel, masculine form, because nom is masculine. Quel, masculine form, because prénom is masculine. Okay, let's see now the feminine. And the good news is that, as usual in French, we write the thing differently, but then we can pronounce them the same way. And then the feminine form is written like that, Q-U-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, but it's pronounced like the masculine form. Quel at the masculine, quel at the feminine. Okay, so it's basically same pronunciation. Okay, and then here we've got two examples. So, for the same reason as previously, we had this nom and then prénom. They were masculine words, so you would ha you will have to, to put this quel form at the masculine. And then here, nationalité and address. So, nationality, address, are feminine words. So, it does mean that you will have to use this article interrogatif, quel, at the feminine form. Quel est, what is, votre, your, nationalité. What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Okay. Quelle est votre adresse? What is your address? Okay. So, let's repeat them. Quel est votre nom de famille? Quel est votre prénom? Quelle est votre nationalité? Quelle est votre adresse? Okay. So, remember one thing for the phonetics, okay, the way to pronounce them. Quel, masculine form here, will be pronounced exactly as the feminine form here. Quel. So, only one sound, okay. And then, 
the second thing that you've got to remember of course you can well basically record these articles with the word they are connected to so it does mean that if the word is at the plural form then you will have to put the plural form uh, the rule in French if you remember correctly from the previous lessons we've been lessons we've been doing uh, is to put this final s at the end of the words to put the plural okay so quel here for the masculine singular will become quel here masculine plural okay quel here feminine singular will become quel with the s feminine plural and the good news is that you will pronounce them the same way all right so quel 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 and quel okay remember that in some cases of course you will have to make this little liaison you know this little link between the words so if the word or the verb or whatever is coming after is starting with the vowel of course you will have to put the this little link but then if you pronounce it or if you pronounce them just like that quel 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 okay going to discover together les jours et les mois so the days and the month okay les jours et les mois so let's see that together and so we'll start with les jours de la semaine okay semaine is week les jours so you can see that it's the plural form huh? the days huh? les jours of the la semaine les jours de la semaine the days of the week okay so we'll start with the first one and in france uh, the week starts with lundi monday lundi lundi okay remember un is pronounced like un lundi 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 then mardi mardi so you can hear that you don't pronounce it that strongly this air huh? mardi mardi okay you don't need to go too deep like mardi no 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 you don't move your tongue so it does it doesn't sound like mardi no it's really soft mardi 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 okay the next one is mercredi mercredi wednesday mercredi mercredi okay next one jeudi jeudi remember when you combine this e u you get the sound e jeudi jeudi so i insist a little bit so make it softer jeudi jeudi then e n nasal and it's en en so remember vendredi 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 okay then samedi samedi don't insist on the uh, huh? samedi samedi all right and the last one dimanche dimanche you get the sh 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 and then a n en en dimanche okay let's see them one more time lundi mardi mercredi jeudi vendredi samedi dimanche normally in france we tend to use this le weekend so if we're talking about the weekend okay but then pronounce it the french way weekend le weekend okay but then in uh, other uh, french speaking uh, countries they they tend to use this la fin de semaine la fin de semaine okay but then in most of the cases if you talk with french people it will be le weekend le weekend if you want to talk about les mois de l'année okay année year mois month okay les mois de l'année 
so we'll see now the first one the first one January so it looks well it looks a bit the same no no wow no but anyway anyway janvier so that's the way to pronounce it janvier a n an okay and then ye 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 janvier then comes février février okay remember when you have this accent aigu on the top of uh, then you pronounce it a e, okay there is a lesson regarding this topic so uh, don't be afraid and if you're not sure about that well try to practice it février février okay then mars okay so in a way it's an exception because normally final s is not pronounced in french okay we've got some exceptions and this one is one of them so mars pronounce the final s mars mars okay then avril 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 nothing really tricky about this month so i mean for the pronunciation avril okay here be careful because people tend to try to pronounce it to, to pronounce it the, 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 the english way in french remember when you combine this a ah, and then E vowels you get the sound a eh, a eh. so really open a eh, okay and then you pronounce it me me okay so don't pronounce e uh, in, don't try to pronounce it no it's me me so it's not my it's me okay and then here well it's a bit tricky but still e n goes like un un okay and then you get ju juin 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 okay let's see them one more time janvier février mars avril mai juin okay second round hop juillet okay you get this double l here yeah, 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 yeah. Juillet, juillet. Don't pronounce this final t, e t here at the end. E, juillet, juillet. So it's July. And then here, two options because uh, well, two options are acceptable in French. The first one, you don't pronounce the final t. Ou, ou, ou. Second one, you pronounce it. Oot, oot, oot. All right. So remember, first option, don't pronounce it. Oo, oo, oo. Second option, you pronounce it. Oot, oot, oot. Okay. Then, well, it's it's quite simple normally for uh, English-speaking persons. Or then, it's quite close to uh, other. Uh, languages as well so septembre 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 remember this e m en septembre br, br. you don't insist on the final e uh, septembre septembre then same thing here don't insist on the final e uh. octobre 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 novembre novembre November, okay, E M en en November, November, and the last one, December, 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 same thing, E M en December, okay, so let's repeat them, juillet, remember this, yeah yeah yeah, juillet, ou, first option, août, second option, septembre. October, November, December. Okay, the little gift. L'hiver, l'hiver, and it means winter. So I've been putting this M here just to tell you that it's masculine. L'hiver, le printemps, le printemps, spring. L'été, l'été, summer. So I forgot to put it, but here I should put M because it's masculine. L'été, l'automne, 
l'automne. And same thing here, it should be M, automne, masculine. L'automne. Okay, so let's repeat it. L'hiver, le printemps, l'été, l'automne. And then, the last thing for this lesson, if you want to introduce the, the dates, okay, so if you want to tell what day it is uh, today, so, aujourd'hui means today, aujourd'hui, today, nous sommes, so we use the verb to be, okay, we are, nous sommes, le 8 juin 2012. Okay, so forget for the 2012, don't be afraid. We'll see that a bit later for the numbers. Okay, aujourd'hui, today, nous sommes, we are, le, you put the article, definite article, okay, and then you put the, the date here. Okay, you start with the, the number, the month, and then the year. Okay, or then, second option, aujourd'hui, so it doesn't change, it's here, today, c'est, it is, this is, and then you put the date, le 8 juin 2012. Okay? Le masculin et le féminin. So let's see how we will modify some words that are masculine into a feminine form here. Because for instance, we're talking about, well, whether professions or occupations. Here, student, assistant, actor dancer, baker, and then computer scientist. It looks quite, quite nice in English. Informaticien is nice, but still in English, computer scientist, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Okay, so uh, the rule in French is to add a at the end of a word, to put the feminine form, okay? So for instance, here we've got étudiant, and then we've got assistant here, okay? You just take it back here, étudiant, and then you will add this E uh, at the end without modifying the first part, okay? So it will, of course, change a little bit the pronunciation because you will pronounce it at the masculine form. Il est étudiant, okay? A-N-T, étudiant. Okay, but then for the feminine form, elle est étudiante. Okay, t, t, t. Okay, you don't really insist on the e, uh, but you insist quite much on the t. Elle est étudiante. Il est assistant. So don't pronounce the final t here. But for the feminine form, elle est assistante. Okay, étudiant, étudiante. Assistant, assistante. All right. Then we've got now the tricky ones. Il est acteur. Okay, so it's one of the irregular ones. E U R here. Acteur, and it, would, it will become ris. So E U R is becoming ris. Elle est actrice. So act is becoming actrice. Okay? And then we've got a second group with this EUR combination. Il est danseur. EUR is becoming euse. Danseuse. Okay? Danseur, masculine. Danseuse, feminine form. Il est danseur. Elle est danseuse. Okay? Then we've got this group, like boulanger, boulanger, a er. So if you add this final e at the end, then you will have to put this accent here, accent grave. Remember, when you've got this e plus this accent grave, you pronounce it like e, really open e sound. Okay, so boulanger, boulanger. And then, feminine form, boulangère, boulangère. Same thing, don't insist too much on the final E, boulangère. Okay? Il est boulanger, elle est 
boulangère. All right? And the last group is I-E-N, informaticien, yin, yin, yin. So that's the way to pronounce this I-E-N, yin, yin, okay? Informaticien, all right? And then, if you look carefully, then here, okay? You will have to double the N and then add this final E, okay? And you get the sound informaticienne sienne remember e uh, and then double n or then it could be double l or double uh, consonant here you open your e uh, so it's a e. informaticienne okay so i tend to insist a little bit okay don't worry i will pronounce it a bit more normally after il est Informaticien, elle est informaticienne. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Il est étudiant, elle est étudiante. Il est assistant, elle est assistante. Il est acteur, elle est actrice. Il est danseur, elle est danseuse. Il est boulanger. Elle est boulangère. Il est informaticien. Elle est informaticienne. We'll work on the, the vowels, les voyelles, in this lesson. And then we'll see uh, how uh, they behave when we combine them with uh, another letter. So, the vowels that we will work on, we, we won't take this uh, Y vowel on purpose, okay? So, we'll focus only on A, E. I, O, U. Okay, so remember one more time. A, E, I, O, U. Okay, remember this U is usually can be quite quite tricky uh, for um, English speaking persons, especially the the difference between the U and the U. Okay, but we'll see that a bit later. So if you combine this uh, vowel A with the vowel E, okay, you will get the sound E. So really open E, okay. And then if you combine it with the, the vowel U, then you will get the sound O. O. All right. So well, exactly the same sound as this O vowel here. So it's the same O. Okay. And then if you combine it with the the letter N. In that case, you will get what we call a nasal, so it goes in your uh, nose, and then you get the sound en, en. Okay. Uh, if you listen carefully, well, basically you don't you don't listen or you don't hear, sorry, uh, any n in uh, my pronunciation. En, en. Okay. Let's see what happens with e. Uh. So e uh, combined with the vowel e will give you the the sound e. Eh. So the same sound as we had previously here, okay? So it's the same sound, and it's e, so really open. And now, if you combine it with the u, you will get the sound e, e. And if you combine it with n, then you get the sound en. So the same sound as we had when we combine n with a, okay? En, en. All right, so let's see now for E. So for E, obviously, if you get two, uh, two times the same letter, then it, it will be a, a bit longer, so E. Okay, same thing for uh, U, it doesn't really happen. And then here, that's the interesting one. If you combine E with N, then you will get the sound un, un, un. Okay, in your nose, un. All right, so let's see O now. If you combine O and E, you will get the sound wa, 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 wa. So make it repeat it like that, you know, wa, 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 wa. And then after that, only one wa, okay? Then if you combine it with u, you will get the sound oo. So as I said previously, the, the, the difficulty, one of the big difficulty for uh, English speaking uh, persons is this difference between the oo here and the U here. U 
U. Okay, so you will have the, the, the time to, to work on that. But still it's U in that case. If you combine it with N, then you will get the sound on. Same thing, nasal, so in your nose. On. On. All right, let's see the, the last one. So if you combine U and E, you get the sound UI, UI, UI. All right, so really U. It's not U, okay, so it's U. Ui, ui, all right, and then well, basically it doesn't exist. This uo, and if you combine it with the n, then you get the sound un. So before we had the difference between this un here and this un here, but nowadays in France, at least, you don't make any difference between the two. Okay, so it's un here and un here. All right, so let's see them one more time. A, E, O, an, E, 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 an, I, un, O, wa, U, on, U, Ui, un. So we'll discover les chiffres in this lesson. I hope you're ready because it's starting right now. Les chiffres. Zero. Zero. Okay, so remember, you get this z and then e accent aigu, z, ro. Okay, then un. All right, so when you combine this u and n, you get the nasal sound un, un. Deux. Final X not pronounced, okay. Deux. Trois. Final S not pronounced. Trois. Quatre. Quatre. Okay. So remember that even if you get this U vowel here, basically you don't pronounce it. Because that's the rule in French. When we get this Q letter and then a vowel after, then we will, we will have to put this U. Okay. So... You get this Q, U, A, but then the sound that you will pronounce is K. Okay? Quatre. Quatre. All right? And next, cinq. 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 And be careful here, because even if it's ending with this X, well, you'll have to pronounce it like S. S, -s, -s, -s. Okay? So you get the six pronunciation. Six, six. Okay, so it's not six, it's six. All right. Then here, remember, P is not pronounced. Okay, it doesn't exist. So you get this set sound. Set, set. Okay. Then here, final T is pronounced. So huit, huit. Remember in French, this H letter here okay uh, doesn't exist phonetically so we we don't really pronounce it okay so if you listen carefully you will only listen or hear these vowels at the beginning of the word huit huit okay and then neuf 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 okay and we'll discover a quite useful thing because in leçon B, if you remember carefully, uh, I did introduce the, the, the numbers uh, till uh, 9 and then we'll continue. So from 10 to 20. Okay? De 10 à 20. Okay, so let's start now. 10. Okay, so remember, final X here is pronounced like S. 10. 10. Okay? Then 11. 11. Okay, so O plus N give you the sound on, on, onze, onze. Okay, final E doesn't exist phonetically. Onze. Okay, douze, douze. O, U, the two together will give you the sound O. Okay, and then Z. Douze, douze. All right. Then now, if you combine this E and E, you get the sound E, really open. Treize. Treize. Final E, as usual, not pronounced. 
13. 13. Okay? And here, 14. So remember, Q and U here. Well, basically, you get to put this U vowel because that's the rule in French. Even if you don't pronounce it, okay, so you will get the sound K here. K. 14. 14. Okay? Same thing here. U is, doesn't exist, so 15. 15. 15. All right? I-N, nasal. So it's 1, 1. 15. 15. Okay? Then it continues, of course. Now you get this 16. 16. Same thing. Final E doesn't exist. 16. E uh, and E together, they give you the sound E, E, really open. Says, says, okay? Then it becomes <laughs> logical now, because if you look carefully, you get this, this, okay? This, and then set. So if you remember this, it's here, it's 10, and then set, 7, okay? So it's clear. But then for the pronunciation, D set. Okay, so you don't insist on the s. Dix-sept. 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 Okay? Then, dix-huit. So you will make this little link between the two, the liaison. Dix-huit. 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 Okay? Then, dix-neuf. 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 Okay? E, U, E. 9, 9, 9, 19. And the last one, so this G letter is here, but you don't pronounce it, okay? And then final T doesn't exist phonetically either, so basically you will only need to pronounce these three letters, so you get V, V, and then you get nasal, I, N, 1, 20, 20, 20, okay? Hi everyone, bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 2, Leçon D. So let's see what we'll discover together in this lesson. And we'll work on les adjectifs possessifs, so really useful. Um, well, in French, as usual, we will have the difference between masculin, masculine form. So for the masculine form, we'll have mon, mon. Ton, ton, son, son, notre, notre, votre, votre, leur, leur. Okay, so let's be clear, you know, when we talk about les adjectifs possessifs, in English it will be my, your, uh, his, uh, our, your, their. Okay, but then in French, well, basically we'll, we'll have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural. And then keep in mind, we'll see that a bit later uh, when I will give you some examples, that in French we don't decide whether it's masculine, feminine, or or plural according to the subject, like in English, because in English you put whether the masculine or the feminine according to the subject, but we will in French put the masculine according to, or the feminine or the plural, according to the word it is connected to. Okay, so it's quite important to just remember that because uh, it will basically, it will be really important for the, the decision whether you put the masculine or the feminine or the plural form, okay? So we saw first, now here, the masculine form. Let's check the feminine form. And it's ma, ta, sa, okay? So you can see, a, well, well, of course, differences, but then still, you know, it works like M, M, T, and then T, and S, S, okay? So, well, mon, masculine, ma, feminine form. Ton, masculine form, ta, feminine form, son, masculine form, sa, feminine form. And then the good news is that notre is the same, votre is the same, and then leur, 
is the same. Okay, so you don't really have a difference between these three persons. You will have to use the same adjective possessive. Okay, so the only difference is there. Mon, ton, son, ma, ta, sa. Okay, and now let's see the plural part here. Okay, so for the phonetical or pronunciation aspect of it, then remember that this ES here combined will give you the sound E. Okay, so you'll pronounce it like ME, 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 okay, TE, so logical, same pronunciation here, TE, SE, all right, so ME, TE, SE, okay. And then for the plural, no, vo, and then leur. Okay, so remember, even if you've got this final S, you don't pronounce it, as it was the case already for this word, no, you don't pronounce the final S, vo, doesn't you don't pronounce it, leur. Okay, so if we say that one more time, it's me, te, se, and then no. Vos, leur. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. So for the masculine, mon père. Okay, so père means father. Okay, so father is masculine, and so you will put mon père. So you will put here the masculine adjective possessive, my father, just because father is masculine. Okay, so the, the, the subject. The person who is actually talking about his father or her father doesn't really uh, affect the fact that you use the masculine or the feminine here. You put the masculine because father is masculine. Okay? So, vélo, bicycle. If you want to say my bicycle, you will say mon vélo. Okay? Just because vélo is masculine. Un vélo and then mon vélo. All right? Let's see now a few or two examples for the feminine. Uh, mother, mother is feminine, and then you will have ma mère. Ma mère, my mother, ma mère. Okay? Here you get voiture, voiture means car, a car, okay? And it's feminine, so une voiture. Same thing here, you will put the feminine form ma voiture. Ma voiture. Okay, and let's see now for the plural. So, parents, parents. Mes parents. Okay, because it's the plural form here. Okay, so you get the plural form here as well. Mes parents. Okay, and then ami, friends. Okay, it's the plural form, so it's mes ami. Okay, and then let's be purist and make the, this beautiful liaison between these two words. Mes amis, mes amis, mes amis. All right. So I hope it's clear. Because of course, as usual in French, we've got some exceptions, and the exceptions are for the feminine words, like identité, for instance. Identité. So it does mean identity. Okay. Um, if you look carefully. At this word, you can notice that it is starting with a vowel, so e in that case. Okay, and then for aesthetical reasons, we think that ma identité. So the way that normally you should uh, you should put uh, the feminine form, so ma identité, doesn't sound nice. So for that reason, we put the masculine adjective possessive so remember with the words feminine words that start with a vowel like e here identité you will have to use les adjectifs possessifs masculin so the masculine form so it goes like mon identité mon identité so my identity mon identité mon identité okay another Example, adresse, so same thing here, adresse is a feminine word, but then it starts with a, okay? Same thing, you will have to use adjective possessif, masculin. Mon adresse, mon adresse, 
my address, mon adresse, mon adresse. Okay, you can hear now this little link, so you get to pronounce this N. Mon adresse, mon adresse. Okay, and the last one I, I took, same thing, opposition, opposition, well basically feminine, but then it starts with the O, mon opposition, mon opposition, you make this link, huh? mon opposition, mon opposition, so let's repeat it one more time, mon identité, mon adresse, mon opposition, okay, I hope Everything was okay with you. Uh, so it was Leçon D. Okay, so remember to check for the next lesson and the previous lessons there, here. And then you get, of course, more material at the following website www.imagier.net. Okay, bye bye. Work on les pronoms toniques. So they're useful and Normally, we tend to introduce them quite fast in French because you will have to use them. Les pronoms toniques. So if you remem remember, we saw les pronoms personnels. Les pronoms personnels like je, I, tu, you, etc., etc. Okay? But then in that case, when you want to use this pronom tonique, normally uh, you want to insist. Okay? And then you want to use this moi form. So moi is me. So that's the main difference between moi, me, and then je, I. Because je, normally you will use that to construct a sentence as a subject. Okay? Normally this moi is not a subject, so it's not possible to put that right before a verb. It would be a mistake. Okay? Moi, so it's me. Moi. So remember this O-E combination gives you the sound wa wa wa. Moi. Okay, and then you get toi, toi. For the masculine form, we get lui, lui, lui. Okay, and for the feminine form, we've got elle, elle. So you can notice that, well, basically for the masculine, it does change because uh, pronoun personnel is il, okay, and in that case, pronoun tonique is lui. All right, but then for the feminine form, it's the same, so it's L. Okay, and then good news, same thing for the plural, nous, vous. Okay, so they don't change. You get nous, and then you get vous, as for the pronoun personnel. And same thing here for the plural form, uh, third person of the plural. So the masculine form will change, and you get the sound. E, remember, final X not pronounced. E, e, and then plural L, L. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Moi, toi, lui, elle, nous, vous, e, L. Okay, so I did prepare a few examples. So the first one, moi. J'aime le tennis. Okay, so here you can see that you start the sentence with moi. Okay, so me. Okay, and then you have to put pronoun personnel. Je. Okay, so in that case you take the e uh away because the verb is starting with a vowel. Okay, but then j'aime. So this j'aime form, I like, or then I love. Okay. Le tennis. Moi, j'aime le tennis. So basically, if you start with moi here, you want to insist on the fact that you really like uh, or you really love tennis. Okay, let's see the second example. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Okay, préférer, to prefer, obviously. Okay, toi, tu Préfère le golf. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Okay? And then here. So we've got here the masculine form. And here we've got the feminine form. So let's see the masculine form first. Lui, il adore le foot. Lui, il adore le foot. 
Okay? So here, lui, pronom tonique, and then il, pronom personnel, adoré, to adore, le foot. We're talking about football here. Okay? Elle, elle déteste, détester means to hate. Okay? Le basket. And we're talking about basketball here. Basket. Okay? Elle, elle déteste le basket. Okay? So even if you see them twice, I mean, you've got this L, L, okay? Then remember that in that case, basically you want to insist, really. So you put first pronom tonique. It does look the same as pronom personnel here, but still, you get two different pronouns here. Pronom tonique and then pronom personnel. Elle, elle déteste le basket. Okay? Same thing here. Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Okay? So the difference between aimer here, like I love, okay, and aimer bien, normally when you put this bien after aimer, well it's because you want to insist on the fact that you like, you don't love something, you like it. Okay? Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. All right? Next example. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Vous, vous détestez la natation. Natation is coming from nager, nager to swim. Okay? And then natation is the substantive form. Vous, vous détestez la natation. And then the two last examples. So first the masculine here and then the feminine here. So let's see the masculine form. E, so if you remember it was E, pronom tonique. Il préfère, so préféré to prefer and then you can see that it's here the plural form. Il préfère la marche. La marche is coming from the verb marcher, marcher to walk. Okay, la marche. E, il préfère la marche. And then the feminine example. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Okay, let's read them one more time. Moi, j'aime le tennis. Toi, tu préfères le golf. Lui, il adore le foot. Elle, elle déteste le basket. Nous, nous aimons bien la boxe. Vous, Vous détestez la natation. Eux, ils préfèrent la marche. Elles, elles adorent le jogging. Work on the questions, so les questions, and especially the little words that you will have to use or to put at the beginning of your questions. And the first example that we can see is quand. Quand means when. Okay? So let's see two examples. So if you start a question with Quand, like in the first example here, quand arrivez-vous, okay? Arriver is to arrive, okay? So, vous, second person of the plural, you can use that for a group of person, or then you can use that for one person, and that's the polite way to, um, to use. Um, quand arrivez-vous, and now you can see that we've been changing the order, so normally... Of course, the subject is before the verb, okay? But then, the correct way to make a question, if you start with this quand, is to change the order. So, first to put the verb, then you put this pronom personnel, okay? Quand arrivez-vous, all right? And then the rule is like, in French, you get to raise a little bit your voice at the end of a question. Of a question. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? Okay, can make this little link between the two. Quand arrivez-vous? Quand arrivez-vous? All right. And then, well, when we talk, then we, we normally uh, have this option to, to drop this uh, rule. So, not to use this rule, so just to put the first, the, the verb, and then the subject after. And uh, we tend to add this esque form here, esque, okay? So, and you'll get this, this question. So, quand 
est-ce que vous arrivez? It is exactly the same question. Okay, it is quite long if you compare it to the first one. Uh, it is more spoken. Okay, it is less formal, and that's normally what you'll hear if you talk with French people. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Okay, and then here you see that because you've been using this esque form, then you keep the normal order. So first the subject, vous, and then the verb. Okay, quand est-ce que vous arrivez? All right, and then don't be afraid to raise your voice a little bit at the end. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? You see? So it's not really the opera. You, you, you don't need to, to, to go really high, you know, but it's just a little bit. Quand est-ce que vous arrivez? That's it. And the next one is où. Où means where. Where. Okay, so quand, when, remember, où, where. Two examples. Same rule, okay, so the formal or the classic way if you want to ask a question with who would be to change the order. So first the verb, then the subject here. Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? Where do you live? Habiter is to live. So you live like if you're talking about the place where you are living, okay? Où habitez-vous? Où habitez-vous? And then same possibility, you just add this S que, and then you keep the normal order of the sentence, so subject and verb. Où est-ce que vous habitez? Où est-ce que vous habitez? All right. Next. Pourquoi? Pourquoi is very really useful because it's why. Okay, so remember, quand, when, où, where, pourquoi, why. Same thing here, okay, pourquoi, you should change the order. Okay, so first the verb and then the subject. That's the correct or formal or classic way of asking a question. Pourquoi venez-vous? Venir is to come. So why do you come? Pourquoi venez-vous? Pourquoi venez-vous? All right. Same rule here. If you want to add this s que, then you just keep the you just keep the, the, the classic order like subject and verb. Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Pourquoi est-ce que vous venez? Okay. And then, comment, comment is how? How? Comment venez-vous? How do you come? Comment venez-vous? Comment venez-vous? Comment est-ce que vous venez? Comment est-ce que vous venez? And then the last one. Combien? How much, how many, so in French we use this combien, how much, or how many. Combien de sucre, sucre means sugar, and then voulez-vous, okay, vouloir, to want, okay, so how many sugar do you want. Combien de sucre voulez-vous, combien de sucre voulez-vous, combien de sucre voulez-vous, voulez and then same thing here, just add this S que. Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? Combien de sucre est-ce que vous voulez? All right. Discover together le verbe faire, so the verb to do. Okay, so faire, faire is uh, really useful because we tend to use it uh, quite much in French. Okay, so it's, well, usually quite important to discover this verb at the right beginning. So le verbe faire. Je fais. Je fais. Fait. Remember, final S not pronounced. Je fais. Tu fais. Same rule here, final S not pronounced. Tu fais. Il, masculin, and then elle, féminin, fait. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle, fait. So if we take one second, actually you can see that here, here, and here, you get the same phonetical form, so the same form that you will pronounce. Okay, so you get je fais, tu fais, il fait, and then elle fait. It's the same. Okay, then nous. So it's quite strange because French people tend to pronounce faisons. Okay, so like here, this a e is not pronounced like normally we should pronounce it like a, but then like 
euh, ok Nous faisons. Nous faisons. Ok And then this one is a bit tricky, so you will have to remember that. And it's quite funny because many French people tend to make the mistake and tend to, to say vous faisiez, okay? Uh, but then no, 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 no. <laughs> it's vous faites. Vous faites, okay? So remember, a final S here is not pronounced and then this E uh, is not pronounced either. So faites, faites, vous faites. And il, plural, font, final T not pronounced, font, font, elles font. Okay, so I will repeat the whole thing one more time. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. We'll discover la forme négative. So if you want to say that you are not blah 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 doing something or so the negative form in French and so the negative form in French is composed of two elements. The first one is ne and then you get your verb and right after your verb you will have to put this pas. Okay, so first ne then the verb, and after that, pa. Okay, we write it P-A-S, okay, but as usual, final S is not pronounced, so it's pa. Okay, remember one thing, in some cases, we will have verbs starting whether with a vowel, or then with H, 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 plus a vowel, and in French, H is not pronounced, okay, so for these verbs, a uh, will have to disappear and it will be written like that n okay then will come the verb and after that doesn't change it will be pa all right so let's see a few examples now so for n pa so if you get a sentence like il parle avec moi so il parle he is talking avec with moi, me. Okay, remember this moi, uh, we introduced that uh, in this unit and it was a pronoun tonique. Okay, il parle avec moi. So if you want to put the negative form of this sentence, so remember, first part ne, so before the verb, then you put your verb parle, basically you don't change it, just put it there, parle, and after that you put the second part pas. Okay, then you get the sentence, il ne parle pas avec moi. And that's it. You've got your negative sentence here. Okay, let's see now how it will go with an apostrophe pas. Okay, so nous allons en France. Okay, so in that case, if you look, You've got the verb aller. Aller means to go. Okay. Nous allons. Nous allons. We are going. Okay. En France, to France. Here, first letter is A. Okay. Remember the rule. If it's not with a vowel like here, it is the case. You will have to drop and take away this E form. So that's the reason why we've got this N apostrophe like that. N'allons. Nous n'allons. And then you don't really need to think, you just put this pas after the verb, en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. Nous n'allons pas en France. And that's it. Okay, second example here, it's with the verb habiter. Habiter is to leave, you know, when you, you introduce the place where you, where you live. Okay, and then here, I took this example or this verb just because, of course, it's starting with H, but as I said, you don't pronounce it, so the first sound you hear here is the vowel. And that's enough just to drop and to take away this E. Uh. So you will basically make it like in this example. You will put this N apostrophe. Elle n'habite pas dans cette maison. So elle habite, she lives or she is living, dans, in, this 
house. Elle habite dans cette maison. And the negative form. Elle n'habite pas dans cette maison. This lesson will work on les adjectifs démonstratifs. So les adjectifs démonstratifs, in English it would be this or these, okay? But then as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine and the plural, okay? So we'll see that. So for the masculine form, it will be ce, ce, and then it will be cette. Set, okay. So as usual in French, remember, it can be tricky if a letter, uh, sorry, uh, um, an adjective like that, for instance, is ending, or it could be an article, is ending with a, okay. Just because for some words starting with a vowel or with h plus a vowel, then we will have to modify it, okay. And that's the reason why here we've got set okay but then it's still the masculine form se set for the feminine it will be set so only one set and then for the plural form it will be se okay so let's see that again se or then set féminin set so you can notice that phonetically these two are pronounced the same way okay set here and then set here. And for the plural, se, se, really open this, e, e, se, okay? So let's see a few examples now. The first one, so I did take this train, train is train, okay? So it's masculine, so it starts with d, so no problem. You will put this se train, se train, okay? It would be translated like this train, se train. Okay, here you've got ordinateur. So, ordinateur, a computer, okay, and it's masculine, un ordinateur, okay, but if you, if you look carefully, it starts with O, okay, so vowel, and then you will have to take this set form, so the masculine form, but the one that will use with the words that start with vowels, or then H plus voyelle. Okay, so set ordinateur, this computer, set ordinateur, okay, and then here we've got the word homme, man, okay, but then it starts with H, as in French, H is not pronounced, so the first sound that we hear is O, okay, and then it will follow the same rule, you'll have to use the masculine adjective demonstrative, but this form, set homme, set homme. All right, femme, woman, cette femme, this woman, cette femme, cette femme. Okay, and then the last one, personne, persons, pluriel, ces personnes, ces personnes. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Ce train, cet ordinateur, cet homme. Cette femme, ces personnes. In this lesson, and we'll work on uh, the way to conjugate uh, les verbes réguliers, so the regular verbs of the first group, okay, and then with er, so let's start now. So let's take an example. The example is parler, parler is to speak or to talk, okay, and then if you have a look at it like that, you can basically divide this verb in two parts. The first part, parle, and then second part, Er, so it does mean that this verb, ending with er, is belonging to the first group of verbs. In French, we've got three groups, okay, the two first are uh, regular and the last one, the third one, is uh, irregular. So this is one verb ending with er, it does mean that it belongs to the, the first group and it won't be tricky or so difficult to conjugate. So we'll see together how to conjugate this verb. The first person like je here, so you will put this parle again, so remember, and after that you just put the ending e. Uh. And then the way to pronounce it is je parle, parle. So remember we put it, okay, but then we don't really pronounce it, je parle, okay. 
then for two you will have to put a s okay phonetically tu parles so you've got the two first forms you pronounce them the same way you write them differently of course because you get a uh, here and then you've got a uh, and s okay but then phonetically they are the same je parle tu parles okay so let's see what you'll get for il and elle and well as you see you get il parle elle parle so it's the same form here so if you really want to only only speak and only use orally the, the, the language, well, it's, it's quite easy to conjugate these verbs. Je parle, tu parles, il parle, elle parle. Okay? For nous, okay, we'll have, well, let's say the classical ending for nous, and it will be O-N-S. Classical because you, you will see that with the other groups as well, it's quite common to have this O-N-S for nous. Okay? Nous parlons. Okay, remember final S is not pronounced, okay, and then this O N together, they will give you the sound on, on, okay, nous parlons, nous parlons, all right, let's see now for vous, vous parlez, okay, remember a Z when you combine them together, you get the sound E, vous parlez, all right, and the last one, so even if you've got this E N T, <laughs> don't hate me but you won't pronounce these letters okay you have to write them for the plural form but you don't pronounce them so you get il parle elle parle so the good news is that you get here je parle tu parles il elle parle and then if you check it here il elle parle so it's the same phonetical pronunciation or phonetical form sorry okay and then you get nous parlons and then vous parlez all right so here remember the endings you will have to write them okay all right so we'll take another example regarder is to watch okay so you can see that the verb is ending with a air, okay? So you take it, you just take this a air away and then you keep this radical form, like we say in, in French, only this form, okay? So you will get je regarde, tu regardes, il regarde, elle regarde, nous regardons, vous regardez, il regarde, elle regarde. Okay, so one more time here. Regarde, 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 and then regarde. So phonetically, only one form here. And then regardons, regardez. All right? Remember that even if this beautiful verb aller that we tend to use quite often because it means to go, okay? Even if it ends with a air, it is not regular at all. In this lesson, we will count together, yeah! So from 20 uh, to 50, de 20 à 50. I hope you're ready because it's starting right now. 20, 21. Okay, so remember to make this little link, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, 26, so remember it's ending with X, but then we pronounce it S, 26, 27, remember set, it was this P, disappear, you don't pronounce it, 27, 28, so here you make the, the liaison, 28, 28, 29, 29, 
29. Then here, remember this E N en, en, 30, 30, 30. Okay, don't insist on the E, it doesn't exist here. 30. 31. 31. 31. 32. 32. 33. 33. Remember, final S doesn't exist. 33. 34. 34. 34. Remember, in French, the rule is that you, if you start with, well, if you get this combination Q, U, A, well, you will pronounce it K. K. Same thing for the other vowels, okay? So, because that's the rule. After Q, normally we put U and then an another vowel, but then this U, well, basically it's not pronounced, okay? So, K. 4, 34, 35, 35, 36, 36, 37, 37, 38, 38, 39, 39, 40, Okay, so same rule as previously, as for 4, okay? K, 40, 40, okay? 41, 41, 42, 42, 43, 43, 44, 44. 45, 45, 46, 46, 47, 47, 48, 48, 49, 49, 50, 50. Same thing here. Okay, remember that you get this QU, but then you don't pronounce the U. And then you get the nasal. 1, and then en. 50. 50. Okay? We'll discover together le verbe venir. Venir means to come. Okay, to come. So it's quite useful. And then you will have to use it uh, quite often in French. So let's see how you conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay, because... This verb is not regular, just wanted to tell you first, okay? So, the first form is je viens, je viens, okay? Remember this i, 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 viens, viens, and then this nasal, final s not pronounced, je viens, tu viens, so it's the same form, okay? Tu viens, il, elle, vient. Final T, not pronounced. Il vient, elle vient. So, if we take one second just to have a look at the je, tu, il, elle forms, they are phonetically the same. Vient, vient, vient. Okay? You write the S, S, T, but then you pronounce these forms the same way. Okay? For nous, it will be different because nous is here. Nous Venons, okay, O-N-S, classical ending for nous, okay, final S not pronounced, so O-N, on, venons, venons, nous venons, nous venons, okay, and then vous, venez, remember a Z combined like that, et, venez, venez, vous, venez, okay, and then the last form, so remember here, it's quite interesting because we've got this a vowel here, and then we've got a double N after, okay? And the rule in French is that when you get this a and a double vowel after, you will have to pronounce this a like a, a, all right? So, vn, 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 okay? 
ils viennent, elles viennent. Ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? E -N -T, you don't pronounce them. Ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? This lesson will work on vocabulary and then the, the vocabulary connected to uh, la famille. So, so the, the, the family, la famille. And then we'll start with the, the grandparents. Les grands-parents. Les grands-parents. Remember, you don't pronounce this final S here. Grands-parents. Okay. So, le grand-père, grandfather. Le grand-père. Remember, e accent grave like that. It's uh, this open e. Uh, pe, pe. Le grand-père. Le grand-père. And then the feminine form, grandmother, la grand-mère, la grand-mère. Okay, so, les grands-parents, le grand-père, la grand-mère. Okay, so, let's see now the parents. Les parents, les parents, le père, the father, le père, la mère, the mother, la mère. Okay, so, les parents, the parents, le père, la mère. All right? So, till now, I think that it's not really, really difficult to remember. Okay? Let's see now. Les enfants. Okay? So, first, I don't make the liaison. Les enfants. Just for you to see that we've got this en, and then we've got this en as well. Same pronunciation here. Enfant. Don't pronounce the T, don't, you don't pronounce the S. Enfant, okay? And now we can focus on the liaison here. So you should make the little link. Les enfants. Les enfants. Okay? Enfants, children. Les enfants, the children. So let's see. Uh, it will be the masculine form, so the son, okay? So it's le, and then even if it... You've got this L. Well, basically, you don't pronounce it, and then, strangely, you pronounce the final S. Le fils. Le fils. Le fils. Le fils. And then the feminine form, the daughter. La fille. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this L, L here, and E will give you the sound Y. La fille. La fille. Okay, so make the difference between the masculine form. Le fils. And then the feminine form, la fille. Okay? So, les enfants, le fils, la fille. Okay? And then the grandchildren, but then in French we use the petit. Petit is like small. Okay? So, les petits enfants. Make this liaison here. Petits ans. Petits ans. Okay? Les petits enfants. Les petits enfants. So, grandson would be in French, petit fils, okay? So, le petit fils, le petit fils, and then the feminine form, la petite t -t. So, <laughs> I insist because here it's t, t okay? So, really, you need to make the difference between the masculine form, petit, and then the feminine form, petite t, okay? So, la petite fille. La petite fille. So let's repeat them. Les petits enfants, le petit fils, la petite fille. Okay? And then, when you're talking about your uh, in-law uh, family, well, in, in French, we use this beau and belle. So uh, it's beautiful. Okay? So the beautiful family, you're talking about your in laws okay? So, la belle famille. La belle famille. Remember, I-L-L-E, I, I. La belle famille, okay? So, uh, père, okay, father. So, father-in-law, okay? In French, it's le beau-père. The beautiful father. <laughs> le 
beau père. So remember this E, A, U combination of vowels only give you the sound O, beau, beau, okay? Le beau père. Mother in law, la belle mère, la belle mère, la belle mère, okay? So let's see them one more time. La belle famille, le beau père, la belle mère, all right? And then brother in law, le beau frère, le beau frère, le beau frère. So frère is brother, okay? And then feminine form, here you get sœur, okay? So sister in law, la belle, so we put the belle form here because it's the feminine form, sœur, la belle sœur. La belle sœur. And in this lesson, we'll discover the questions uh, in which you will find qui, que, or then quoi. Okay, so let's discover now qui. Okay, qui means who. Okay, so if you want to ask a question regarding someone, like in these two examples, so the first one, who is he? Qui est il? Okay, so remember the formal, the normal way. When we start a question with qui, or then as we saw in the previous previous lessons, okay, you will have to change the order and to put your subject, il, he, here, after the verb. Qui est il? And then you make the liaison. Qui est-il? Who is he? Qui est-il? Qui est-il? Or then, let's see a little example here. Qui vient? Vient is venir. Uh, vient is venir, yeah, is to come, sorry. <laughs> so, qui vient, who is coming, avec toi, with you, ce soir, this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, so is coming with you this evening. Qui vient avec toi ce soir, okay? Um, if you pronounce them normally, Remember that you will have to raise your voice a little bit at the end of the question. So let's pronounce them the normal way. Qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Okay. Second one is que. So qui, who, que, what? What? Okay. And then we'll see two examples here. Que fais-tu? Okay, fait is coming from faire, faire means to do, okay, que fais-tu, so what are you doing, what do you do, okay, que fais-tu, same thing here, remember, que, so you start a question with que, then you get to change the order, you get to put the subject after the verb, okay, que fais-tu, and it's a question, que fais-tu, que fais-tu, okay, and here, Que veux-tu? So, veux is coming from vouloir, vouloir, to want. Que veux-tu? What do you want? Okay, que veux-tu? Regarder, regarder is to watch, à la télévision, well, at the television. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. So, let's read it normally now. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. Que veux-tu? Regarder à la télévision. Okay, so you can hear that I've been raising a little bit my voice at the end. And then the other option is quoi. So quoi means what as well. So you will tell me, oh, you get two what here. You get que and quoi. Yeah, for a good reason. Look at that. Well, tu fais quoi. So uh, I've been just taking the same question as we had here, this Que fais-tu? What do you do? What are you doing? Okay, but then if you're using this quoi, then it does mean that you don't start the question with it. You just put it here, for example, at the end. Okay, tu fais quoi? It is exactly the same meaning as this question. Okay, but then you can see that you just keep the normal order of the sentence subject verb okay in that case you definitely need to raise your voice at the end okay tu fais quoi tu fais quoi and then 
I took the same example as we had here. Okay. Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Okay. So let's raise the voice at the end to make it clear that it's a question. Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? Okay, so let's repeat. Qui, who, qui est-il? Qui vient avec toi ce soir? Que, what? But you start the question with it. Que fais-tu? Que veux-tu regarder à la télévision? And then quoi? You don't start the question and it means what? Tu fais quoi? Tu veux regarder quoi à la télévision? In this lesson, we'll just focus on the short thing, but quite useful, les présentations. Okay, so the first thing, when you meet someone and you want to know the name of this person, well, that's the common question or the normal question that you will have to use. Comment, so how, vous, appelez-vous. Okay, we've been seeing uh, in unit one, if my memory is correct, the verb s'appeler, so to call oneself, okay, when you introduce yourself, you use this uh, s'appeler verb, okay, so that's the reason why it will look this way. Comment vous appelez-vous, okay, so comment vous appelez-vous, so what's your name, how are you calling yourself, if you want a, a direct translation, but it's, it sounds a bit strange in English, but then that's the question. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. The other possibility that we've got is to keep the normal order. So, vous vous appelez. And then we put this comment thing at the end of the question. Okay. So, in that case, remember to raise your voice at the end. Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? Okay. So, it is exactly the same question okay it is a bit less formal this second option okay because the first one is the classic option that we've got we start with how and then we change the order we put the subject after the verb okay but then it is more, i mean completely correct to, to to ask a question like that vous vous appelez comment okay and then the other possibility would be quel est votre nom what is your votre no name. What is your name? Quel est votre nom? Quel est votre nom? Raise a little bit. Quel est votre nom? Okay, so let's see them one more time. Comment vous appelez-vous? Vous vous appelez comment? Quel est votre nom? All right. Uh, in the first example, we've been using this vous form, so the polite form that normally we should use when we meet a person for the first time, okay? But then let's, uh, let's be frank, that if you're young and uh, if you're meeting other uh, young persons, then you can use this uh, to form, uh, so the less formal way, okay? So the question will look like that. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Okay, well then, same option that we've got. Tu t'appelles comment? So you put this comment at the end. Okay, don't forget to raise your voice because it's a beautiful question here. Tu t'appelles comment? Tu t'appelles comment? And then, quel est ton nom? What is your name? Quel est ton nom? Or other options. So I've been putting this, this option for this uh, tu. Okay, you, the less formal one, and not for for the vous, because uh, it is it is quite spoken this uh, this this way. C'est quoi ton nom? Well, if you want to translate it directly, it's what your name. Okay, it looks really or it sounds really strange in English, but still it's possible in French. Uh, it is it is not formal at all, of course. Okay, so uh, don't use that uh, if it's quite important or if uh, the situation is quite formal. Okay. C'est quoi ton nom? C'est quoi ton nom? Okay, and then if you want to, well, present yourself, then remember we're using this appeler, s'appeler, okay, to call oneself, okay. Je m'appelle, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, I call myself Vincent Lefrançois. All right, but then that's the, the, the way we use to present ourselves.
Okay. Other option would be to use not to use this sapé to call oneself, but to use to be, which is totally possible. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. I am. Okay. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. And then third option, mon nom, my name. Okay. Mon nom est is mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. This lesson will discover uh, la situation de famille. So if you want to say what is your uh, situation, your personal situation, then that's the correct lesson to watch now. Let's start. Je suis célibataire. So I know that many of you will laugh when they will see this uh, beautiful célibataire word. It doesn't have any uh, other indication but the fact that you are single. Okay, so if you want to say that you are single, whether it's uh, the masculine form or the feminine form, it will be like that. Je suis célibataire. I am single. Okay, second option. J'ai un copain. Okay, boyfriend, boyfriend would be copain, okay, and then it's the feminine form here, girlfriend, copine. J'ai, so j'ai, I have, okay, j'ai un copain. I have a, boy, a boyfriend, j'ai un copain. Féminin, j'ai une copine. I have a girlfriend, j'ai une copine. Okay, so if you're in, in couple, en couple, Je suis, I am, je suis en couple. Je suis en couple. So here you want to indicate that you are living with someone, but then you are not married. Okay? Je suis en couple. You can make the liaison here. Je suis en couple. Okay? And then, fiancé, engaged. All right? And then here you get the masculine form. I've been putting here the feminine form. All right. Uh, so you lesson we'll see how to conjugate the verbs ending with er so not all the er verbs are belonging to the second group but some of them and then we'll see how to conjugate them at the present form okay so we'll take an example the example is finir so finir means to finish 
Okay, and then you can see that it's ending with ER, all right? So we'll do it like that. We'll divide it in two, so FEN, and then we take away this ER ending, all right? And we'll just keep this form here, FEN, to construct the present. So you take it and you put it here, and after that you will add this ending. So for JE it will be ES. Je fini. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Je fini. Okay. Tu fini. So ES as well, like we had for je. So same way to pronounce it as well. You don't pronounce the final S. Tu fini. Il, elle fini. So I, T. Final T, not pronounced. Il, elle fini. So, je fini, tu fini, il fini. Phonetically, it's exactly the same form for these persons. Okay? So it's quite good if you want only to talk and not to write. So just focus on this fini form. You know that it's for je, tu, and il, elle. Okay? But then for nous, so have a look. Nous finissons. Okay? E-S-S-O-N-S. -S -S. Issons. Nous Finissons, finissons. Okay, final S not pronounced. Nous finissons. Vous finissez. Vous finissez. Okay, a Z at the end gives you the, the sound E. Okay, finissez, finissez. Vous finissez. Ils finissent. So remember, as usual, when we get the verbs, E and T not pronounced. Il finis, elle finis. All right. So let's see them one more time. Je finis, tu finis, il finit, elle finit. Nous finissons, vous finissez, ils finissent, elles finissent. All right. Let's take another example. Unir to unite. Okay. Same rule. We just keep this UN and then you spot the ending, you take it away and you will keep the UN to construct. So, j'unis, same way. Tu unis, il unis, elle unis. Nous unissons, vous unissez, ils unissent, elles unissent. Okay, so it's the same, exactly the same. So, same group. Same way to uh, conjugate it, okay? Let's take choisir, third example. You spot it ending with ER here. Choisir means to, ch to choose, okay? Then, same way. Je choisis, tu choisis, il choisit, elle choisit, nous choisissons, vous choisissez, ils choisissent, elles choisissent. Then we'll discover together, well, the plural form, how to construct or how to make uh, a plural form. So it's le pluriel en français. So let's start now. So we'll take this example, okay, basic example. A friend, un ami, un ami, okay, un ami. Okay, so here you can see that we've got this uh, article indéfini, un the masculine form, singular form, and then we've got ami, friend, like that, uh, at the singular form as well. So if we want to construct the plural form, well, obviously the article will change, okay? Uh, we saw previously that uh, the plural article was de, in that case, and then we keep the same word, so ami, and the rule goes like that, you get to add at the end of the word, S, okay? In that case, and as in most of the cases, you won't pronounce it, but you will have to put it, okay? And so, you've got des amis, okay? And if you make the, the liaison, so the link between the two, you will get des amis, okay? Des amis. So, ami, remember, doesn't change. Even if you get to write the S, then you don't pronounce it. Okay, and now, let's see a few examples. 
So this one. Une femme. Une femme. Okay, so if we think about the rule that we saw previously, then une is changing and then the article become de. Okay, femme, you write it like it was at the singular form and then you just add this s at the end and as we said you don't pronounce it so you get des femmes okay des femmes so une femme singular and then des femmes right and then un homme if we make this little link between the two un homme un homme un homme and then we'll put this word at the plural form so same thing here so this uh, article indefini un is becoming de in that case and then you rewrite the word homme and after that you just put the s at the end you don't pronounce it so you get des hommes des hommes des hommes okay un homme singular form des hommes plural form Okay, and then I took, uh, well, this example with this article défini, le, okay, so the, the, le livre, le livre, okay, if you want to put the plural form, then the article here becomes les, so that's the plural form, okay, les, and then same rule, you just write livre, and then you put S at the end, but then you don't pronounce it, les livres. Le livre, les livres. So it's quite interesting uh, in this example here, because if you listen carefully, le livre, les livres. So the only way to know whether it's singular or plural is to pronounce correctly the article, in that case, le, and here, les. So it's really this le, e, and then les, e. That will make the difference between the singular form and the plural form. Okay? As usual in French, we've got exceptions. So you get words uh, that will end with this E, A, U combination of vowels. Like, for instance, une, O. So remember when you get these, these vowels like that, then you get only the sound O. Okay, une O. So in that case, well, you won't add the S as uh, like we saw previously, but then it will be the rule is that you get to put X here at the end, but then same rule, you don't pronounce it. Des O. Okay, une O, des O. All right, second group, words ending with A. Here is an example, un tuyau, okay, same rule here, you won't add S at the end, but instead of S you will put X, okay, des tuyaux, same rule, you don't pronounce it, des tuyaux, okay, un tuyau, des tuyaux, so the only difference will be with the article, because the word will be pronounced the same way. And then the last group is uh, the words ending with E, U, E. So let's take one example. Un feu. Un feu. And basically the same, same rule. You don't put S, but you will put X instead. And then you don't pronounce it. Des feux. Un feu. Des feu. Okay. There is another group of words so because normally uh, the words ending with the uh, o u like that here o u and then uh, the sound is u okay normally these words just behave like the others so uh, you just need to put s at the end but of course as usual in french we've got few exceptions so i've been listing all the exceptions of the u ending you know, words that will, well, like we saw previously, not take uh, S, but then take X at the end, okay? But still, 
as usual it's not pronounced so it doesn't really affect the pronunciation but it's just for you if you want to write them correctly at the plural form remember it's not s but it's x okay so the first one un bijou okay so i did put the translation here pluriel des bijoux okay then un caillou un caillou plural des cailloux Okay, remember, you don't pronounce it, the, the, the final X. Then, un chou, okay, remember, when you combine this C and H, you get the sound sh, 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 chou, un chou, pluriel, des choux, okay. Un genou, un genou, des genoux. Un hibou, un hibou, des hibou, des hibou. Un joujou, un joujou, des joujou, des joujou. Un pou, un pou. Des poux. Des poux. Okay? So, the good thing, if you remember carefully what uh, I've been introducing so far, is that the main, main group of uh, words are actually, you, you only need to add S at the end, and then you, well, basically you don't pronounce the, 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 the S. Or then, the exceptions, you will like these ones here, you will have to add this X at the end, but still, you won't pronounce uh, the, the, the X, okay? Um, but still, as usual, we've got exceptions. So, a uh, few exceptions, not that much, but then uh, these exceptions are really, really strange because it does mean that the pronunciation will change, okay? So, we'll take this one, uh, buff, un bœuf, and then at the plural, well, you just write it like we saw previously, so you just add this S, but then pronunciation changes quite much because you get des bœufs, des bœufs, all right? Un bœuf, des bœufs, all right? Then, un oeuf, un oeuf, des e. Okay, and we'll make the, the liaison here to make it sound more beautiful. Des e, des e, all right? Un oeuf, des e. And then the last one, this is probably the, 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 the most strange one. Un oeil, un oeil, un oeil, des yeux. Des yeux, des yeux, ye, ye, okay? Don't pronounce the final X as usual. Ye, ye, des yeux, all right? Discover together le verbe pouvoir. Pouvoir means uh, to can, okay? So it's quite useful. And then we'll discover it because, uh, well, it's not a regular verb, so it's, uh, it's always quite, uh, quite interesting to take a few minutes to really work on it and uh, try to uh, remember the way it is conjugated at the present form, okay? So the first form that we'll have is je, as usual, so je peux, okay? Final X not pronounced here, okay? So you get X, but you don't pronounce it, so basically you get the sound peu, peu, je peu, okay, so I can, je peux, okay, then tu, tu peux, same pronunciation and same same uh, spelling or writing, okay, P-E-U-X, okay, you don't pronounce the final X, tu peux, okay, je peux, tu peux, then il, elle peut, so you will put T at the end, you don't pronounce it. Il peut, elle peut. Okay? So if you look carefully, you've got peut here, you've got peut here, 
and you get peu here okay so for the three first or four because uh, there is the feminine form as well for the four four first persons here well it's the same phonetical form it's peu okay and then nous so a uh, classic ending for nous this uh, ons ending for nous okay nous pouvons nous pouvons okay you don't pronounce the, the final s nous pouvons mm -hmm. then vous pouvez okay classic ending as well for the vous form a z like that okay remember you pronounce it a a okay vous pouvez vous pouvez and then plural form il elle peuvent il elle peuvent okay so uh, be be careful because uh, as you can see you get this e u here e u here e u here and then it's coming back here as well okay so the only o u o u that does connect to the infinitive here pouvoir it's only for nous and vous okay so let's read them one more time je peux Tu peux, il peut, elle peut, nous pouvons, vous pouvez, ils peuvent, elles peuvent. Okay? As usual, as usual, this ending, this ENT ending, you write it, you don't pronounce it. Okay? Peuvent, peuvent, peuvent. Okay? So it's really useful. Uh, you should really, I mean, definitely know it by heart. Okay? So try your best. Uh, well, watch again this video if you need it, and then uh, I hope it will enter in your head quite easily. Okay, uh, let's see some example now. Je peux chanter. Okay, je peux chanter. So you can see that in that case, when you construct a verb, or sorry, you construct a, a sentence with uh, the verb uh, pouvoir, here you've got a second verb chanter and it means to sing okay so i can sing uh, well you should all the time put the second verb at the infinitive form okay so when we talk about infinitive form normally it's the basic form of the verb okay uh, je peux chanter another example tu peux partir partir is to leave you can leave tu peux Partir. All right. Same thing here. Okay. Second verb. It's, well, basically coming right after, of course, and then at the infinitive form. All right. Elle peut dessiner. Dessiner is to draw. Elle peut dessiner. She can draw. Okay. Elle peut dessiner. And in this lesson, we will try to focus on le verbe devoir. Devoir means to must. Okay. So it's quite useful and especially it's not a regular verb so it's always good to uh, spend a few minutes on the conjugation at the present of this verb okay so let's start now let's see so le verbe devoir to must at the present form je dois okay remember final s is not pronounced je dois o e when you combine the two you get the sound wa 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 je dois okay tu Dua. Final S not pronounced. Tu dois. Il, elle, doua. Final T not pronounced. Il, doua, elle, doua. Okay? So if you have a look at these forms, phonetically, they are the same forms. Okay? So doua, doua, and then doua. Okay? And then nous is coming. Nous devons okay classic ending o n s for nous okay you just pronounce this on o n this nasal okay and then the s final s is not pronounced nous devons nous devons okay nous devons well basically we must okay and then vous devez remember classic ending for vous here a z but then you pronounce this combination of two letters, e, e, deve, deve, vous devez. All right, and then the last one, ils doivent. So same thing, classic ending for the plural form, e n t 
here. Okay, but then you don't pronounce it. Doivent, doivent, elles doivent, ils doivent, elles doivent. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Je dois, tu dois, il doit, elle doit, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent, elles doivent. All right, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, je dois étudier. Étudier is to study, okay? So it's a verb, and then the rule in French goes like that. If you get to put two verbs in a sentence, like here, the second one must be at the infinitive form. So when we talk about the infinitive, it's the basic form of the, the verb, okay? So étudier, study. Je dois étudier. I must study. Je dois étudier. Okay? Then, il doit choisir. Okay? Same thing here. Choisir means to, to choose. Okay? And so, I did put here the infinitive form, so the basic form, IR form. Il doit choisir. Okay? He must choose. And the last example. Nous devons répondre. Répondre is to answer. Répondre here. Okay. Nous devons répondre. We must answer. Nous devons répondre. Okay. We are going to discover together uh, European countries. So les pays européens. Okay. So let's start now with les pays européens. And the first one. La Grèce. La Grèce. Okay, so remember, gr, gr. And then this accent grave like that, open. Grèce. Okay. La Grèce. Le Portugal. Le Portugal. L'Espagne. L'Espagne. Okay, don't insist on the, the final E uh, because basically it's not pronounced. L'Espagne, 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 l'Italie, l'Italie, l'Italie. Okay, so you can see that for these two countries here, as they are starting with a vowel, like here, okay, as we saw in a previous lesson, the article is modified and then it's L apostrophe, like that, okay. Le Luxembourg, okay, final G not pronounced, and then when you combine this E, M here, you get the sound en, en, you don't pronounce the M at all, it's this nasal en, okay, le Luxembourg, le Luxembourg, okay, la France, la France, okay, A, N here, Nasal en, en, la France. Ok, we continue. Les Pays-Bas. Final S here, not pronounced. Same thing here. Pays, pays, and then bas. Les Pays-Bas. Ok. Then, l'Irlande. Remember, this is I e and it should pronounce, it should be pronounced like I, e, I. E. Irlande, Irlande, okay, A N A D, and final E not pronounced. Irlande, le Royaume-Uni, le Royaume-Uni, le Royaume-Uni, okay. L'Allemagne, l'Allemagne. Nya, 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 nya. Remember this G N E. It can be quite tricky at the beginning to produce. I mean the sound ny, okay? But really you should work on that because it's it's quite well. It's not coming all the time, but it's not rare. I mean the sound is not rare in French, okay? Ny, l'Allemagne, l'Allemagne, okay? La Belgique, okay? Remember Q U E here. You will get only the sound. Okay, Belgique, 
Belgique. So it's not Belgique, uh, not at all, okay? Uh, because it's only the K, K. Belgique, okay? Le Danemark. So same sound here, this K and then this Q, U, E, well, they will produce the same sound here. Belgique, le Danemark, okay? L'Autriche, okay, remember, sh, sh here. L'Autriche, l'Autriche, okay? La Suède, d, d, la Suède, Suède. Remember, a uh, accent grave, it's really open. A, su, a, Suède, Suède, la Suède. La Finlande. I, N, here, nasal, un, A, N, nasal, en, and then D, final, E, uh, not pronounced. La Finlande. Okay. L'Estonie. Final E, uh, not pronounced. L'Estonie. L'Estonie. La Lettonie. So remember when you get this E uh, and then a double letter like that. T, T. Okay, then you will have to open your E uh, and it will become E. Le. Lettonie. La Lettonie. La Lituanie. Remember in French, <coughs> sorry, H doesn't exist, okay, so you don't pronounce it, and it's Li Tu A Ni Lituanie. La Lituanie. Okay, continues. La Pologne. Ni, ni, again. La Pologne. La République Tchèque. So remember, Q U E K K Tchèque. La and then here as well, République. K, la République Tchèque. Okay, la République Tchèque. Chypre. Chypre. So remember, we've got this Y letter here, but then phonetically, when you pronounce it, it's like I. Okay, chi. Chypre, okay. Malte, same thing here. You don't insist on the final e. Malte, Malte. La Slovénie. Remember, you get this e accent aigu here. It's e e. Slovénie, final e as usual, not pronounced. La Slovénie, okay. La Hongrie. So remember, H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. So it starts with O N, on, on, and then gri, gri, final E, not pronounced. La Hongrie. La Hongrie. Okay? Les nationalités. So basically, I've been um, making uh, this uh, national uh, lesson based on the previous uh, lesson. So, leçon D. Okay, so I definitely invite you to check the leçon D if you want uh, that everything is uh, clear for you. Okay, but then les nationalités, and it's starting right now. La Grèce. Grec, so I will put each time the masculine form for the nationality. Grec and the feminine form here for the nationality. Okay, so you get the country, la Grèce, and then you get Grec, masculine form, Grec, feminine form. You write them differently, but then if you listen carefully, Grec, Grec, you pronounce them the same way. Okay, le Portugal. Portugais, Portugaise. Okay, so listen carefully. Portugais, Portugaise. The only difference between the two, as usually when we'll have some, uh, well, nationalities ending with A-E-S, like that, A, and then the feminine form, 
as, okay, it will be only in this z sound, the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? Masculine, portugais, you don't pronounce the s, feminine form, portugaise, you pronounce this z sound, okay? And then, l'Espagne, espagnol, nye, 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 remember, espagnol, espagnol. So you get this final E for the feminine form, but then phonetically it's the same. L'Italie, Italien, Italienne. Remember, when you get this E followed by a double consonant like here, then you will have to open it. E, Italienne, Italienne. Okay? Le Luxembourg, Luxembourgeois. Luxembourgeois, and then feminine form, Luxembourgeoise. Okay, same thing here, only difference, joie, joie, joise, z, z. Okay, you insist on it. Luxembourgeois, masculine form, and then Luxembourgeoise, feminine form. Then, la France, Français, Française. Okay, c'est and then says, okay? Français, Française. All right? It continues. Les Pays-Bas, Néerlandais, Néerlandaise. Néerlandais, Néerlandaise. Okay? L'Irlande, Irlandais, Irlandaise. Le Royaume-Uni, Britannique, okay, only one form, whether it's masculine or feminine, Britannique. L'Allemagne, Allemand, Allemande, okay, same thing here. En, okay, you don't pronounce the final D, but then you pronounce it here for the feminine form. Allemande, d, d, okay, Allemand. Allemande. La Belgique. Belge. So only one form here for the masculine and the feminine form. Le Danemark. Danois. Danoise. Z. Hein? Okay, insist on that. Danois. Don't pronounce the final S. Danoise. Here you pronounce it. L'Autriche, Autrichien, Autrichienne. So same thing here. You get E and then double N. You open the E. E. Autrichienne. Okay. Autrichien, Autrichienne. La Suède, Suédois, Suédoise. Okay. Suédois. Suédoise. La Finlande. Finlandais. Finlandaise. Finlandais. Finlandaise. L'Estonie. Estonien. Estonienne. Same thing here. Double N, E, and then you open it. E. Estonienne. Estonienne. La Lettonie, Letton, Letton. Letton, Letton. La Lituanie, Lituanien, Lituanienne. Same thing here. You open the E. E, E. Lituanienne. Ok? Lituanien, Lituanienne. La Pologne, Polonais, Polonaise, Polonais, Polonaise. La République Tchèque, Tchèque, okay, so here as well, you get only one nationality, so whether for masculine or feminine form, it will be the same, Tchèque, okay. Chypre. Same thing here. Chypriote. 
She, remember this Y is pronounced like E, okay? She priot. She priot. Okay? Malt. Malte. Maltese. So remember, as I said previously, the only difference is e Malte. Maltese. La Slovenie. So only one form here. Slovene. Slovene. Remember, E accent grave, you open it. E. Slovene. La Hongrie. Hongrois. Hongroise. Okay. Hongrois. Grois. Hongroise. Okay. So here, final S not pronounced for the masculine form. And then you pronounce it here for the feminine form. Hongrois. Hongroise. Okay. Les Amériques. Les Amériques. So let's see now. Les États-Unis. Okay. So if we make every links, we'll have it here and then here. Okay. Les États-Unis. Les États-Unis. Le Canada. Le Canada. Le Mexique. Le Mexique. X, X, Mexique. It's really the X. Huh? Le Mexique. And then remember this Q, U, E, it's only K, K. Mexique. Okay? Le Brésil. Le Brésil. Okay, you will pronounce the final L here, and then remember, uh, accent aigu goes like E, Bré, Brésil, le Brésil. L'Argentine, okay, so you've got this nasal here, en, l'argent, and then tin, tin. Don't pronounce the final E, uh, it just gives you the, the, the pronunciation of the N, in, in, l'Argentine. L'Argentine. Le Chili. Le Chili. Okay, remember, C-H, sh, 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 sh. Okay, Chi, Chili. Le Chili. La Bolivie. Okay, final E, uh, not pronounced. La Bolivie. La Bolivie. All right, so uh, I assume... Everything is clear. We can repeat them one more time. Les États-Unis, le Canada, le Mexique, le Brésil, l'Argentine, le Chili, la Bolivie. Okay? And then we'll see now the nationality. So you will see here each time first the masculine form and then the feminine form. Okay, so, les États-Unis, américains, so when you talk about the nationality, américains, masculine form, un, un, américain, and then feminine form, américaine, américaine. Okay, it's really open, this A-I, E, américaine. Okay? <coughs> Le Canada, canadien, Yen, 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 here, Canadien, Canadienne, yen, yen, remember, E, uh, here you've got double N, so you've got to open the, the, E, uh, so it will become E, Canadienne, okay, le Mexique, Mexicain, un, here, like we had in uh, American, A, I, N, Mexicain, and then, Mexicaine, Mexicaine. Le Brésil. Brésilien. Yen, yen. Brésilien. Like we had for Canadien. Brésilien. Feminine form. Brésilienne. Yen. Yen. Brésilienne. Ok. And then l'Argentine. Argentin. I-N. Gives you this un sound. 
argentin, ok, and then argentine, argentine, ok, if you look carefully, well, basically the feminine form is the same as the, the name of the country, ok. Le Chili, Chilien, Chilien, yin, yin, Chilien, Chilienne, Chilienne, ok, and then la Bolivie, Bolivien, yin, same, Bolivien, and then feminine form, Bolivienne, Bolivienne. Okay. This lesson will discover together le verbe attendre. So attendre means to wait. Okay. So it belongs to the third group of verbs. So not uh, the regular one, the irregular. So that's the reason why it's quite important to take a few minutes to uh, discover together the way to conjugate this verb at the present form. Okay. So let's see now how it will go. So the first form will be j'attends. J'attends. Okay, you get D and S, well basically you don't pronounce them, okay, and then you get only the, the sound attend, nasal here, en, en, j'attends, okay, second form, tu attends, okay, you can see that, well, it is exactly the same one, so same way to pronounce it, attend, okay, il attend, elle attend. Attends. So the only difference between this one, so this il form and the tu or je form, okay, if you want to write, it's just that if you look carefully, you don't have the final s here, okay, but then basically if you want to only pronounce or only speak, then, uh, well, it's exactly the same way to pronounce these forms, okay, j'attends, tu attends, il attend, elle attend. Okay, but then nu is coming here, all right, and then we've got the classic ending for nu, so o n s. Okay, you don't pronounce the s, so you get only this on sound. Okay, attendons, nu, attendons. So we'll make the the link between the two, la liaison. Nous attendons, nous attendons. Vous form. Same thing, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay? When you combine the two, you get the sound E, E, okay? Vous attendez, attendez, okay? Let's put here the liaison, the link. Vous attendez, vous attendez, okay? And the last one, same thing, classic ending for il, elle, at the plural form, E, N, T, but then you don't pronounce them. Il attend, d, 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 okay, so remember you get to pronounce this, d, 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 d at the end, okay, elle attend, all right, if you make the link, ils attendent, elles attendent, okay, so let's read them, j'attends, tu attends, il attend, elle attend, nous attendons, vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. Ok? So I've been making few sentences just to show you how it works or the meaning. J'attends le train. So le train, the train, I wait. Ok? I wait for the train, but then j'attends le train. Ok? Tu attends avec moi. So you wait, and then avec means with moi, me. You wait with me. Tu attends avec moi. Il attend sa femme. Okay, remember, sa, it's the possessive, his, in that case, and then femme, wife. Il attend sa femme. Nous attendons tranquillement. Nous attendons tranquillement. So here, I wanted to show you how it could work if you put this tranquillement. So tranquillement is uh, quietly uh, and it's uh, an adverb. Okay, it's ending with 
mon like that, which is one of the classic ending for the adverbs. We'll have the time to, to see that a bit later. But then, yeah, quietly is tranquillement. Nous attendons tranquillement. So basically you put this adverb after your verb. Okay? Nous attendons tranquillement. Vous attendez les enfants. Okay, children, les enfants. Vous attendez les enfants. Elles attendent votre réponse. Réponse, answer, and then remember, votre, it's the possessive, your. Elles attendent votre réponse. Okay? So I will read them one more time, and uh, I will read them at my normal speed. Okay? Just for you to get used. If, because I, I've been reading them quite slowly when, when we were just uh, see, well, we were covering them uh, previously, okay? So, j'attends le train, tu attends avec moi, il attend sa femme, nous attendons tranquillement, vous attendez les enfants, elles attendent votre réponse. Le verbe... Le verbe répondre. Répondre means to answer. So it's quite useful. And then, uh, well, it belongs to the third group of uh, verbs. So we'll see how to conjugate this verb. Répondre at the present form. So let's see now the first form. Je réponds. Je réponds. Okay, so you can see that D and S here are not pronounced. Je réponds. Okay. Tu réponds. Well, the same form. Okay, exactly the same form, so the same pronunciation. Tu réponds. Il répond. So, final D is not pronounced. You only have this on nasal uh, sound at the end. Répond. Elle répond. Okay. So, je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, okay? So, so far, only one way to pronounce it, all right? Then, of course, for nous, we've got the normal and classic ending O-N-S, okay? Don't pronounce the final S, you only pronounce this on sound. So, you get répondons, nous répondons, nous répondons. Okay, and then classic ending for vous as well, a z. Okay, remember you combine these two letters, you get the sound e. So répondez, vous répondez, vous répondez. Okay, and then the last persons here, ils répondent. So same thing uh, here, classic ending, E-N-T, but then you don't pronounce it, okay? Réponde, d, réponde, il réponde, elle réponde. Okay, so let's see all the form one more time. Je réponds, tu réponds, il répond, elle répond, nous répondons, vous répondez. Ils répondent, elles répondent. All right. Hier, yesterday, aujourd'hui, today, demain, tomorrow. OK? Hier, yesterday, aujourd'hui, today, demain, tomorrow. So let's see now. Hier, so yesterday, Hier matin. Matin is morning. Okay, so yesterday morning will go in French like hier matin. Hier matin. Okay. Après-midi means afternoon. Hier après-midi. Yesterday afternoon. Hier après-midi. Hier après-midi. All right. And then soir, evening. Hier soir. Hier soir. Okay, so let's repeat that. Hier. Hier matin. Hier après-midi. Hier soir. Okay. 
So now, aujourd'hui, today, aujourd'hui. Ce matin, so we put here this ce, this matin, morning, this morning, ce matin. Cet après-midi, this afternoon, cet après-midi, cet après-midi. Ce soir, ce so soir, evening, this evening, ce soir, ce soir. All right. And then, demain, so tomorrow. Demain matin, tomorrow morning, demain matin, demain après-midi, tomorrow afternoon, demain après-midi, demain soir, demain soir, tomorrow evening, demain soir. So one more time. Hier, hier matin, hier après-midi. Hier soir, aujourd'hui, ce matin, cet après-midi, ce soir, demain, demain matin, demain après-midi, demain soir. 50, de 50 à 75, till 75, de 50 à 75. So let's see how they go. 50 50 51 51 52 52 53 53 54 54 55 55 56 56 57 57 58 58 59 59 60 60 61 61 62 62 63 63 Soixante-quatre, soixante-quatre, soixante-cinq, soixante-cinq, soixante-six, soixante-six, soixante-sept, soixante-sept, soixante-huit. 68 69 69 And that's normally when my students, when I'm in, in class with them, start to look at me like they, they would like to kill me because now we're getting to the tricky point in French, okay? So have a look here. Now we've got this 70, of course. Uh, but then in French... It's a bit more tricky because you take back the 60, 60, and then you will add the 10, 10. Okay, so for this 70 session here, you will have to use this 60 and then 10. And so all the numbers from 10 to 19, you will have to put them right here after. Okay, so let's see how it goes. 
soixante-dix, soixante-dix, soixante et onze, soixante et onze. Okay, so you can see here now. Soixante, sixty, and then onze, eleven. Soixante et onze. Soixante-douze. Soixante-douze. Same thing here. Sixty and then twelve. Okay. Soixante-treize. Soixante-treize. Soixante-quatorze. Soixante-quatorze. Soixante-quinze. Soixante-quinze. Okay, so we don't, we won't go uh, further, uh, not to be more traumatized, because I've got some nice surprises after that as well. Okay, so remember that uh, well till seventy. Uh, well, it's quite it's quite not easy because it's always difficult to remember the numbers, but still it's uh, not that tricky. Okay, so remember that for seventy here. Uh, so from seventy. To 79, you will have to use this 60, so 60, and then the numbers from 10 to 19. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. So we'll see the, the rest uh, in a, uh, a coming lesson. So now what we'll do, we'll go to, to till uh, 100, and then we'll see uh, all the, the well, tricky and irregular forms. Okay, so. If you remember uh, when we stopped, it was here, okay, so 75. In French, we'll have to use this 60, so 60, okay, and then after that, you will have to put this 15, 15, okay, so remember from 70 to 79, it will work the same way, so you will have to put this 60 and then the numbers from 10 to 19 after. Uh, sorry, yeah, 19, yes. Okay, so in that case, it's 75, 75, okay, 60, and then 15, okay. Next one, 76, okay, so 60 and 16, okay, 76, all right. 77, 77. Soixante-dix-huit, soixante-dix-huit, soixante-dix-neuf, soixante-dix-neuf, and then quatre-vingt, okay, so for eighty it's quatre-vingt, quatre-vingt, all right, quatre-vingt-un. 81 82 82 83 83 84 84 85 85 86 86 87 87 88 88 89 89 and now for 90 well basically it would be the same thing as we had for 70 so you will take this 80 80 and then you will add the numbers from 10 to 19 after so 90 and then 91, so 91, so remember, 80, and then 11, 
91, 92, 92, 93, 93, 94, 94, 95, 95, 96, 96, 97, 97, 98, 98, 99, 99, and the last one, 100. Remember, final T, not pronounced. 100. Okay? Discover this parce que form. So, parce que means because. Okay? And it's really, really useful. So, we'll see how to use it. Okay? So, parce que here. So, the first use uh, of uh, parce que is when you want to introduce the reason. Okay? So, we've got two examples here. Il ne mange pas tout de suite. Okay, so here you've got the negative form, remember, ne, and then pas. Manger means to eat. Il ne mange pas. So he doesn't eat. Tout de suite. Well, basically it means right now. Parce qu'il, okay, préfère attendre. So in that case, because he prefers to wait. Il préfère attendre. Okay? Préférer to prefer. And then here, you can see that attendre is to wait. Second verb, okay? And then you should put it like here at the infinitive form. So the basic form of the verb, okay? Il ne mange pas tout de suite parce qu'il préfère Attendre. Ok. Second example. Nous allons dehors. Aller is to go. Dehors, outside. Nous allons dehors. So we go outside. Parce que. So because. Nous voulons marcher. Vouloir, to want. Marcher, to walk. Nous voulons marcher. We want to walk. Ok. Nous allons dehors. Parce que nous voulons marcher. Okay? And then, the second option to use this parce que is when you want to introduce the cause. La cause. Okay? Example here. Il prend son parapluie. Parapluie, umbrella. Prendre is to take. Il prend son, his. So he's taking his umbrella. Il prend son parapluie. Parce qu'il pleut. Pleuvoir to rain. It rains. Il pleut. Il prend son parapluie parce qu'il pleut. Ok. And then, second example. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. Ok. A place to call. Garagiste is this nice person that will fix your car if it's broken or if it doesn't start, like in this example. Okay. Parce que sa voiture, voiture is car, sa voiture, possessive, his car, and then ne pas, so you get the ne negative form here, and démarrer is to start. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. So because his car doesn't start. Okay. Il appelle le garagiste parce que sa voiture ne démarre pas. All right. So you can see the two main way uh, of uh, using this uh, parce que. So the first one, the reason. In that case, uh, well, it's something that refers to the person. Okay. Actually, in that case, it doesn't. He doesn't eat because he prefers uh, to wait. And then uh, we go outside because we want. Okay. And then the second uh, possibility when you 
uh, talking about la cause in that case uh, something that doesn't really uh, it's not the the the, the results of uh, what someone is doing but it's it's raining in that case and then the, the car doesn't uh, start it doesn't really it's not the result of uh, the action of someone okay so that's the two main use of parce que we will work on le moyen orient the middle east okay let's start le moyen orient so it's interesting here because normally if you would have only this word here you would pronounce it moyen moyen okay but then as you've got this vowel after okay you get to make the liaison between the two le moyen orient moyen orient okay let's start now israel israel la palestine la palestine le liban le liban la jordanie la jordanie okay so let's repeat them one more time le moyen-orient israël la palestine le liban la jordanie okay and now we'll see the nationalities okay so israël and then in I will put the masculine form here and the feminine form here. Israélien, Israélien, so masculine form and then feminine form. Israélienne, Israélienne, okay, yen, yen, okay, and then Palestinien, Palestinien, feminine form, Palestinienne. Palestinienne. Le Liban, Libanais, né, né, Libanais, Libanaise. Ok? E, Ez, Z, Ez. Libanais, Libanaise. And then, Jordanie, Jordanien, Jordanienne. Ok? Yen. Yen, Jordanien, Jordanienne. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Israël, Israélien, Israélienne. La Palestine, Palestinien, Palestinienne. Le Liban, Libanais, Libanaise. La Jordanie, Jordanien, Jordanienne. L'Extrême-Orient, so Far East. L'Extrême-Orient, so let's discover that together. So Far East, in French, we'll say L'Extrême-Orient. L'Extrême-Orient. Le Japon. Le Japon. La Chine, la Chine, la Chine. L'Inde, so remember you get this nasal here form, I-N-1, l'Inde, l'Inde. Le Pakistan, le Pakistan. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Okay, so let's see everything one more time here. L'extrême orient, le Japon, la Chine, l'Inde, le Pakistan, Hong Kong. Okay, and now for the nationalities. So each time I will put the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? Le Japon, Japonais, Japonaise, okay? So the only difference is there, est, es, Japonais, Japonaise. La Chine, Chinois, 
So it's really this wah 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 sound, remember? Chinois. Chinoise. Z, z, was. Chinoise. So chinois, chinoise. L'Inde. Indien. Yen. Indien. Indienne. So remember this uh, double N. You open it. E. Indienne. Le Pakistan, Pakistanais, Pakistanaise. Hong Kong, Chinois de Hong Kong, Chinoise de Hong Kong. So let's see them one more time. Le Japon, Japonais, Japonaise. La Chine, Chinois, Chinoise. L'Inde, Indien, Indienne. Le Pakistan, Pakistanais, Pakistanaise. Hong Kong, Chinois de Hong Kong, Chinoise de Hong Kong. Le verbe pronominal. So, what is le verbe pronominal? So, first we'll take an example. Regardez, to look, to watch. Ok? And then... Se regarder, in that case it would be to look at oneself, okay? So that's the important thing about this verb pronominal. The, the verb pronominal will be constructed all the time with this se before the verb. Se regarder, okay? And this se will basically change the meaning of the verb because regarder, to look, to watch, se regarder, to look at at oneself. Okay? So we'll take an example. So if we take the regarder verb, okay? So normally you will construct this sentence. Je regarde la télévision. Okay? I watch the television. Je regarde la télévision. Okay? But then, if you use this se regarder, so as I said, to look at oneself, in that case, je me Regarde. All right. So you will have to add this me thing here before the verb. Je me regarde. Okay. So let's see how we will conjugate this verb at the present form. Je me regarde. Tu te Regarde. Il se regarde. Elle se regarde. Nous nous regardons. Vous vous regardez. Il se regarde. Elle se regarde. So now you can see that you've got to add this me, te, se, nous, vous, se before the verb when you conjugate it. Okay? Let's take another example. Appeler. To call, okay? And then the important thing in that case is that, as usual, you know, appeler is starting with a vowel, a, here. And it does mean that, as usual in French, normally we should have this se, but then e will disappear, and it will look like that, s'appeler. So, appeler to call, and then s'appeler to call oneself. Okay? So let's see how we will conjugate this verb. Je m'appelle. So same thing here. The E uh, that we had previously disappeared. Je m'appelle. So remember that's normally the, the, the verb that you use when you introduce yourself. Like I call myself. So my name is. 
of course, but then in French it's like I call myself, okay, je m'appelle. Tu t'appelles. Tu t'appelles. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. Nous nous appelons. Okay, so I will, I will make the, the liaison. Nous nous appelons. Vous vous appelez. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. <coughs> Sorry. So if you look carefully here as well, so you will have to add this m, t, s, okay, and then nous, vous, s, okay. So remember, it's just because the verb is starting with a vowel. It would be the same if uh, the verb would start with uh, the letter h plus a vowel because we don't pronounce h, so and that's the reason why. Uh, my God, I'm losing my voice. Let's hope I will finish. <laughs> um, be careful, because in some cases, when you will uh, add this s in front of the verb, then le sens, so the meaning of the verb, will change. So, I will put a few examples here. Uh, trouver is to find, okay? And then, se trouver means to be, être. Okay, trouver to find, but then se trouver is to be, être. Passer, to pass. Se passer, avoir lieu, so to take place. Se passer, to take place. Passer, to pass. Okay, and then mettre, to put. Se mettre, well it's to start, commencer, to start something. Okay, so remember, Trouver, to find, se trouver, être, so to be. Passer, to pass, se passer, avoir lieu, to take place. Mettre, to put, se mettre, commencer, to start something. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and we'll see together, more precisely, how to conjugate the verbs that will end with U -I -R -E, U-I-R-E, huir. Okay, so let's start now. Huir, and the verbs I think uh, that uh, could represent uh, this category is uh, conduire. Conduire means to drive or conduct. Okay, and so let's see how you will conjugate this verb. Je conduis. Tu conduis. Il conduit. Elle conduit. So, so far it's not that difficult, okay, because I assume that most of you would have put this final S here, S and then T, okay, because it's in most of the cases the way we will conjugate the verbs of uh, the third group. Not all the verbs, not all the verbs, but most of them, okay, so that's the reason why you will get this uh, form, je conduis, okay, so it's quite simple, tu conduis, and then il, elle, conduit. Okay, keep in mind that you pronounce them the same way. Okay, so let's see how it will go for nous. And it's actually not that difficult, but then of course most of you maybe would like to see air here. Okay, but then no, it's not the case because it will become S. Nous conduisons. Okay, and the good news is that it will stay for vous. Vous conduisez. And then also for il, elle, il conduise, elle conduise. Okay, so one more time. Je conduis, tu conduis, il conduit, elle conduit, nous conduisons, vous conduisez, ils conduisent, elles conduisent. Okay, so basically these verbs are not really tricky. They are not really difficult. The only thing that you get to remember is that... This is S here. Conduisons. Okay? Because, well, I won't get into that, but if you would put this R here, it would be the future form. Okay? But then here, keep in mind that you've got to put S here. Conduisons. And then conduisez. And here, conduise. 
So we'll see now the other verbs that, that will actually be conjugated like conduire. Construire, cuire, déduire, détruire, instruire, introduire, nuire, produire, reproduire, réduire, Séduire, traduire, and few others. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Construire, cuire, déduire, détruire, instruire, introduire, nuire, produire, reproduire, réduire, séduire, traduire. And of course, you are expecting the translation. I know that. And this is the reason why you will get them. So, construire means construct, build. Cuir, cook. Déduire, deduct, deduce. Détruire, destroy. Instruire, educate, instruct. Introduire, introduce, insert. Nuire, harm, damage. Produire, produce, make. Reproduire, reproduce, copy. Réduire, reduce, decrease. Séduire, charm. Traduire, translate. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs here will actually be conjugated like we saw a few minutes ago. Voilà. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see the verbs that are ending with ER, okay? And remember, they can be quite tricky. So that's the reason why we will take the time to have a look at them, okay? And so basically, in that case, so the verbs ending with ER, we'll see three categories. The first one, it will be what we call les verbes à un radical, okay? So we'll see that a bit later, but radical is the stem, the root, okay? So actually, these ones are quite easy to conjugate. The second group is les verbes à deux radicaux. So now it's getting uh, a bit difficult because it will mean that uh, these verbs will have, will have actually two uh, stems or uh, roots if you want. So we'll, we'll see that, don't, don't worry. And then this third group, oh, it's a strange one here. But then actually we're talking about les verbes à trois radicaux. So in that case, we will see that, well, they, they are the, well, the most tricky one. But then don't worry, we'll manage to, 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 to uh, understand uh, how it works. Okay, so let's see now. And we'll start with the easy thing, <laughs> and it's better. And it's les verbes à un radical. So the verbs ending with ER, and in that case, I thought it might be interesting to take the verb ouvrir. Ouvrir is to open, okay, so it's quite useful. And so the idea is that this final ER will be taken away to get the stem, the root. And so after that, you will get j'ouvre, tu ouvres, il ouvre, elle ouvre. Nous ouvrons, vous ouvrez, ils ouvrent, elles ouvrent. Okay, so it's clear that we've got this verb ouvrir. Okay, so ouvrir is the ending with ER. And as I told you here, you should take this ER away. Okay, so you'll get the form O-U-V-R. And then after that, you will add, so the endings, E for je. So that's the reason why you get j'ouvre. For tu, you will add es. And that's the reason why you will get tu ouvres. For il, elle, you will add e, ouvre. Okay, so basically you get the same phonetical form here. Okay, it's the same pronunciation, but you should write it ouvre, e, ouvre, es, ouvre. Okay, and then for nous, well, the classic ending, O-N-S, ouvrons, nous ouvrons, 
and then for vous, classic ending EZ, vous ouvrez, il, elle, classic ending ENT, ils ouvrent, elles ouvrent. Okay, so it's actually not that difficult if you think about this little thing. So you should take this ER away and just add these endings. Okay, so we'll see now few verbs that will actually be conjugated the same way ouvrir is. And it's couvrir, découvrir, cueillir, accueillir, recueillir. Assaillir, souffrir, and few others. Okay? But these are the main ones. Um, couvrir, découvrir, cueillir, accueillir, recueillir, assaillir, and then souffrir. I don't know what there, why there is a little dot here, but then don't bother with this. Um, and of course, as uh, in most of the cases, I try to give you that translation. And here it goes. So couvrir means to cover or to wrap. Découvrir, to discover. Cueillir, gather, pick. Accueillir, welcome. Recueillir, collect, gather. Assaillir, assault, attack, and then souffrir, to suffer. Okay, so these verbs here will be conjugated the same way ouvrir is. And it's not that difficult. Okay, so now let's see the second group. So what we call les verbes à deux radicaux. And so we'll take partir. Partir is to leave. We use this verb quite often, okay? So basically it's quite important to see how to conjugate that at the present form. And so, as I said, the idea is that we will have two different roots, two different stems, okay? And the first one will be P-A-R for the singular form. So we're talking about je, tu, il and elle. So the singular form, okay? And then for the plural form, we will have part, okay? And we're talking about nous, vous, il, elle. So let's see how it will go, okay? So the first form will be je pars, okay? Remember, you put this S, you don't pronounce it. Je pars. Then you will get tu pars, il, elle, pars. So the first thing that you get to keep in mind, you get this final S, final S, final T, but then you don't pronounce them. So phonetically, je pars, tu pars, il pars, elle pars, the same form. And then, if you think about what we saw here, we should have this first part here, and then the endings after. And that's the reason why we will get nous partons. Okay, so you get this P A R T, and then we put the ending O N S, the classic one. Vous partez, same way, and then obviously we'll have il part, elle part. Okay, so the first part P A R T, and then the ending E N T. Okay, and this is the tricky thing with this verb partir. It's, it's just to remember that. When you get the singular or the plural, well, basically, you will have different stems, okay? So the first one, keep in mind that you, you will have this PAR, and then you will add the ending S for je, S for tu, T for il, elle. Phonetically, je pars, tu pars, il part, elle part, okay? And for the plural, as we saw, you just keep this P-A-R-T, and you add the endings O-N-S, E-Z, E-N-T. And you will get nous partons, vous partez, ils partent, elles partent. All right? So, let's see now the verbs that will be conjugated like partir. Sortir, dormir, servir, sentir, mentir, se repentir, and few others. Okay, so sortir, 
dormir, servir, sentir, mentir, se repentir. And of course, you would like to have the translation. Sortir means to go out, dormir, sleep, servir, serve or be used for, sentir, smell, feel, mentir, lie, se repentir, express remorse. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs will actually be conjugated like partir. Okay, and last but not least, uh, don't be afraid. So now we've got the, the, the last uh, group of verbs uh, ending with ER. And uh, these verbs will belong to the group of verbes à trois radicaux. So obviously you understand now what I'm talking about and we'll see how it goes. And in that case, well, basically the idea with uh, venir, so I decided to take venir, venir is to come, same thing, it's a quite used verb, so that's the reason why I think it's important to, important to see how it goes. And so the, the, well, the difficult thing with uh, this group of verbs is actually you will have one form for the singular. So we're talking here about je, tu, il, elle. Okay, so in that case, the stem, the root will be vient, v-i-e-n. Okay, then we will have another root or stem for nous and vous at the plural form. And it will be v e -E n okay so you can see that it's not the same and last but not least we'll have a third stem or root for il l at the plural form and it will be vienne and this is the tricky thing with the uh, venir and we'll see the, the other verbs uh, that will uh, be conjugated like it it's you've got three three forms here so vient for the singular ven like that for the plural, but then it's only nous and vous, and then vienne for the plural, il, elle. So let's see how it goes. Je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Okay, so we do agree that we respect the rule, so you take this V, E, N, and then you put it right here, and after that you will put the ending. Okay, then Think about what we saw, nous and vous, so they're coming right now. We should use this V, E, N stem. So that's what we are going to do. Nous venons. Okay, so you put back this V, E, N, and after that you will put your ending O, N, S. Nous venons, then you will get vous venez. Okay, and the last one, remember here, for il, elle at the plural form, you will use this vienne here, and then you will add the ending ENT. Il vienne, elle vienne. Okay, and so this is, well, normally what is difficult, uh, trying to remember how to conjugate them, and especially keeping that fact in mind that for the singular you will put this V, I, E, N, and then you will add S for je, s for tu, and t for il, elle. Okay, and phonetically it's, the, sorry, <laughs> it's the same form. Uh, so you get je viens, okay, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. And then it works quite fast. <laughs> but then for nous and vous, okay, you will put this v, e, n, all right, and you will add the ending. O and S for nous, E Z for vous, okay, and you get nous venons, vous venez. And the last part, remember, well, basically for il, elle, you will put back this V I E double N, and you will put the ending E N T, and you'll get ils viennent, elles viennent. And it can be quite tricky because if you think about that, especially phonetically, it's, uh, it's challenging in a way because you get this nasal sound here, je viens, okay, viens, 
tu viens, well the same, il vient, elle vient. Then you will get this the nom. Okay, keep in mind that it's really a uh, in that case. The nom, the ne. And the last one, because you've got this double N here, you need to pronounce this uh, like E, eh, E. Eh. And that's the reason why you should pronounce it Vienne, Vienne. Okay, so il vienne, elle vienne. So just one more time to make it clear. Je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. And so let's see now the verbs that will actually be conjugated like venir. And we're talking about tenir, contenir, détenir, maintenir, obtenir, devenir, revenir, intervenir, se souvenir, and few others. Okay, so tenir, contenir. Détenir, maintenir, obtenir, devenir, revenir, intervenir, se souvenir. So let's see now the translations. Tenir, hold, keep. Contenir, contain. Détenir, possess, have. Maintenir, keep. Maintain, obtenir, obtain, get, devenir, become, revenir, come back, intervenir, intervene, se souvenir, remember. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, how to conjugate les verbes, the verbs that are ending with ure, okay, so ur. And well, actually, even if it's, let's call it a micro group, uh, I think it's quite important to just take the time to see how to conjugate uh, these verbs, okay? And so the example I wanted to uh, use or to take is Conclure, and basically it means to end, close, or conclude. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate conclure. Je conclue. Tu conclues. Il conclut. Elle conclut. Nous concluons. Vous concluez. Il conclut. Elle conclut. So, as usual, let's say that the singular is not that difficult because probably you would put that uh, without knowing uh, that it goes like that. S, S, T. Okay, so you get conclu, conclu, conclu. Okay, the same phonetical form here. The tricky thing, in a way, is for nous, vous, il, elle of the plural, because basically you don't put anything between this U and the, the ending. So you get this concluons, okay? So don't put any S or anything here. So it's not conclusion or concluerons or something like that. For the present form, it's concluons, okay? Concluez, and then here, Conclu. Okay, keep in mind that even if you put this final e n t, so the ending, you don't pronounce it. So phonetically, you get conclu. Conclu. Okay. So je conclue, tu conclus, il conclut, elle conclut, nous concluons, vous concluez, il conclut, elle conclut. And so when I say it's a micro group, it's just because <laughs> you will see that we've got actually two verbs that will be conjugated like conclure. But, you know, honestly, it's, it's quite important to introduce them anyway, because they are not that tricky uh, to conjugate. And it's inclure and exclure. Okay, so inclure. Exclure, and I'm pretty sure that you understand how 
or what they mean with the other translations but of course I will offer you the translation and it's uh, inclure means to include or incorporate and then exclude, exclude or get rid of okay les verbes du troisième groupe and uh, more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate at the present form the verbs ending with V, R, E. Okay? Vre. So let's see that together. And so the example I wanted to take is quite useful because it's vivre. And vivre means to live. And so the tricky thing that you've got to keep in mind with this group of verbs is that it will have actually two stems or two roots. So we'll see uh, practically what it, it does mean. Okay, but then keep in mind that for the singular form, so je, tu, and then il, elle, actually the stem or the root will be v, i. Okay, so basically we take away this vre ending. Okay, and then for the plural form, so it will be nous, vous, and then il, elle, the stem or the root will be v, i, v. Okay, so, and that's the difficult thing, uh, because for the singular, the stem will be v, i, for the plural, it will be v, i, v. Okay, so let's see now how it will go when we conjugate this verb. So you will get... Je vis, tu vis, il vit, elle vit. Okay, so we do agree that you take this root or this stem here, you put it right here, and after that you will put the ending. For je, it will be s, for tu, it will be s, the same, and for il, elle, it will be t. And so if we keep the logic as we saw now for the plural form, we will take V, I, V, and then after that we will add the ending, and the classic ending for nous is O, N, S. Nous vivons. Vous vivez. Ils vivent. Elles vivent. Okay, so if you have this thing quite clearly in mind that we've got two stems so the first one for the singular is v plus the endings and then for the plural it will be v e v plus the ending then you will master this verb and the other verbs that will actually be conjugated like it okay so let's see now the endings remember for je it's s for tu s and for il so this is the reason why we get je vis, tu vis, il vit, elle vit. Okay? And then for nous, the ending is ONS. So you get nous vivons. Then EZ, vous vivez. And after that, ENT, ils vivent, elles vivent. Alright? So let's see now what verbs are actually conjugated like vivre and we've got suivre poursuivre revivre survivre and few others but then these are the main ones so suivre poursuivre revivre survivre okay so let's see what they mean Suivre, it's to follow. Poursuivre, pursue, chase. Revivre, relieve, live through again. Survivre, survive. Okay, and these verbs will actually be conjugated like vivre that we saw a few minutes ago. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and we'll see more precisely in this video how to conjugate the verbs that are ending with this ir e thing. So ir, okay, and uh, we'll see that basically they are quite tricky to conjugate. Okay, so let's start the right now, and I thought that it would be more logical 
to put them sorry in two groups and the first one is actually and logically ire and the second one we are talking about the verbs that will end with oire war or then aire air all right um, my advice is for this video is actually to uh, probably make a list on your own and try to learn them by heart because it will be the only way to uh, actually remember them okay but then let's start with the first group I -R -E. so the first verb that we'll see is lire and lire means to read okay so je lis Tu lis, il lit, elle lit, nous lisons, vous lisez, ils lisent, elles lisent. All right, so, je lis, tu lis, il lit. Okay, so, same form here, phonetical form, but then it's S at the end, S and then T. Then you will get, nous lisons, vous lisez. Okay, so this one honestly is not that tricky, so that's the reason why I wanted to start with this one. Let's see now the second one. And it's dire. And dire means to say. Je dis, tu dis, il dit, elle dit. Nous disons, vous dites. And now you can see the tricky thing here. So it's not vous disiez, okay, as many would think, but then it's vous dites, okay, final S not pronounced, vous dites. Ils disent, elles disent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je dis, tu dis, il dit, elle dit. So basically here it's not that difficult because I'm pretty sure that most of you would actually, without knowing that, try to conjugate it and put, put these forms. Okay, so je dis, tu dis, il dit, elle dit. Then nous disons. So, so far it's actually quite logical. But this is the tricky thing here. Vous dites. Okay, so remember that, well, in most of the cases uh, at the beginning, you will say, vous disiez, okay, and it's quite interesting because French kids normally, when they start to learn the language, they don't use this vous dites, but then they make this logical mistake, vous disiez, okay, but it's actually vous dites, and then il, elle, disent. Third verb is Écrire, écrire is to write. And then, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit. Same thing here, it's really easy, okay? It's getting normally tricky at the plural form. Nous écrivons, and this is the strange thing here, you've got to put this V here. Écrivons, okay? But then you keep the logic, in a way, vous écrivez, okay, so V is coming here as well, and it will be here for the plural form as well, okay, ils écrivent, elles écrivent. All right, so, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit, nous écrivons, vous écrivez, ils écrivent, elles écrivent. So keep in mind that for écrire, actually, the tricky thing will be to put this V for the plural form. Rire. And it's to laugh. Je ris. Tu ris. Il rit. Elle rit. Nous rions. And this is a tricky thing, nothing between I and O. Rion, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. And keep in mind that here at the end, okay, you've got this E and T, but if you remember, because I've been talking about that quite many times, you don't pronounce this final E and T. And so phonetically, you get the sound ri, okay, exactly like you have here. Ri, ri. Ri, ri, okay? So, and then here, rions, 
riez. Ok, so you get je ris, tu ris, il rit, elle rit, nous rions, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. So now comes the second subgroup. Ok, we're talking about the verbs ending with war or air. And so for the first verb, I decided to take plaire, and plaire is to please. Je plais, tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Have a look here. Accent circonflexe for il and elle, but not for tu and not for je. Okay. Nous plaisons, vous plaisez. Il plaise, elle plaise. And that's normally the tricky thing because in many situations persons or students will put air here because they are logic and <laughs> in a way French language can be quite strange. So basically you will have to put S here. But then the good news is that it's coming also for vous and then for il, elle. Okay, so this is the tricky thing here. But then je plais. Tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Well, this circumflex also. Nous plaisons, vous plaisez, il plaise, elle plaise. Faire is quite useful and we use this verb quite often in French because it means to do. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate it. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. Okay, so this one is a tricky one. Well, basically, if you think about je, tu, il and elle, well, this is not really tricky and this is quite easy to make because phonetically it's fait. Fait, fait. And then for the endings, it's quite logical. S, S, T. Like we have normally for the third group. Okay? Now, nous is actually quite strange because even if, of course, you put this S here, and in a way it's a surprise, but then the most difficult thing that you should. Uh, keep in mind is uh, the way you will pronounce it because you don't pronounce it e as normally you should, but you will pronounce it like e. Uh. Nous faisons. Okay, it's really f, f, f. Nous faisons. Okay, you see it with e, but then you pronounce it f. Nous faisons. So this is the first difficulty, and the second one is here because if you look. It's a bit like we had for dire previously. Actually, you don't have this faisait. Huh? If you would be logical, uh, it would go like that. But then it's fait. Okay? So keep in mind, these two things are actually quite tricky. The first one here for pronunciation. Nous faisons. And the second one here, because you write it like that. And it's not vous faisiez, but vous faites. Okay? And then ils font, elles font. So just for one more time. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. Nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. Okay? This one is important because we use it quite often in French. We've got many expressions that are uh, combined or constructed with faire. Okay? So keep in mind that uh, it goes like that. Faisons and then faites. Croire. Croire is to believe, and it's quite useful as well. So, je crois, tu crois, il croit, elle croit. And now you've got this Y here. And the sound goes like, nous croyons. Okay? Croyons. Vous croyez. And last but not least, look, il croit, elle croit. And phonetically here, as we saw, ENT is not pronounced, so you get the sound croix. 
exactly the same sound as we've got here qua qua and then qua okay so one more time je crois tu crois il croit elle croit nous croyons vous croyez il croit elle croit okay so keep in mind that here when you get this y and two vowels one before one after it will be like yeah, yeah, yeah. so you combine it with o first you will get croyons croyons and here croyez croyez okay Boire, and boire is to drink, so it's quite useful. You do that every day, or then at least you should. Je bois, tu bois, il boit, elle boit. And this is the tricky one. Nous buvons, vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got, well, diff three different stems. So, bois here. So, it will be actually quite easy at the singular. So, je bois, tu bois, il bois. Okay. Then for nous and vous, you've got this stem. So, B-U-V. Then you put the ending. Buvons. Then, buvez. And for il, elle, we've got a third stem or root. And it's B-O-I-V. And you put the ending, ENT. Okay, so you get Je bois, tu bois, il boit, elle boit, nous buvons, vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate uh, the verbs that are ending with DRE and UNDRE at the present form because they can be quite tricky okay so let's start um, so the first group I thought it might be interesting to take a quite common verb attendre and attendre means to wait okay so attendre and for the second group so the indre group we'll see the verb craindre craindre is to fear okay so attendre and then craindre Okay, but um, then let's start with attendre. So, basically, you've got your ending dre. Okay, so the verb is attendre. And the thing that you get to keep in mind is that in that case, you will take er e away. Okay, so you will get j'attends. And then for tu, it will be tu attends. For il, elle, il attend. For nous, nous attendons, vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. Okay, so if you look carefully, basically you can see that the infinitive form is attendre. Okay, and as I told you, then you take this R -E away. Okay, so you will get this form A T T E N D. And after that, you will basically add the endings. So for je, it will be S, okay, and that's the reason why you've got this attend like that, so D, and then you just add this S. For two, it will be also S, okay, same form. Then for il, elle, don't put anything, okay, so that's the reason why you've got the, the basic form. Then for nous, the classic ending, O, N, S, okay. For vous, you will have E, Z, okay, so that's the reason why you get this attendez form and for il elle you will get a n t okay so that's the way uh, that well these verbs ending with dre will be conjugated okay so you get j'attends tu attends il attend elle attend nous attendons vous attendez ils attendent elles attendent all right and well if you Think about the verb attendre in that case. Let's see the verbs that will be conjugated like uh, attendre. Okay, so répondre, for instance, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, 
prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, vendre, and other verbs as well. <laughs> okay, but the, I cannot uh, make the, the full list. Okay, so these verbs will be conjugated like attendre. Okay, but then I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, you are expecting uh, some translations here. Okay, so that's the reason why they are coming now. So, répondre, it's to answer. Okay, confondre, to get mixed up. Descendre, to go down. Défendre, defend. Entendre, to hear. Perdre, to lose. Prétendre, to claim. Rendre, to give back, répandre, to spread, tendre, to stretch, and then vendre, to sell. Okay, so these verbs will actually be conjugated uh, just like attendre uh, was conjugated a few minutes ago. Okay, so répondre, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, and then vendre. Okay, but as you know, like almost all the time in French, we've got some exceptions. Okay, and uh, of course, the verb prendre, and it's quite used because it means to take, is an exception. Okay, so even if it's ending with dre, well, basically, it won't behave like attendre um, that we, we saw previously. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So, dre, prendre, you've got to. Remember that the forms will go like that. Je prends, tu prends, il, elle prend, nous prenons, and here you can see the difference. Vous prenez, and the last one is quite tricky because it's il, elle prennent. Okay, so basically you double the N here and it will give you a, a well different uh, sound here because you get to open the sound so it's prêt. Prenne. Okay, so let's see that one more time. Je prends, tu prends, il prend, elle prend. So if we look carefully, actually we've got, I mean, these forms are pronounced the same, okay? Then we've got nous prenons, okay, keep in mind that you should pronounce it pre, prenons, vous prenez, and then the last one, the tricky one, ils prennent, okay? Ils prennent. All right, so basically remember that prenons, Prenez and then prenne will be different as, uh, well, the forms that we had for uh, attendre, for instance. Okay? And, uh, well, when we speak about prendre, actually, we've got the verbs apprendre, comprendre, entreprendre, reprendre, surprendre, and few others. And these verbs will actually be conjugated as prendre. All right? So, let's see what they mean. Apprendre means to learn, comprendre, understand, entreprendre, begin doing something, reprendre, to take again or to take back, and then surprendre, surprise. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs will actually be conjugated like prendre. All right, and so now let's see the second main category that we had, and it's indre, and the verb, the example that we will take is Craindre, and craindre means to fear. Je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. Okay, so you can see that for nous, Vous and then il, elle at the plural form. It is quite tricky because you've got this gn coming right here and then the sound is craignon. Okay, you get the ny ny sound. Okay, craignon, craignez, craignez. Okay, but then if you remember to put it here, so the good news they say is that it, it will come for nous, it will come for vous, and then it will come for il, elle at the plural form. So, je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. Alright, so keep in mind that 
ending will be s s and then d okay but then phonetically as you know you pronounce them the same crin 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 okay then o n s craignon craignier a z and then craigne a n d And of course, we'll see few verbs that will be conjugated like craindre, and they are atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre, peindre, plaindre, teindre, and few others. Okay, so atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre. Peindre, plaindre, teindre. And so let's see what they mean. Atteindre, it's to reach. Contraindre, force, constrain. Éteindre, turn off. Joindre, join, combine. Peindre, paint. Plaindre, pity, complain. And then teindre, Die. Okay, and so keep in mind that these verbs will be actually conjugated the same way as uh, craindre is conjugated. All right. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate at the present form the verbs that will end with t-r-e, tre. Okay, so we can start right now. And I thought it might be more logical or easier to divide them in two groups. Okay, the first one would be uh, verbs ending with TR, <laughs> so it's not a big surprise. But the second one, and I thought that maybe we should put them in a special group. So the verbs ending with être and oître. Okay, so A, I, accent circonflexe, TR, E, être. Oître, O, I, accent circonflex, T, R, E. Okay, so, because basically they will behave uh, a bit differently. So, let's start now with the first one. So, the verbs ending with T, R, E. And for this group, I thought it might be interesting to use a quite useful verb. Mettre, mettre is to put. Okay, and so the concept is that you will have for the singular form, one stem or one root, okay, and it will be M, E, T. And for the plural, you will have actually another stem, another root, and it will be M, E, double T, T, T. And this is the tricky thing if we're talking about these, uh, these verbs, okay? So let's see how it will go. So, je mets... So you can see that now, as we saw, you put back this m e t, so the root m e t, and then you add here the ending s. Tu mets, il met, elle met. Okay. So then now, if we think about that, we should, for the plural form. Put back this M, E, T, T, and after that we will put the ending. And this is the reason why we'll get nous mettons. So you can see that we put back M, E, T, T, and then the ending O, N, S. Nous mettons. Then vous mettez, so in the same way, we keep this first part, so the root or the stem, plus the ending. And then finally... Il met, elle met, exactly the same thing. And this is basically uh, the difficult thing when we're talking about this group of verbs, okay? Just to remember that for the singular form, you will have to use this stem here, and then for the plural, you will have to use another stem. Then the endings will be S for je, so you will get je mets, S for tu, tu mets, Nothing for il, elle, so that's the reason why we have this m, e, t. Keep in mind that phonetically you pronounce them the same here. Me, me, me. Okay? Then for nous, you will put the ending o, 
NS, but then keep in mind that the stem is different, M-E-T-T. -T. For VU, a Z, same thing, same stem here. And then ENT for IL and L. Okay, so now let's see few verbs that will be conjugated like mettre, and we're talking about admettre, commettre, compromettre, permettre, soumettre, transmettre, battre, abattre, combattre, débattre, and few others. Admettre, and it means admit, confess. Commettre, commit. Compromettre, compromise. Sorry, <laughs> this is my French pronunciation here. <laughs> compromise <laughs> would be more appropriate than permettre, allow, permit. Soumettre, submit, subdue. Transmettre, pass, transmit. Battre, beat, defeat. Abattre, knock down. Combattre, combat, fight. And then débattre, discuss, debate. Okay, okay, so keep in mind that these verbs here will be actually, actually conjugated the same way as uh, mettre. So as we saw, we've got a second group here in this video and it's actually concerning the verbs uh, ending with être and what and for this group I thought it might be interesting to have this verb connaître connaître is to know okay and we use that quite quite often okay and basically we will have the same kind of situation meaning for the singular form we'll have one stem one root and it will be connaît like that and for the plural form, we will have a different stem or root, so connaisse. Okay, so connais and then connaisse. And that's the reason why we'll get the following forms. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. And keep in mind that it's a strange, strange thing. I know, but you should put here this accent circumflex. You don't pronounce it, I know that. But then if you want to write correctly, you should put it here, okay? It doesn't come for je, it doesn't come for tu, but then it will come here for il and elle. It's strange, I know, but still that's the way it should be done. For the plural form, keep in mind that we've got our stem here, our root connaisse, okay, so we should put it back here and then add the ending ONS. Nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. Alright, so one more time, you just put for the singular this stem here and then for je you will add S, for two you will add S. For il, you will add t. And that's the reason why you will get je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. And then keep in mind this little circumflex thing here. But then for the plural form, we've got a different stem, connais, and then the endings will be the same, ons as usual, ez and ent. So you will get the forms nous connaissons. Vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right? So, it's actually a bit difficult probably at the beginning, but once you, you have the idea that actually you've got two different stems for the singular and for the plural, then it's actually quite easy. Uh, regarding this circumflex thing, well, it's up to you if you want to write it or not, but you should put it, of course. Let's see now together the verbs that will actually be conjugated like connaître and they are accroître, croître, paraître, apparaître, disparaître, naître, renaître, reconnaître, comparaître and few others. 
So regarding the translation now, accroître needs to increase. Croître, grow. Paraître, appear, seem. Apparaître, come into being. Disparaître, disappear. Naître, be born. Renaître, rise, be reborn. Reconnaître, recognize. Comparaître, appear before. Okay, and these verbs will actually be conjugated like connaître. Le futur proche, so basically if you want to translate it directly, it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with aller at the present form, followed by the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so like in English you would say, I am going to travel, for instance. In French we would say, je vais voyager. Okay, so remember, first aller, that you conjugate at the present form, and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay, so first, of course, we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it, but still, I think that it is really important to see how it goes. So, we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form. Okay, first person here, je vais. Remember, final S not pronounced. Je vais. Okay, tu vas. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il, elle, va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal, on, really in your nose, okay? On. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful, nous allons, nous allons, okay, same thing here, vous allez, vous allez, all right, remember, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay, but then when you combine these two letters, you get the sound E, okay, allez, and then vous allez, all right, and the last persons, ils, elles, vont, ils vont, Elles vont. Okay, remember, final T not pronounced, so you get this O-N nasal here. On vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont. Elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new, Okay, because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine, so une nouvelle maison, a new house. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Okay, and then, il, elle, va partir, partir is to leave, okay, pour, pour means for, pour, un, one year, un an, 
okay so i will make the, the liaison just to to make it more more uh, normal after okay but i just want to divide here un, un, okay so let's read it normally now il va partir pour un an okay so you can hear that now i make this link between the two un an un an so no break between the two un an okay il va partir pour un an elle va partir pour un an okay then for nous nous allons chanter chanter means to sing okay cette chanson so remember cette feminine form of ce this okay chanson song and as chanson is feminine so you should put this this form here at the feminine this okay nous allons chanter cette chanson nous allons chanter cette chanson mm -hmm. and then for vous vous allez adorer so adorer to adore to love a lot <laughs> ce film okay so so you see now this okay but then it's the masculine form because film film here is masculine ce film this movie okay vous allez adorer ce film vous allez adorer ce film and the last one ils vont boire boire is to drink un café a coffee ils vont boire un café elles vont boire un café okay so let's repeat everything again je vais voyager avec ma famille tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Vous allez adorer ce film. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon B. And in this, in, in this lesson, sorry, we'll uh, try to work on the le genre des mots, so the gender of the words, because normally that's uh, something a bit difficult uh, for um, students to know or to remember the gender of the words. So normally what I tell them is to try to memorize, try to remember the gender when they discover or when they see a new word but I know it's not uh, it's not easy okay so in this lesson we'll try to see actually a few endings that give you some useful tips and uh, well, well we'll focus only on the on the feminine feminine words uh, and we'll start right now <clears throat> sorry so uh, when you see words that are ending with this e O N, so you can be almost. <laughs> this is quite important. Never say always uh, when you talk about Fran French language, language because you always find some uh, exceptions. Okay, so uh, I won't say always. I will say in most of the cases. Okay, when they end with E O N. Okay, um, they in most of the cases they will be feminine. Okay, so for instance here la libération. Or then la nation. Okay. Other ending is t. So when a word is finishing or ending with t, like that, la rapidité. Rapidité means uh, speed. And then la santé, health. Okay. In this case, you can be almost sure that these words will be feminine. Okay. When they're ending with U-R-E, ur, ok, la peinture, paint, la voiture, car, ok, so they are feminine. And then when they're ending with S, like that, E, S, S, E, so for instance, la politesse, la vitesse, vitesse means uh, speed, ok. So these words are feminine and these endings are classical ending for feminine form okay so let's see them one more time la libération la nation la rapidité la santé la peinture 
la voiture, la politesse, la vitesse. Ok So let's see a few more. So, still for the feminine form. So, when you will have a word ending with this E, double T, E, et, et, ok, for instance, la chaussette, la roulette, so they will be feminine, ok, chaussette means sock, and then roulette, well, it's the same, the thing you will find in casinos, and then when they're ending with E, E, like here, Okay, so basically you don't pronounce the, the E, okay, so it will be only the sound E, okay, for instance, la vie, life, okay, la partie, the part, okay, so they will be feminine as well, okay, and then words ending with E, accent aigu, and then E here, okay, remember, this final E is not pronounced, so you will have this E, remember, uh, accent aigu, it's a sound, okay? La poupée, the doll. L'arrivée, the arrival, okay? La poupée, l'arrivée. So feminine as well. Uh, in that case, remember that normally it should be la arrivée, but as arrivée, as usual, you know, start with the, a vowel, then a is disappearing, and then you just put this apostrophe, okay? And then words ending with ud like that, U, D, E, UD, okay, are normally, in most of the cases, feminine. La gratitude, well, if I, my understanding is correct, is exactly the same in English, la gratitude, and then same thing here, latitude, latitude, okay, so let's repeat them one more time. La chaussette, la roulette, la vie, la partie, la poupée, l'arrivée, la gratitude, l'attitude. Ok, I know it's not the key, it's not the magic key that will help you forever and uh, that will uh, give you all the time the, 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 the correct gender of the words, but still you've got some, you've got some tips now, okay, it was leçon B, okay, remember that I've been doing uh, many lessons, so they can be found there on youtube.com slash imagier, okay, and then the website is here, imagier.net, you can find more material there, have a nice day, bye bye. L'article partitif. So what's l'article partitif? Well, basically it's when you want to say that you want some sugar, for instance, so you don't want to specify the quantity, okay? Just want to say that you want some, but you don't want to say one, two, three, okay? Then, as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so for the masculine form, it will be du. Okay, du. Simple thing, d, u. This is u, this is d. Du, all right. And then for the feminine form, it will be de la. Okay, de la. All right, masculine form, du. Feminine form, de la. All right, let's see a few examples now. Je bois, boire, boire is to drink, okay, so je bois du café. All right, so you can see the difference here. It would be possible to say je bois un café. Okay, in that case you would translate it, je bois un café by I drink one coffee or I drink a coffee. Okay. In that case, when you put this du café, so first you put the masculine form because café is masculine, okay? and then you want to say, you don't want to specify the quantity, you want to say, I drink some coffee, okay? je bois du café. Okay? Uh, the other option as well would be to say, je bois le café, so if you want to put this article défini, but then you would have to put more information after. Le café, 
de ma mère, uh, the coffee of my mother, if you want. Okay? So in that case, in this lesson, we'll only focus on l'article partitif. So it's some. Okay? Je bois du café. All right? Let's see another option. Tu voudrais... So I wanted to introduce this voudrais form. Okay? So it's coming from vouloir. Vouloir is to want. Okay? But then it's not the present form here. The classic present form, it's the conditionnel form, okay? So it's the polite form that normally we should use. So I would like to have, you know, you don't say tu veux, you don't say you want because it is, uh, it is too, too, too strong and too direct. So normally we tend to use this conditionnel form. Uh, so tu voudrais, you would like to have. And then salad, okay, and it's feminine, so you should put the feminine form of this partitive, so de la salad, so some salad, okay. Tu voudrais de la salade, all right. Let's see another example here. Nous mangeons, so manger is to eat, okay, and that's the, the form for nous, okay, nous Mangeons du gâteau. Gâteau is cake, okay? And it's masculine, so du gâteau. We eat some cake. Vous voulez, okay, so vouloir again, all right, to want, okay, but here it's the present form, okay? Do you want? Vous voulez du fromage, cheese, du fromage, so some cheese. And it's a question. Vous voulez du fromage? Okay. And the last example here. So I've been putting this il y a. We'll see that a bit later in this unit, but it will come. Il y a means there is. Okay. Il y a, there is. Okay. Il y a de la neige. Neige is snow. Okay. Par terre, on the ground. Par terre. So there is snow. On the ground. Il y a de la neige par terre. Okay, so let's repeat all these sentences. The first one. Je bois du café. Second one. Tu voudrais de la salade. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Vous voulez du fromage? It's a question. So I've been insisting a little bit too much maybe. Let's do it one more time. Vous voulez du fromage? And the last one, il y a de la neige par terre. Pourquoi? Why? Pourquoi? Why? Okay? So, if you ask a question with pourquoi? Why? Normally, the answer that you will have will start with whether parce que, because, okay? Or then, pour, plus, one verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form, okay? So whether parce que, and then you just start a sentence, or then pour plus a verb at the infinitive form, okay? Let's see now some examples. First question, pourquoi es-tu ici? Pourquoi es-tu ici? Okay, ici means here. Et tu, are you? Why are you here? Pourquoi es-tu ici? So the first answer. Parce que, so because, je suis invité, I am invited, par, by Nicolas. Because I am invited by Nicolas. Parce que, je suis invité par Nicolas. Okay, so normally when, when you start with the parce que, so you want to express the reason why, okay? Parce que je suis invité par Nicolas. All right? And then, other option would be pour passer la soirée. So in that case, passer uh, should be translated like, like uh, spend, okay? Pour, to spend, pour passer la soirée, the evening, avec, with, vous. 
you pour passer la soirée avec vous to spend the evening with you and in that case when you will start your answer with pour okay so you will express what will you 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 will do uh, after that okay pour passer la soirée avec vous okay and in that case parce que you want to introduce the reason why okay so that's the way we will construct answers when you will ask a question with pourquoi okay où est le cube where is the cube où est le cube okay so let's see that together uh, so here first situation here okay so this is le cube and this is le cylindre okay so just to make it clear because that's the things we'll use uh, to introduce well the prepositions le cube est sur le cylindre so you can see it's on okay so sur le cylindre okay and there is contact here okay it's quite important second option same thing but it's basically under here le cube est sous le cylindre okay le cube est sous le cylindre don't pronounce the final s and then this o u combination of vowels is pronounced ou okay sous sous le cube est sous le cylindre all right then here no contact and that's really important okay le cube est au dessus du cylindre so let's repeat it le cube est au dessus final s not pronounced here au dessus du cylindre okay then same situation same, same situation sorry but then the opposite so it's here and no contact here you can see no contact le cube est au dessous du cylindre okay au dessous final s not pronounced du cylindre le cube est au dessous du cylindre all right so here i've been putting the plural form because we've got two here les cubes sont à côté du cylindre so next to okay les cubes sont à côté du cylindre le cube est à gauche du cylindre okay gauche left on the left of le cylindre le cube est à gauche du cylindre okay then the next one droite obviously it's right on the right le cube est à droite du cylindre le cube est à droite du cylindre okay in front of le cube est devant le cylindre le cube est devant le cylindre and now behind it's not possible to see it that's the reason why le cube est derrière so behind le cylindre le cube est derrière le cylindre So I've been taking away the color just to to show you that it's inside, okay? So in le cube est dans so in le cylindre. Le cube est dans le cylindre. Les adverbes de lieu. So really useful and we're starting right now. So the first one that we'll see. So I've been putting each time the english first and then the french version here okay so here <laughs> so i was re i won't read the, the 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 english one i will focus on the on the french one if that's okay with you ici ici okay 
okay? Then, la. So remember, you've got this accent, but, well, you don't pronounce it, okay? So it's la, la. Whoops. Laba, laba. Remember, final S not pronounced. Laba. Loin. Loin. So remember when you get this combination O E N, it's loin, loin, loin. Okay, loin. All right. So let's see them one more time. Ici, là, là-bas, loin. Okay. Devant. Final T not pronounced. Devant. Devant. Derrière. So if you look carefully, you've got E here and then double R. So it will open the sound of this E and you should pronounce it E. Okay? De. Derrière. Same thing here. You get this E accent grave. E. Derrière. Okay? Don't pronounce the final E. Derrière. Okay? Final S not pronounced. Dessus, 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 dessous, dessous, final S not pronounced here, dessous, ok, so let's repeat them, devant, derrière, dessus, dessous, ok, dedans, Final S not pronounced. Dedans. Dedans. Dehors. Okay, so remember, final S not pronounced, and then this H in French doesn't exist phonetically, so you don't pronounce it. Dehors. 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 En haut. En haut. Okay, final T not pronounced, and then this H as previously, you don't pronounce it. So this is O. En O. En O. En O. En bas. Final S not pronounced. En bas. En bas. Okay? Quelque part. Don't pronounce the final T. Quelque part, quelque part, autre part, autre part, autre part, ailleurs, look, final S not pronounced, and then you've got this y, y, y sound, ailleurs, okay, so I, sorry, I insist a little bit too much maybe, but still, Let's read it normally now. Ailleurs. Ailleurs. Ok? Autour. 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 Ok? So, repeat them one more time. Quelque part. Autre part. Ailleurs. Autour. Comment exprimer, sorry, comment exprimer l'obligation. So, when you must do something, well, there is a verb for that, to express, to express must, and this is falloir. Falloir, okay, falloir. And then you will have two options. The first one will be il faut. So, you get to remember that falloir is what we call verb impersonnel, okay, because there is only one form and it's il, third person of the singular, il faut, okay, so uh, je, tu, nous, vous, etc., they don't exist for falloir, it's only il, okay, il faut, and then the verb coming after will be at the infinitive, okay, so that's the way to express to must, okay, and then, or to have to if you want, il faut, okay, same form, but then you will add after that un nom, a noun, okay, so whether 
a verb at the infinitive form or then a noun. So we'll see a few examples now. So the first scénario, as we would say in French, is falloir plus infinitif. Okay. So here, il faut respecter les règles. All right. Il faut respect, respecter, so to respect, les règles, the rules. Il faut respecter les règles. All right, and then another option. So I've been putting here and here the two parts of the negative form. Il ne faut pas fumer, fumer is to smoke, ici, here. Il ne faut pas fumer ici. Okay, so now we'll see the way it works with noun, a noun. And here, for instance, il faut. So still il faut, remember, as I said, uh, it's only il faut. So it's a verbe impersonnel. Okay. Une carte d'identité. Il faut une carte d'identité. Second example here. Il faut un parapluie, umbrella, un parapluie, car, because, il pleut. It's raining, it rains. Il faut un parapluie, car il pleut. Les adjectifs ordinaux. Les adjectifs ordinaux, so in English it would be first, second, third, fourth, etc., etc. So we'll see how they go in, uh, in French. And so we'll start with the first, okay? And as usual in French, remember, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? So each time we'll have here and here the masculine form and the feminine form. Here, that's the way you can see them written when you get to make them short, okay? So they can be written like that, okay? So we'll pronounce them. Le premier, so the first, le premier, la première. Le premier, la première. Okay? Then, le deuxième, la deuxième. So in that case, it's only the le and la. That will be different because deuxième will be the same if you look at them. Okay? Then, same thing here. Le troisième, la troisième. Le troisième, la troisième. Okay? Le quatrième, la quatrième. Le quatrième, la quatrième. Le cinquième, la cinquième. Le cinquième, la cinquième. Le sixième, la sixième. Le sixième, la sixième. Le septième, so remember we don't pronounce this P here. Le septième, la septième. Ok? Le huitième, remember H doesn't exist. Huitième, huitième, la huitième. Le neuvième, neuvième, so it's V here, remember, V, vième, la neuvième. Le neuvième, la neuvième. Le dixième, so remember, if, even if you get this Z X here, you pronounce it Z. Dixième, dixième. Same thing as we had here. Sixième. Okay. Le dixième, la dixième. Le verbe partir, partir means to leave. Okay. At the present form. So we see this verb because uh, this verb is normally quite useful. And then uh, it is not regular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs. So it's always good to see the conjugation together. Okay. So the first form is je pars. 
So final S not pronounced. Je pars. Tu pars. Same form. You can see here and here. So final S not pronounced. Tu pars. Il, elle, part. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle, part. Okay? So you can see that it's par. Sorry. <laughs> par, par, and then par. Okay? So the same phonetical form for these persons. But then obviously and of course for nous it will be different. So classic ending O N S. You don't pronounce the S. You just have this on, on sound nasal. Nous partons. Nous partons. Okay? Then for vous, classic ending for vous as well. A Z. But then you pronounce it E. Vous partez. Vous partez. Okay? And the last persons. Il, elle, part. Remember, classic ending. E, N, T. But then you don't pronounce them. Part. Part. Okay? So let's repeat them again. Je pars. Tu pars, il part, elle part, nous partons, vous partez, ils partent, elles partent. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon J. And in this lesson we'll discover together how to conjugate at the present form le verbe venir. So venir means to come okay so it's quite useful and especially it does belong to the third group of verbs so it's not regular so for the present form it's quite useful to spend few minutes just to see the conjugation together okay so we'll we'll start right now first form je viens final s not pronounced je viens remember i e n yen yen je viens Okay. Tu viens. Final S not pronounced. Tu viens. Okay. Then il, elle vient. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle vient. Okay. So je viens, tu viens, il, elle vient. Phonetically it's the same form. Okay. But then for nous it will be a bit different. O, N, S remember classic ending for nous at the present form. Final S not pronounced, so you will get the sound venons. Nous venons. Nous venons. Okay? Then, classic ending for vous, a Z here, and then you pronounce it E. Vous venez. Vous venez. Okay? And the last one here. So you've got this double N just after the E, uh, so it will change a little bit your pronunciation. You will have to pronounce this E uh, like E, E, okay? Il vient. So remember this classic ending E, N, T for the third person of the plural is here, but phonetically doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Vien, vien, okay? Il vient, elle vient. All right, so let's see the form one more time. Je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So, venir is quite important. Be sure to remember it by heart. Please, 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 s'il vous plaît. Uh, and then, when you're ready, you can go at the following address to find the next lesson, okay? And then more material here, imagie.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Les pronoms C-O-D, okay? So, no stress, but still, it will be quite important. Okay, les pronoms C-O-D. So, we'll take first a sentence, okay? So, it's a question, and it's Tu regardes la Television. Okay, so tu regarde, regarde is to watch, la television. So if we look at this question, okay, and then we want to define 
all the elements, the first thing that we've got in this sentence is tu. Okay, so it's here, and it's sujet, so the subject of the sentence here. Okay, second part that we've got here is regarde. Okay, regarde here, and it's the verb. Okay, that you've been conjugating, it's es, just because it's tu, all right? And the second part, or the, sorry, the, so the third part here, so the la last part, la télévision. So la télévision, that's what we will call complément, okay? Because it's a complement, it will complete the sentence here by giving some information. It's objet, it doesn't have anything to do because it's uh, la télévision, okay? So it's not an object like that, but it's what we call grammatical object, okay? And we say that it's direct because you don't have any preposition between the verb and this complément, okay? So no preposition, so it's direct, okay? So why do we say that it's quite important to use les pronoms COD just because when you've got a question, so if someone is asking you to regard la télévision, okay, the first option would be oui, je regarde la télévision. So, of course, it's possible to repeat, I mean, this part, la télévision, okay, but then if we are honest, then in most of the cases, we won't repeat la télévision in that case, we will use what we call pronouns, okay, just to avoid repeating this word, okay? So let's see these pronouns together. So as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, okay? In that case here, we'll start with the masculin singulier. Masculin singulier will be first le, or then, as usual, if we've got a vowel coming after, the E will disappear, so it will be L apostrophe, okay? Le, or then L, like that, okay? If it's feminine, and at the singular form, so we're talking here about the third person of the singular, it will be LA, or for the same reasons as previously, L apostrophe if you get a vowel after. Okay? And then for the plural form, so here we're talking about the third person of the plural, then it will be LE. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. So for the masculine singular form, it's LE. For the feminine singular form, it's LA. Okay? And then if they are followed by vowels, then you take a and a away, and then you get this l, okay? And for the plural form here, it's le. All right? So, let's see that in action now. So, if you get the same question, tu regardes la télévision. All right? So, now we've got all the elements. So, we know that tu was the subject, Regarde the verb, la télévision, complément d'objet direct, and that's the thing we want to replace. We don't want to repeat la télévision, okay? So first, what do we need to do is first to spot the gender of the word. We know that la télévision is feminine, okay? So we've got all the keys necessary. Oui. Je la regarde. So, as I said a long time ago in the lesson, remember that in French, the pronouns, like this one for instance, are coming before the verb. So that's the reason why you will have this la here before the verb. Oui, je la regarde. Okay? Let's take another question. And here you get tu vas regarder la télévision.
So what's the difference between the previous question and this question? Well, this is, and we saw that in a previous lesson, uh, I guess it was on this unit, so you can check it if you're not sure about that. That's what we call the future proche, so the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. You are going to watch. Okay, so that's the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. Okay. And then here, if you look carefully, well, you've got two verbs. And that's the important thing here. So if you will have a structure with two verbs, and then you want to use a pronoun, this pronoun will come always before the second verb. Like here, oui, je vais la regarder. Okay? So I'm not telling you that it will come between the two verbs because you can have many things between these verbs, okay? So focus on this idea that it will come before the second verb. Oui, je vais la regarder. Okay? So we'll see that les pronoms complément d'objet direct can replace all the persons. So, for the first person, it will be me. Second person, it will be te. Third person of the singular, so the one we saw, le for the masculine form, and then la for the feminine form. First person of the plural, nous. So, basically, it's quite easy to memorize this one, to remember it. Same thing here. Second person of the plural, vous. And then third person of the plural, les. All right, so me, te, le, la, nous, vous, les. All right? So we'll see now a few examples. So the first one. Il me regarde. So if you want to say that he is looking at me, il me regarde. Okay. So remember, as I said previously, these pronouns are coming before the verb. Okay. Il me regarde. Present form, only one verb. You just put it before. Il me regarde. Il te regarde. So he's looking at you. Il te regarde. Il le regarde. Il la regarde. He's looking at him. He's looking at her. Il nous regarde. Il vous regarde. Il les regarde. Okay? It's not that difficult when you, when you try to remember, well, first, of course, the, the pronouns, and then this idea that it will come before the verb. Well, honestly, it's not that tricky, okay? Uh, I've been putting the same sentence, but then at this near future form, okay? So just to show you, if you forgot it, that it should come before the second verb, okay? So, il va me regarder, so he's going to watch me, hein, or to look at me, okay? Il va me regarder, il va te regarder, il va le regarder, il va la regarder, il va nous regarder, il va vous regarder, il va les regarder. Les pronoms C-O-I. Okay, les pronoms C-O-I. So, uh, well, let's say that it's the second part of uh, les pronoms C-O, complément d'objet. Okay, so if you didn't watch the previous lesson, uh, well, maybe it would be, it would be better to, to do so, so that you could understand maybe more clearly the, the, the whole thing. Okay, but then still we're starting right now. So, les pronoms complément d'objet direct. So, we'll start with a 
une question, a question, ok, so we'll see. It's a basic question, ok, you get, tu parles à ton frère. Ok, parler is to talk, tu parles, you talk, to your brother, à ton frère. Ok, so if we have a look at the elements in this sentence, the first part, or the first element is tu, ok, and that's the subject of the sentence, tu, alright. Then the second element is parle, okay, and that's the, the verb. So it's ending like that because you've been conjugating this verb according to tu, okay, but it's a verb here. And then we've got this last part here, à ton frère. So that's what we call complément, so it will come to complete the sentence, okay, and it's objet, okay, so be careful, it's really what we call a grammatical object. So it's not an object, because in that case, it's a good example, because it's a person, okay? But then it's a grammatical object, and it's indirect, because you've got this preposition a here, okay? So in the previous le uh, lesson, we saw the direct ones, okay? They were without any preposition, okay? But then in this lesson, it's indirect, because you've got the preposition a. Here, okay, and it will change the things. So let's see the question. You can ask the question. So it's the same. Tu parles à ton frère, okay? And then the answer that you could give, of course, would be oui. Je parle à mon frère. But let's say that in most of the cases, in French, we won't repeat this. À mon frère part, okay, we'd rather use pronouns just to avoid repeating this complément d'objet indirect, okay, so we'll see how they go. As usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form, okay, and here, just to start, we'll start with masculine singular, okay. Masculine singular form will be lui. Okay? U -i, lui. Lui. Alright? Féminin singulier, so feminine form and the singular form here, it will be lui. <coughs> so it's quite easy to memorize, to remember, okay? Because it is the same form for the masculine and the feminine form. Okay? And then for the plural form, so third person of the plural, to be more precise, it will be leur. Okay, so masculine singular, third person of the singular, lui. Féminin singulier, feminine singular form, third person of the singular, lui. And then the plural form, third person of the plural, leur. Okay, let's see now the same question. Okay, tu parles à ton frère. Okay? And the idea in that case, of course, is to avoid repeating this part here, so complément d'objet indirect, and to replace it with the pronoun. Okay? So first we know that it's indirect because we've got the preposition here. We know here that it's masculine because it's brother. Okay? And then we've got the information here because it's ton. All right? So we've got all the elements just to reply using the pronoun. Oui, je, lui parle. Okay? So the only thing you should really um, think about here is the position. So you should remember, as I said previously, that the pronouns in French will be placed before the verb. So je, lui parle. Oui, je lui parle. All right? And then we could have, well, basically the same question, but then this question would be like it is here at the near future. So if you didn't see the lesson regarding the, the near future, uh, maybe it would be uh, more useful for you to, to watch it, but still, the near future, it's a way to construct the future, but at the present tense. 
with the, the verb aller, to go, you are going to speak or talk okay, to your brother. Okay? So you are going to... But then the, the important thing in, that thing in that case is that you've got two verbs. Okay? You've got aller here, to go, and then you've got parler, to speak or to talk. Okay? And when you've got two verbs, then for the pronoun that you would like to use, you will have to put it just before the second verb. Oui, je vais lui parler. Okay? So I'm not telling you that it should be between because that's the case here. But then between these two verbs, you could put many, many things, okay, like adverbs or other things. Okay, so remember that this pronoun lui should be before the second verb. Alright, so now we'll see these pronouns, but then for all the persons, okay, for the first person of the singular, it will be me, second person of the singular, te, then third person, like we saw, so masculine and feminine, I only put one, so lui, because it's the same, first person of the plural, nous, Second person of the plural, vous. Third person of the plural, leur. Okay? Me, te, lui, nous, vous, leur. Alright? So let's see examples now. So he's talking to me. Il me parle. Okay, remember, me, and then before the verb, il me parle. He's talking to you. Il te parle, il lui parle, I don't know why lui is still white, <laughs> well maybe it was a mistake for my, yeah it is a mistake, it should be, it should be arranged, but then still, il lui parle, okay, il nous parle, il vous parle, il leur parle, all right, il me parle, il te parle, il lui parle, il nous parle, il vous parle, il leur parle. Okay, so these examples are with one verb, okay, and then I've been rewrite, rewriting the same, same um, sentence, but then at the near future, okay, with the two verbs, and then we can see how they go now. Il va me parler, he's going to talk to me. Il va me parler, so remember, you know, me before the second verb. Il va te parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va lui parler, he's going to talk to her or he's going to talk to him, okay. Il va nous parler, he's going to talk to us. Il va vous parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va leur parler, he's going to talk to them, okay. Il va me parler, il va te parler, il va lui parler, il va nous parler, il va vous parler, il va leur parler. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon M. And in this lesson we'll see how to conjugate together le verbe vouloir. Vouloir means to want. And uh, it belongs to the third group of verbs in French, so irregular. So that's the reason why I think it's quite good to see the conjugation at the present form together. So here it goes. Vouloir, first person, je veux. Final X not pronounced. Je veux. Tu veux. Final X not pronounced, the same form. Il veut. Final T, not pronounced, elle veut, okay, so here, so far we've got one phonetical form, it's the. Then for nous, classic ending, O and S, don't pronounce the S, just pronounce the on, nous voulons, nous voulons. Same thing here, classic ending, a Z for vous, but then you pronounce it E, vous voulez, vous voulez. Vous voulez. And the last one, here, E, U, E, and then 
E N T classic ending but then you don't pronounce it so you get vol vol ils veulent elles veulent ils veulent elles veulent okay so let's repeat it one more time je veux tu veux il veut elle veut nous voulons vous voulez ils veulent elles veulent so that's it for this lesson. It was uh, Leçon M, uh, where you can find more lessons right here. Imagier is the name of the channel on YouTube. And then more material can be found there at imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Le verbe savoir. Savoir means to know, and it's quite useful. And uh, But then it is uh, irregular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs, so it's quite good to see the, the way to conjugate it together okay at the present form and we'll see it right now okay so let's start now je sais okay final s not pronounced and then you get this a e a okay je sais sais okay tu sais same form final s not pronounced tu sais il sait final t not pronounced elle Say. So one phonetical form so far. Nous savons. So classic ending for nous, O N S. You don't pronounce the final S. Nous savons. Nous savons. Okay? Then vous savez. Classic ending for vous, a Z, but then phonetically it's E. Vous savez. Savez. And then, il, here, classic ending for il and l at the plural form, e, n, t, you don't pronounce it, so you get the sound sav, v, 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 sav, okay, il sav, el sav. So let's see that one more time, je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait, nous savons, Vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Il y a, so we saw it in a previous lesson quite shortly. So il y a means there is or there are. But then in French, we will have only one form, il y a. Okay, so let's see, for instance, here a question. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin? Dans le quartier. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a? So, is there un magasin, a shop, dans le quartier, in the neighborhood? Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? All right. So, the answer would be, oui, il est juste ici. Yes, it is right here. Oui, il est juste ici. Okay, so in that case, we've been using this il y a, there is, okay, just because un magasin, well, it's singular, okay, so it's basically there is a shop, there is something, okay, let's see now, here, same thing, il y a une piscine, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, il y a une piscine dans cette ville, all right. So you can see that in the first example, I've been using this esque. You remember we saw that previously that you can add if you want to ask a question. Okay. Or then it's possible here just to keep the same order. There is il y a okay une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville in this town. Okay. But then don't forget to raise your voice at the end because it's a question. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville. Okay, just a little bit to make it clear that it's a question. Okay, so answer, oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. À côté, remember, it was next or near. Okay, and then la mairie, city hall. Oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. All right, so in both cases here, il y a, just because it was masculin singulier, okay, and then here, il y a une piscine, féminin singulier. 
All right. And we'll see now the other option that we would have to ask correctly the question. So first, look at it. Ilia. Actually, you should change the order and put it like that. And the way you will pronounce it is Iatil. Iatil. Okay, so that's the correct form to ask a question with Ilia. So the formal form, if you want. And then de toilettes. Here it's the plural form. Okay, toilets. Okay, so it doesn't really change because it will stay Ilia. Okay, but then here, of course, the order is changing, so that's the reason why it can be a bit tricky to, to notify the, the, the fact that basically it doesn't change even if it's plural here. Okay, dans ce restaurant, in this restaurant, y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Okay, and then the answer, oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, droite, remember, it was on the right. À droite, on the right. Just on the right. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, so to re resume the whole thing, remember this il y a will be used, so for there is, so like here, un magasin, a shop, so it's the singular form, okay, or then here as well, il y a, there is, une piscine, a swimming pool, but still it will be also used as like that, il y a, okay, or then in the other order here, for the plural form, okay, it doesn't change. So that's one interesting thing in French. For once, it's easy, it doesn't change, il y a plus singulier, or then il y a plus pluriel. Okay. And in this unit, we'll discover together le passé composé. So le passé composé is a past tense, and it's uh, probably the one that you will use in most of the cases, because that's the past tense that we tend to use to express what we've been doing uh, for the weekend or, uh, well, the well, normally the, the, the past that is not that far. If you're talking about your childhood or something really far, we will normally use uh, another tense that's called uh, l'imparfait. That we'll see a bit later. So now in this uh, lesson we'll focus on le passé composé. So we'll have now few examples here just to show you first how it goes. Okay. So in this first sentence, so I took this manger to eat verb. Okay. Je mange au restaurant. And so if you look carefully, you can see that this sentence is at the present tense. Okay. Je mange au restaurant. So I eat at the restaurant. Okay. And then here, I wanted to show you what this passé composé form looks like. Okay. So you can see that you've got first here the verb avoir at the present form. Okay. So it goes like j'ai. And then the second part, so because that's the main concept of this passé composé, composé means, means composed, so you, you will have two parts, okay? And this is the second part here, and that's what we call participe passé, so uh, past participle, and it goes like manger with an accent here at the end, okay? So we'll see why in a few minutes, okay? So the rest doesn't change, okay? And then you've got this j'ai mangé au restaurant, well, it's the sentence, same sentence, but it's at the past tense. So it could be like yesterday, maybe last weekend. Okay, another example here. Tu regardes la télévision. Okay, remember, regarder is to watch. Okay, so you are watching the television. Tu regardes la télévision. So that's here, the present tense. Okay, and so if we want to put the same verb at the past tense. Well, basically, we've got to respect the same rule that we had previously. Here, you see, we had avoir, so at the first person for je, and then here, we've got avoir at the second person for tu, you, okay? And it's at the present form here, tu as, and then same thing here, you will have to put this participe passé form, okay, past participle, with an accent here, because it belongs to the first group, Tu as regardé la télévision. Okay? So, of course, I know that many, 
many of you will say, mm -hmm, it looks so simple, it's not possible to be so simple in French. And that's, that's, that's true. We will have exceptions. And here we've got a good example. So, il va au travail. Okay, remember, va, it's the form at the present tense uh, for the verb aller. Aller is to go. Okay, and so we will see that few verbs we will have to change a little bit the, 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 the way to construct the passé composé because here you can see that in the past tense sentence here we don't use avoir as we did previously like with manger, j'ai, tu as, with regarder, okay? But we will use être, okay? Il est, and then you can see here, aller, so participe passé, au travail at work. Il est allé au travail. Okay? And this will be, well, the first difficulty of uh, the passé composé form. So, you should really uh, think about the fact that, well, most of the verbs will be constructed with avoir, okay? And the, the one that you will construct with the être will be the exceptions. So, you will have to remember them by heart, of course, okay, so we'll, we'll make a list after. But then, so if we want to make it simple, so just to resume the whole thing first, okay, so normally if you want to construct this passé composé form, then the first part that you will have to put is avoir at the present tense, and then the second part will be this participe passé form, okay, that we will see, and then you will get this passé composé, okay. For the exceptions, as I said, we will have to use être at the present form, then the participe passé form, so you will get this passé composé. Okay? Now, let's see the verbs that will require être at the passé composé. The first one that we saw in the, the, the example that I gave you previously was aller. Aller is to go. Okay? Second one, arriver. Arriver means to arrive. Third one, descendre. Descendre means to go down. Then, devenir. Devenir means to become. Then, entrer. Entrer, to enter. Monter. Monter, to go up. Mourir. Mourir, to die. Naître, naître, to born. Partis, par, sorry, sorry. Partir, partir, to leave. Rester, rester, to stay. Retourner, retourner, to return. Sortir, sortir, to go out. Tomber, tomber, to fall. Venir, venir, to come. Okay, so remember that all these verbs here that we saw will require the verb être at the passé composé form. Okay, so the others will require avoir. Okay, so you can see now that, I mean, most of the verbs will require avoir. Okay, and then these verbs will require être. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître. Partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Ok? So, let's see the other group of verbs that will all the time require être. And these verbs are, well, what we call this réfléchi, réfléchi, sorry, verbe réfléchi, so thinking about the reflexive in English, okay, so, uh, se regarder, for instance, 
Okay, so remember that we've got these verbs like, so regarder is to watch or to look. And then when you put this se regarder, well, basically you will have the meaning like to look or to watch at oneself. Okay, and all these verbs will require être. Okay, s'appeler as well, to call oneself. Se présenter, to present oneself. So all these verbs but then more generally, all the verbs constructed with this S form, okay, so to have this reflexive form, will require ÊTRE. Okay? So now, let's see again, one more time, if that's okay with you, the conjugation at the present form of AVOIR and ÊTRE, because that's the verbs you will have to use, okay? So AVOIR, remember, it goes like J'ai. Tu as, il a, elle a, so remember, masculine, feminine. Nous avons, so you can put this little liaison, link between the two. Nous avons, vous avez, same thing here, little link between the two. And then, ils ont, so the link as well, the liaison, elles ont. Alright, so, j'ai, tu as. Il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so it's avoir at the present form, so the form you will have to use for the first part of the passé composé, and then être, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, Vous êtes, okay, little liaison here, little link, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont, okay, so one more time, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont, all right, and so for the second part, so what we call this participe passé, so the past participle, you get to remember that the first group of verbs, so if you remember, they end with this ER, okay, so we had parler, regarder, etc. So the infinitive form like ER will give you a accent aigu at the participe passé. So for, exam for example, here we've got parler, parler is to talk or to speak, so it ends like here with a R, you can see that. First group of verbs, so it will go like parler, like that. The funny thing is that phonetically they are the same. So infinitive parler, so if you remember we saw that previously, so I mean this combination of two letters at the end of the words normally gives the sound E, okay, parler, and then Past participle, participe passé, parler. Same thing here, regarder, regarder. Okay? And then even the, the high irregular verb aller, because aller doesn't belong to the first group, uh, even if it ends with a uh, air, we saw that previously. But then even this verb will give, uh, well, <laughs> normal or easy uh, participe passé. Okay? It goes like aller, like that. Okay? So, Parler, regarder, regarder is to watch, and then aller, aller is to go. Okay? The verbs from the second group, so second group, not all the ER verbs, unfortunately, <laughs> but most of them. Well, it would be quite simple because this ER will become E, alright? So you will have verbs like choisir, choisir is to choose, will become choisi for the participe passé form. Okay? Finir, to finish, to end, fini, like that. Unir, to unite, uni. Alright? So it's not that difficult. Okay? So choisi, fini, uni. After that, the difficulties uh, are for the third group of verbs, so the irregular ones. So it's usually it's quite difficult to make some groups and subgroups, but then we can we can we can have few examples here, like 
connaître, connaître is to know, ok, and it will give you connu, ok, voir, like o -E -R, will become vu, alright, then verbs like partir, ok, even if it doesn't belong to the second group, it will give you parti, ok, rire, i -R -E, it will give you ri, ok, partir to leave and then rire to laugh, ok, Écrire, to write, so I-R-E, will give I-T, écrit, ok? Remember that even if you've got this final T, you don't pronounce it, so it goes like écrit, ok? Dire, I-R-E as well, will give you D, same thing here, I-T, but then you pronounce it I, ok? Écrire, to write, dire, to say, and then mettre, to put, so E t t r e will give you this E S me. Same thing here, final S is not pronounced. Me. Okay? And then prendre, so E N D R E will give E S pris. Okay? Same thing here. You don't pronounce the final S. Okay? So let's see that again. So when you get this être, it will go like like U connaître connu. Then when you will have this O E R it will give you U. Voir, vu, ok? I, R, I. Partir, parti. I, R, E, will give you I. Rire, ri. Ok? I, R, E, here, I, T. But then phonetically it's I as well because you don't pronounce the final T. Ok? Écrire, écrit. I, R, E, I, T, same group. Dire, di. Ok, then E, T, T, R, E will give you this E, S, but then you don't pronounce the S, so you get I. E. Mettre, mi, and then E, N, D, R, E, I, e, S, but then same thing here, the sound I. E. Prendre, pri. Ok, so this is normally the difficulty of the passé composé to remember uh, the, the participe passé form, okay? In most of the cases, I, I tend to, to tell my student that, well, they should learn them by heart, especially the irregular ones, because after that, I mean, the regular ones are quite easy to, to handle, but anyway, it's your shot. <laughs> so let's see a few examples now. So if we take the verb uh, parler, so parler, to speak or to talk, so it goes like j'ai parler, ok, tu as parlé, il a parlé, elle a parlé, nous avons parlé, vous avez parlé, ils ont parlé, elles ont parlé. So if you look at it, it's not that difficult, you know, as I said, the only thing first that you should really remember, it's the verb avoir, but then I assume that at this uh, level now it should be okay for you and then you get to after that construct it and put this participe passive form and for the regular verbs like parler it's quite easy and phonetically it's the same so j'ai parlé okay let's see now few things that you get to remember so if you construct the passé composé form with the verb être okay so we saw the exceptions, I mean the verbs that are constructed with être, okay, you will have to remember one important thing. If you've got here the example of il est allé, okay, so you can see that aller goes like that without anything after, but if you look at the feminine form, elle est allée, so you can see that the difference between the two is that I've been adding this little uh, at the end. So this is the thing that you will have to remember if you construct this passé composé form with être. You will have to put at the end of this participe passé form something according to the gender. So in that case it's a feminine form. You will have to put a uh, at the end. Okay. Or, let's continue, if you've got the plural form like here, il, okay, masculine plural, and that's important, you will have to add this s at the end. And logically, 
for once in French, if you've got the feminine plural form, so elles here, elles sont allées, you will have to add first this E, so for the feminine, and then S for the plural. Okay, so that's the one, I mean, important thing that you will have to remember if you want to construct this passé composé form, okay? Keep in mind one thing. If you want to use French orally, so if you want only to talk, the good thing here, listen to me, il est allé, elle est allé, ils sont allés, elles sont allés. So the good news for you is that even if you write them differently, you will pronounce it the same way. So phonetically, it doesn't change at all. Okay? Here you've got aller, aller, even if you've got the final E, you don't pronounce it. Aller, even if you've got the S, aller, even if you've got this E, uh, S. Okay? So doesn't change. But if you want to write correctly, you will have to remember that you put this final E, uh, when you've got a feminine form, so feminine singular form, you will have to put, to put this S if you've got the plural form, so masculine plural, and you will have to add this uh, S if you've got the feminine plural form. Okay? Continuons. So, if we have the, the full thing for aller, it goes like Je suis allé, tu es allé, il est allé, elle est allée. Nous sommes allés, vous êtes allés, ils sont allés, elles sont allés. Ok? Let's see as well an example for all these reflexive verbs. Je me suis présenté, tu t'es présenté, il s'est présenté, elle s'est présentée. Nous nous sommes présentés, vous vous êtes présentés, ils se sont présentés, elles se sont présentés. Ok? So, the thing that we've got to keep in mind is, in most of the cases, you will have to use this avoir at the present form, then this participe passé form, and you will get this passé composé. Ok? In some cases, for the verbs, so the list of verbs, we saw, and it's not a long list, so try to remember it. And all the reflexive verbs, you will have to use this être at the present form, then the participe passé. Then you will get this passé composé form. The lesson will work on le participe passé. So in the previous lesson, we, uh, well, I introduced the passé composé form, okay? And if you remember, it was quite important to know how to construct this participe passé. So participe passé is a past participle in English. Um, just because, well, in most of the cases, it is easy for the regular group, so the two first group of verbs that we have in the French language, but uh, for the rest of the verbs, it's a bit tricky to be uh, to be honest. Okay, so we'll see that together. But then, so as I said, for the first group, so the ver the group of verbs ending with a er like that, it is quite easy because you only need to take this a uh, air away and replace it with a uh, accent aigu, okay? So parler, to talk, to speak, will give you parler, okay? The good thing for the phonetical part is that it is the same. Parler, parler, you pronounce it the same, okay? Regarder, so to watch, will give you regarder, okay? And then even this aller verb, so irregular verb, but then it will behave that, like the, the regular verbs. Uh, so, aller will give you aller, uh, accent aigu like that, okay? Second group of verbs, not all the ER verbs, we'll see that a bit later, but most of them. And it's quite easy as well because you will have to take this ER away and just replace it with I, okay? So, choisir, to choose, will give you Choisi. Finir will become fini. Unir, uni. Okay, choisir to choose, finir to finish or to end, unir to unite. 
Okay, so the two first group of verbs are quite easy to modify just to make this participe passé form. Okay, but then the third group is a bit more tricky. So we saw a few examples. So like this one, a i t r e will become u, connaître, to know, connu. O i r, voir, to see, will become u, vu. Okay, i r. So even if partir doesn't belong to the second group, then it will behave the same way. It will become i, partir, to leave, parti. Rire, i r e. Same thing here will become i. Rire, ri. Okay, i r e will become i t. Okay, uh, écrire to write will become écrit. Okay. Remember that phonetically this final t doesn't exist. Okay. So the sound will be only this i, écrit. All right. Dire, i r e, will become i t, di. Okay. Phonetically, same thing here. You don't pronounce the final t. Mettre, e t t r e, will become i s. Final s not pronounced. So mettre to put, mi. Prendre, so e n d r e, will become i s. Same thing here. Final s not pronounced. So prendre, pris. Okay. So we will work now on the two main verbs of the French language. So avoir to have, and obviously it will be a bit strange. <laughs> it will become a u. So you will have to write this participe passé form like that. Okay. But you will have to pronounce it u. So remember, main difference or big difference between what you write and what you pronounce. So you write it like that, e、uh, u, but then you pronounce it u, okay? And then être is, well, it's a bit more simple in a way. So it's été, okay? E、uh, accent aigu, t e、uh, accent aigu, été, all right? So u and then été. All right. So let's see. Or let's discover few groups of verbs. So verbs ending with er, i, er, okay, will become er, u for the participe passé form. So we'll see few verbs: courir, couru, accourir, accouru, concourir, concouru, parcourir, parcouru. Now a new group, so n e r, so verbs ending with n e r, and it will become n u, okay? Tenir, tenu, appartenir à, appartenu à, contenir, contenu, entretenir, entretenu. And then it continues. Maintenir, maintenu. Obtenir, obtenu. Retenir, retenu. Okay. So now another group. So verbs ending with u, i, r, e, and they, they will become u, i, t. Okay, for the participe passé. Let's see. Conduire, conduit. Construire, construit. Cuire, cuit. Détruire, détruit. Instruire, instruit. Okay, so you can notice that even if I put this final t, so as usual I don't pronounce it. Okay, conduit, construit, cuit, détruit, instruit. Okay. So, a few more verbs. Introduire, introduit, produire, produit, réduire, réduit, séduire, séduit, traduire. Traduit. Okay, so the same rule because well, basically it's the same group and then same rule. Final t not pronounced. So introduit. Produit, réduit, séduit, traduit. Okay. 
another group of verbs. So verbs ending with a, e, accent circonflexe, t, r, e, and it will become u. So let's see a few examples. Connaître, connu. Reconnaître, reconnu. Apparaître, apparu. Disparaître, disparu. Paraître, paru. And now let's discover the oudre verbs like coudre, cousu, moudre, moulu, résoudre, résolu. So it's just to show you that, you know, some verbs can be really, really irregular and it's quite easy in some cases to make some groups and subgroups. So you should learn these verbs and the others, I mean the, the irregular ones, by heart if you really want to master this uh, participe passive form and all the composed tenses that will use the, will, will use the participe passé. Okay, so, but then let's continue. The groups, so group of verbs ending with a, i, n, d, r, e, and they will become a, i, n, t. Okay, so a few examples. Craindre, craint. Contraindre, contraint. Plaindre, plein. Okay, and as usual, final t here is not pronounced, so you get craint, contraint. Plein. Okay. Another group, so E, I, N, D, R, E, and it will become E, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Atteindre, atteint. Éteindre, éteint. Feindre, fin. Peindre, pain. Teindre, teint. Okay, as usual, final T. Not pronounced. Atteint, éteint, fin, pain, teint. Okay? Now the verbs ending with O, I, N, D, R, E, and they will become O, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Joindre, joint, rejoindre, rejoint. Okay? Same thing, final T, not pronounced. Joint. So when you get this O E N combination of letters, you get the sound OIN. Okay? Joint and then rejoint. Another group, so verbs ending with O E R, so it will become U or then U accent circonflex. So even if you put this accent circonflex, you don't pronounce it. Okay? It doesn't change the sound of the letter U. So it's the same phonetically, it's U and then U. Okay? Two examples. Décevoir, déçu. Apercevoir, aperçu. Concevoir, conçu. Recevoir, reçu. Devoir, dû. Mouvoir, mu. All right. And now... Another group, so I, R, E, and they will become I for the participe passé form, okay? Rire, ri. Sourire, souris. Suffire, suffit. How we can say uh, what time it is in French, so l'heure. Are you ready? Let's start now. So, let's take this simple and interesting example so you get this one so you will have the chance or the possibility to use two options or two forms the first one il est okay so we will use this verb être to introduce the time and we will use this il form uh, so don't think of it like he okay uh, but then that's the that's the form that we will will use okay il est Six heures. All right, so heure, you write it like that. Remember, H is not pronounced, okay? So it goes like heure. Il est six heures. If you want to be 
more precise, you can use this morning word, okay? So it would be like in the morning, but then morning, okay? Il est 6 heures du matin. Okay, so in that case, you just want to insist on the fact that it's not in the afternoon, okay, but it's in the morning. Il est 6 heures du matin. Okay, so now another example, quite important, because normally French people tend to start to eat at that time. So, first option would be Il est 12, okay, because that's the number, 12 heures. Okay, and then the other option, Il est midi. Okay, so midi will be the, the, the expression we will use instead of this 12 heures. Okay, midi. Uh, quite easy to, to pronounce. Il est midi. Okay, same thing here. We've got two options. The first one would be Il est 15 heures. Okay, because that's the number. 15, 15. Il est 15 heures. All right, and then the other option we would have is to use three instead of quinze, okay? And then we can put après-midi, afternoon, okay? Il est trois heures de l'après-midi. Il est trois heures de l'après-midi. Okay, so first option, like the official one, il est quinze heures, okay? And the less formal one, the one that maybe you will use if you're discussing with friends or colleagues. Il est trois heures de l'après-midi. Il est 18 heures. Okay? Il est 18 heures. Alright, so that's the number, 18. Okay, or then you can use this 6. Okay, and in that case, when we use this six heures, we tend to think that, well, that's the limit. It's not really the afternoon, it's the beginning of the evening, so we use soir. D'accord? Il est six heures du soir. First option, il est 18 heures. Second possibility, il est six heures du soir. Okay? And now, il est 21 heures. So you don't say un. You say une, so vingt et une, just because heure is feminine, so that's the reason why you've got to put this feminine form here. Il est vingt et une heures. All right, or then the other option. Il est neuf heures du soir. Il est neuf heures du soir. Okay, here. Il est... 24 heures, ok, 24, 24, 24 heures, or then, il est minuit, il est minuit, so minuit would be like midnight, ok, il est minuit. So now, if we want to introduce the minutes, les minutes, first option would be, il est 17h10, okay, keep in mind that in French we don't write minute here, okay, just write 10, 17h10, okay, or then il est 5h10, il est 19h15, okay, 15, 15, 15, or then we've got the other option, it's to use this écart, écart, il est 7 heures écart, first one, il est 19h15, or then, il est 7 heures écart, il est 15h30, 30, 30, or then, il est 3 heures et demi, il est Trois heures et demie. And now, if we're going after 30, so, for example, here, we've got, il est 7 heures 35. So that's the first possibility, 35, 35. 
okay? But then as in many languages, it's possible to say minus something, okay? In that case, it would be 25. So you can say, il est 8 heures moins, moins means minus, 25, 25. Il est 8 heures moins 25, okay? And you can see that here as well, we don't use the minute word after. Just put the numbers, okay? Il est 8 heures moins 25. Il est 9 heures 45. Il est 9 heures 45. 45, 45, 45. Or, other option, il est 10 heures moins le quart. Moins le quart. Il est 10 heures moins le quart. Il est 11h55. 55, 55, 55. Or then, il est midi. Remember, noon. Il est midi moins 5. Il est midi moins 5. In this lesson, we'll see vocabulary and then vocabulary connected to la maison, the house. So let's start now. La maison. L'appartement, l'appartement, l'étage, l'étage, l'escalier, l'escalier, la porte d'entrée, la porte d'entrée, le garage, le garage. Ok, so one more time. L'appartement, so it's the masculine form, by the way. L'étage, same thing here, masculine word. L'escalier, same thing here, masculine. La porte d'entrée. Le garage. Ok, so let's continue now. La cave. Les poubelles, la cheminée, l'ascenseur, le portail. Ok? So, la cave, les poubelles. So, here you've got the plural form, but then if you want to put the singular form, it would be la poubelle. Ok? So, you know that... You know now, sorry, that it's a feminine word. La cheminée, l'ascenseur, okay, and it's masculine. Le portail. Let's continue. La sonnette, le balcon, le toit. La fenêtre, le grenier. Ok? So, la sonnette, le balcon, le toit, remember, final T not pronounced, la fenêtre, le grenier. Remember this uh, air here at the end will give you the sound E, nier, grenier. Today we'll work on les adjectifs qualificatifs. So adjectives that are really, really useful. And we'll see that in most of the cases, well, we will put this adjective after the name. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, travailleur, travailleuse. So when it comes to adjective, you've got to keep in mind that, of course, as usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. And after this page, we'll see the same page, but then for the plural version, because of course, we will have the difference between the singular and the plural form. Okay, so travailleur, masculine, so I will put always the first form here at the masculine form and then the feminine form here, travailleuse. Okay, so let's see 
another example. Heureux, heureuse, aventureux, aventureuse, merveilleux, merveilleuse, sérieux, sérieuse, joyeux, joyeuse, paresseux, paresseuse, naturel, naturel. So here you can see that we write them differently, but then phonetically they are the same. Listen, naturel, naturel. Okay, same way of saying them. Léger, légère, régulier, régulière, blanc, blanche, and so for these adjectives and others as well, you should put them after the name, après le nom. Okay, so let's see now the same, exact same adjective, but then at the plural form. Okay, so you can see that travailleur, you will only need to add this final S here. So phonetically it's the same, travailleur, singular form, without the S, and then travailleur, plural form, with the S, it's the same. Feminine form, travailleuse, same rule and same phonetical thing, you don't pronounce the final S, so you get travailleuse, okay? Travailleur, travailleuse. Then, heureux, doesn't change, heureuse, final S, not pronounced. Aventureux, doesn't change, aventureuse, final S, not pronounced. Merveilleux, doesn't change, merveilleuse. So final S, and then, <laughs> what a surprise, you don't pronounce it. Sérieux, sérieuse. Joyeux, joyeuse. Paresseux, paresseuse. Naturel, naturel. Léger, légère. Régulier, régulière. Blanc, blanche. Okay, so remember, they will come after the name, après le nom. Okay, but then, so, oh, sorry, we'll get some examples now. C'est un homme travailleur. J'aime la viande froide. Voici une femme heureuse. Nous prenons un repas léger. All right. So if we take one minute to look at it, you've got here, travailleur, froide, heureuse, léger. So they are adjectives. Okay. And then you've got to Keep in mind that you will have to put whether the masculine or the feminine, singular or plural form, according to the word it is connected to. In that case here, you've got un homme, it's a man, okay, so masculine, you can see here that it's the singular form, it's a, un, so you've got to put this adjective at the masculine singular form, travailleur like that, okay? In that case here, you've got la viande, the meat, meat, sorry. So you can see here that it's singular and it's feminine because it's la, the article la, okay? So you will put froid, so it's cold, okay? You will put it at the feminine form with the final e, okay? But not the plural because it's only the, here, the singular form. And then here we've got Une femme, a woman, okay, so feminine article, une, okay, and it's the singular form, so heureuse, 
here, feminine form, singular form. And then the last one, repas, it's a meal, okay? And here you can see that you get the article, so it's the singular and it's the masculine, so léger, light, should be at the masculine singular form. All right? So let's see now adjectives that uh, will come before the word, the name or the, the word, if you want. Okay, so let's see them. And we've got beau, belle, bon, bonne, grand, grande, gros, grosse, jeune. So it's in interesting here because you get only one form for the masculine and the feminine. It doesn't change. Joli, joli. Mauvais, mauvaise. Nouveau, nouvelle. Petit, petite. Vieux, vieille. Autre, same thing here as for jeune, only one form. Okay, so these adjectives will come before the word or before the name. Okay, so we'll see now the plural version and it's beau. Okay, so you put this X at the end, but then you don't pronounce it, so it's beau. All right, belle, bon, bonne, final S not pronounced. Grand, grande. Gros, grosse. Jeune. Joli, joli. Mauvais, mauvaise. Nouveau, nouvelle. Petit, petite. Vieux, vieille. Autre. All right. So let's see now. Important thing. So we've got some adjectives like beau. So the one we just saw previously. So beau. And then we will have this belle form as well for the masculine form. So let's see. Here, the reason why. So in the first sentence, merci pour ce beau cadeau. So thank you for this beautiful gift. Okay. Merci pour ce beau cadeau. So in this, in this sentence, so as we saw previously, we get to put it beau, so the adjective before the word. So cadeau, here, gift. And then cadeau is masculine, so we should put the beau form that we saw previously. In the second example here, voici un bel homme. So you could ask me the question, why do you put this bel form instead of beau? Because homme, well it's masculine, yes. The reason is that it starts with the sound O. Because if you remember carefully, H is not pronounced, so H doesn't exist phonetically. And then, for aesthetical reasons, of course, uh, we tend to think that if we would have this beau here and then homme, we would get this sentence, voici un beau homme, doesn't sound, doesn't sound nice, so we've got to put this belle form here instead of beau, okay? So, it does mean that for all the situation when you will have a word starting whether with a vowel or H and the vowel, so the H is not pronounced, you will have to put this bel form instead of beau. Okay? Remember you pronounce it bel, so like the feminine version, but then you write it B-E-L. Okay? 
Voici un bel homme. Here is a beautiful man. Voici un bel homme. OK So, now you can see the feminine form. In that case, it's quite simple because it doesn't change at all. C'est une belle table. It's a beautiful table. C'est une belle table. OK And then, quelle belle femme. Quelle belle femme. What a beautiful lady. Plural form. OK. In that case, you get to remember that you will have to put this de preposition here before. OK. Ils ont de beaux enfants. OK. And if you want to be purist, then you should put the little liaison here, the little link between the two. Ils ont de beaux enfants. Ils ont, here, you get this link as well. Ils ont de beaux enfants. OK, so, voici de belles promesses. Voici de belles promesses. Same thing if you want to use nouveau. OK, you will have two versions for the masculine form. So, you will have nouveau and then nouvelle. So, remember, if you have words, Like in that case, ordinateur, masculine words, starting with a vowel or the sound of a vowel. Okay? Example here. Voici le nouveau chef. Okay, in that case, chef, masculine, doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so you just put the normal nouveau adjective. Voici le nouveau chef. In the second sentence here, you've got ordinateur. Okay, remember, it starts with O, so the sound of a vowel, j'aime mon nouvel ordinateur. Nouvel, phonetically you pronounce it like the feminine version, but then you write it N-O-U-V-E-L. Okay, we'll see, this is the feminine version, so it goes like double L-E. Okay, phonetically it is the same, but you write it differently. For the feminine version it's quite easy, because it doesn't change. Elle a acheté une Nouvelle voiture. Elle a acheté une nouvelle voiture. C'est la nouvelle copine de mon frère. C'est la nouvelle copine de mon frère. And then for the plural form. Encore de nouveaux problèmes. Encore de nouveaux problèmes. Ils veulent de nouvelles explications. Same thing here, if you want to make the little liaison. Ils veulent de nouvelles explications. All right, remember, it was exactly the same thing. You've got to put this de, and you don't put des, okay? But you put de in both of the cases, if, the, the, if it's for the, the plural form, whether masculine or feminine. You don't put de, but you put de. Okay, so let's see now, vieux, so vieux behaves like uh, the two previous adjectives we saw, so you will have one version for the masculine form, or two versions, sorry, for the masculine form, so this one, the, the, the official way, and then the second one for the verbs, or for the words, who are starting with the sound of a vowel, like here, arbre, okay, so for normal <laughs> normal word so like chien here dog so you don't have the sound of a vowel at the beginning so il a un vieux chien okay and here c'est un vieil arbre c'est un vieil arbre feminine form vieille okay j'ai une très vieille voiture j'ai une très vieille voiture c'est une vieille table. C'est une vieille table. And then for the plural form. Voici de vieux journaux. So, same rule, remember, if you want to put this uh, de, you shouldn't put de, but de instead. Okay, voici de vieux journaux. Okay, when you put the article uh, les, it doesn't change and it's not a problem. J'aime 
les vieilles maisons. J'aime les vieilles maisons. All right. In this lesson, we'll try to see together, well, les questions, the questions, the way to ask uh, things. And especially, I would like to see uh, or to show you the difference between, well, what we could call conversation courante, so the two options, and then the last one, it would be the langue officielle or the written uh, way you could, um, well, produce these questions. So, as in many languages, we've got a um, well, difference between what you can produce orally and what you will have to write, okay? So, if we tend to think that the last option uh, would be the formal or the official way uh, to ask a question and then the two first options uh, would be less formal so the the, the way you could uh, ask questions if you are talking to friends, colleagues or persons uh, you are connected to. Okay, so let's start with the first example. So the first one, if you want to know, uh, well, the, the, the name of the, who is the, the teacher of uh, someone, okay? So the first option would be, ton prof c'est qui? Second option, so you can see that it's a bit longer, so we tend to use this, qui est-ce qui? Qui est-ce qui? You know, this est-ce est qui? That we tend to add, uh, especially at the oral form, okay? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? All right. So the important thing here for the, the, the oral and the less formal uh, questions is that you, you will have to raise your voice at the end. So clearly it should go like do 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 and then at the end, hop, you raise a little bit your voice, okay? Ton prof, c'est qui? All right, you can hear ton prof, c'est qui? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? And the official or the formal way, and it's, well, basically, it's not that uh, difficult or uh, that long, okay? But then, normally, if you want to ask a question correctly, the, 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 the official way, it should go like you start with the question, so, qui, okay, who, and then verb, est, ton, Prof. Qui est ton prof? Qui est ton prof? Okay, first one. Ton prof, c'est qui? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? Qui est ton prof? All right. Let's see another one. So if you want to ask uh, where someone is living, il habite où? So technically, you just put the, the, the words in the normal order. So il, he, Habit lives où, where. So in that case, you will have to raise your voice as well. Il habite où? Il habite où? Second option, you will have to add, as we had previously, this esque, esque, okay? Où est-ce qu'il habite? Où est-ce qu'il habite? Okay, first one. Il habite où? Où est-ce qu'il habite? And the last one, the official one. So, we start with où, where, then we put the verb, okay, here, habiter, to live, and then after that, we put the subject, il, okay, and as we've got here a vowel and here a vowel, we will have to add this t letter, and then trait d'union, or tire, here, okay, so you've got this, où habite-t-il, où habite-t-il, Okay, this is the more formal one. First one, il habite où? Second one, où est-ce qu'il habite? Last one, où habite-t-il? All right, so let's see another one. So if you want to know what someone is doing uh, in the evening, tu fais quoi? So you do, and then quoi? What? Ce soir, this evening. Tu fais quoi? Ce soir, okay, remember, you've got to raise your voice. Tu fais quoi ce soir? Again, tu fais quoi ce soir? Second option, we will have to add this esque, as we did previously, okay? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? All right, 
and the last one. As usual, you know, we start with the que, what. Then we've got the verb, fait, so to do. Uh, then you've got the subject, tu, ce soir, this evening. Que fais-tu ce soir? Que fais-tu ce soir? Okay, so let's see them one more time. The two less formal. Tu fais quoi ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Que fais-tu ce soir? And now if you want well, to know the profession of two persons, in that case they are ladies or girls, okay? Elles font quoi comme métier? So métier is profession, as a profession. Elles font quoi? Remember, faire is to do, okay? Elles font quoi comme métier? Second options. Option, sorry. Qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? So we add this esque. One more time here for the second informal way of asking a question. Qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? And then the more formal one, we start with the question. So, quelle? In that case, we put the masculine form because métier, profession, is a masculine word. Okay, so, quelle est, what is, leur, their, métier, profession. Quel est leur métier? What is their profession? Quel est leur métier? Okay, so the less formal, elles font quoi comme métier? Second one, qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? And the last one, quel est leur métier? So if you want the name of someone, remember that we use this sapelé verb, okay? So it's a reflexive verb, so it's, that's the reason why you've got this vous, vous, okay? So the first way of asking the, the, the name of a, a person, uh, well, you use this vous, okay, because it's the, the polite form anyway, because you don't know the person, so definitely you should use this vous, but then, of course, you can use this informal way of asking the name of a person. In that case, you just keep the normal order of the vous, vous appelez, so you call yourself, and then comment, how, all right? Vous vous appelez comment? Remember, as usual, raise a little bit your voice at the end, okay? Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? All right. Second option, and well, you can see now, because we've been seeing a few examples before, you can see that the second option with this S que, okay, well, it's, it's, it's informal in a way, but in it's, it can be quite heavy for uh, beginners to, to, to produce because you've got to use this esque form. So normally it's quite important to uh, recognize it and then uh, know that it's possible. If you want to use it, well, it's an option. If you don't want to use it and then you want to use a less formal way of asking a question, I would advise you to use the first one. Okay? But then it's possible. So, comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Okay. And then the last one. So the last one, the more formal one, as usually, we start with the, the question. Comment? How? Okay. And then here you can see that you will have this vous, and then you will have the verb, appeler, and then you will have the vous here. So that's, it's a bit tricky at the beginning, but then just try to remember that because it will be always the same way uh, to produce or to create a question when you will have these impersonal verbs, okay? Comment vous appelez-vous? Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, first one. Vous vous appelez comment? Second one. Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Last one. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay? The passé composé form of the verb avoir, avoir is to have, so it's quite important. So let's discover it together. First form is j'ai eu, 
Okay. Remember the difficulty with avoir at the past form. So first, remember that we saw in the previous lesson, uh, lesson how to construct this passé composé form. So you've got to use whether avoir or être here. In that case, it's avoir at the present form. And then the second part, it's what we call the participe passé. Okay. And then, of course, for avoir, it's a bit tricky. You write it like that, a u. But then phonetically, what you will have to pronounce is U. Okay? So you get J'ai U. All right? J'ai U. Tu as U. Il a U. Masculine form. Il a U. Feminine form. Elle a U. So here, let's make the little liaison, the little link between everything. Nous avons eu. Nous avons eu. Vous avez eu. Vous avez eu. Ils ont eu. Elles ont eu. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai eu. Tu as eu, il a eu, feminine form, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Le passé composé, and especially the form for être, the verb être, être is to be, remember. So we saw previously how to construct this passé composé form, okay? So I won't explain that again. If you don't know how to make it, then check the previous lessons because you can find the passé composé uh, lesson, okay? So we'll only focus on this form of être, être is to be, okay? And the first form is j'ai été. J'ai été. Tu as été. Tu as été. So masculine form here. Il a été. Feminine form. Elle a été. And then here, we'll make some liaison. Nous avons été. Nous avons été. Vous avez été. Vous avez été. Ils ont été. Okay, so you make the little liaison here as well, between the on and été with the t. Ont été. Ils ont été. Elles ont été. All right? So one thing that really, really you should remember is that even if it's être, to be, then you will have to construct it with avoir. Okay? So, j'ai été. Tu as été. Il a été. Elle a été. Nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. We will discover together the passé composé form of the verb aller, aller is to go. Okay, and remember that aller is uh, one of the tricky verbs in uh, at the passé composé form because it will use être and not avoir as most of the verbs. Okay, so that's the reason why here you will have the form je suis allé. Okay, and then you can make the liaison here. Je suis allé. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Il est allé. You get this little liaison between the two. Il est allé. Feminine form. Elle est allée. Okay, so have a look here. Remember, if you don't know that already, then I would advise you to check uh, the lesson uh, the, on uh, the passé composé that we did, we did uh, previously. Okay, so you've got to add this feminine mark at the end of your participe passé here, just because elle is feminine, and then you're using this être verb to construct the passé composé. That's the reason why. Phonetically, it doesn't exist. You don't pronounce it, so you get elle est allée 
and then for the masculine form, il est allé. So allé is pronounced the same way. But still, you have to write it. Okay. Same thing that if you get to put the the plural form, then you will have to add this s mark of the plural at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay. Nous sommes allés. You don't pronounce it. Okay, but you write it. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Vous êtes allés. Same thing here. You put it, but you don't pronounce it. And then here, masculine form. Ils sont allés. So masculine plural. You put this S. Ils sont allés. Little liaison between the two. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. Feminine and plural here. Okay, uh, S, you don't pronounce them, but still, you've got to write them. And then this little liaison here. Elles sont allées. Okay, so let me repeat the whole thing for you. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Elle est allée. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. The passé composé form of the verb parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay, so let's discover it right now. First person, j'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Ils ont parlé. Elles ont parlé. All right. So remember, passé composé, you've got to use two parts. The first one, avoir in that case, and then what we call participe passé. This participe passé form, as you can see, doesn't change for all the persons. You will have to put avoir at the present tense here. Okay. J'ai parlé, tu as parlé, il a parlé, feminine form, elle a parlé, nous avons parlé, little liaison here, nous avons parlé, vous avez parlé, same thing here, little liaison, ils ont parlé, same thing here, ils ont, elles ont parlé. Okay, okay so we'll just see one more time uh, the passé composé form of finir. Finir is to finish or to end. Okay, and let's see how it goes. J'ai fini. J'ai fini. Tu as fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Feminine form, elle a fini. Nous avons fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Remember, as we saw previously, you've got avoir here and then you've got fini. So this participe passé form, the second form that you get to add to construct the passé composé and fini doesn't change it's here all the time and it's written the same way okay j'ai fini tu as fini il a fini elle a fini nous avons fini vous avez fini ils ont fini elles ont fini les unités de mesure Ok, so let's start. Un millimètre. Les millimètres. Un centimètre. Les centimètres. Un mètre. Les mètres. Un kilomètre. Les kilomètres. Un mètre carré. Les mètres carrés. Un litre. Les litres. 
un gramme. Les grammes. Un kilo. Un kilogramme. Les kilos. Les kilogrammes. Les faux amis, so they look the same in English and in French, but then the meaning is different. Okay, so let's start now. And then the first one, it will be travailler. Travailler. Okay, remember when you get this E and then double L like that on the vowel. Y. Travailler. Okay, travailler. And it means to work. Okay. Sympathique. Remember the H. H is not pronounced. Sympathique. Okay, and it means friendly, nice. Then, rester. Rester. Regular verb from the first group, easy to conjugate. Rester. Okay, and it means to stay, to remain. Then, la monnaie. Monnaie. Okay, final uh, not pronounced. La monnaie. Okay, and it means small change. Le magasin. Le magasin. Okay, remember you've got only one S between two vowels. Then you get the sound Z, alright? And then the ending here is IN, so it's nasal, it goes in your nose, and it's un. Magasin. Okay? And it's shop. Alright? Then, la librairie. Okay, remember I here, li. Brairie, final E, uh, not pronounced. La librairie, okay, and it's a bookshop. Then, la journée, la journée, final E, uh, not pronounced, and it's day. Grand, final D, not pronounced, okay, G-R, gr, 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 and then the nasal en, grand, okay, and it means big or tall. Then, gentil. So remember this final L is not pronounced. Gentil. Gentil. And it's nice or kind. Then, attendre. Attendre. Remember, final E, uh, you don't insist on it. It just gives you the possibility to pronounce the dr, dr. Okay, so attendre. Attendre. All right, and it's to wait. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 5, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover vocabulary regarding le corps humain. Le corps humain. So let's start now. La tête. La tête. L'épaule. L'épaule. Okay, so in that case, I did put this F here, just to indicate you that it's feminine, okay, because you cannot see it here with the, the, the article L, okay, l'épaule. La poitrine, la poitrine. Le tronc, le tronc, okay, remember, final C is not pronounced here, le tronc, okay. L'estomac. L'estomac, okay, same thing here, final C, not pronounced, and then M means that this word, estomac, is masculine, okay, l'estomac. La hanche, la hanche, remember, H here is not pronounced, so you get the sound en, hanche, at the beginning. Le poignet. Le poignet. So this combination of ET at the end will basically open the sound. So you get E, E, poignet. Okay, remember, G, N, 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 poignet, le poignet. La cuisse. La cuisse. Double S and then two vowels before and after. It will give you a really strong S sound, okay? Cuisse, cuisse, la cuisse. Le genou, le genou. La jambe, 
la jambe. Okay, remember? A-M, when you combine these two, basically it's just like A-N, so it's nasal and it's en. Okay, so you get la jambe. La cheville. La cheville. Remember, double L like that after I, Y, Y. Cheville. Le pied. Le pied. Le dos. Le dos. Final S not pronounced. Okay. Le dos. Le cou. Le cou. Le bras. Le bras. Same thing here. Final S not pronounced. Le bras. Le coude. Le coude. So it's actually quite funny because the only difference between these two is this D, D at the end. Okay, so here in this one you've got le cou. Okay, and then the second one here is le coude. Okay, remember you don't insist on this final E. It only gives you the sound of D at the end. Le coude. Okay. Le nombril. Le nombril. Le doigt de pied. Le doigt de pied. La main. La main. So this combination, A, I, N, is quite interesting because it will give you the sound un. So it's really a nasal, it goes in your nose, okay? And it's un. Main. La main. Le doigt. Le doigt. Okay, so don't be frightened by this G because basically you don't pronounce it and then the final T you don't pronounce it. So the only thing you get to pronounce is this combination of three word or letters, sorry, here. D, O, I. Okay, O, I, it's wa and then D. Doua. That's the only thing. Doua. Le doua. Okay. Le pouce. Le pouce. L'ongle, l'ongle, okay, I forgot to write it, but it's masculine, okay, l'ongle, la peau, la peau, okay, remember this combination of three vowels, well, it's quite rare in French, but then, well, well, you can see it's, but then, so, the sound that you will have to pronounce when you've got the, these three vowels combined together, it's the sound O. Okay, so really simple, O. Oh, okay, so you get la peau. Okay, la peau. That's it. If you want more, then the address is here. YouTube.com slash Imagier. And then the website is here. If you want to see more material, then write me a beautiful letter or a mail. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye. Le visage, the face. So we just saw the human body previously, and so we'll continue with le visage, if that's okay with you. Let's hope so. So let's start now. Les sourcils. Les sourcils. Okay, so it's quite strange because you get this LS at the end, but then, well, you don't pronounce them. Les sourcils. L'œil, l'œil, strange combination of vowels here, okay, and then you will get the sound e and then y, œil, all right, and it's masculine by the way, un œil, l'œil, okay, plural form, les yeux, okay, so that's the tricky thing when you compare that the, the um, singular form and the plural form, okay, so l'œil, singular, and then the plural, les yeux, okay, you make this liaison between the two, les yeux, okay, final X not pronounced, les yeux, les cils, les cils, final S not pronounced, les cils, la joue, la joue, Final E, uh, not pronounced here. La joue. 
la gorge. La gorge. Okay, remember when you get this combination G and O, you get the sound go, go. Okay, so gore, gorge. And then G and E gives J. La gorge. La gorge. Le front. Final T, not pronounced. Le front. Okay, remember this nasal O N, on, on, on. Le front. Le menton, okay, same thing here, so you get two nasal, the first one here, en, and then the second one here, on, le menton. L'oreille, remember, when you get this I, L, L, and then a vowel, it's Y, Y, l'oreille, alright, and it's feminine, by the way, une oreille, l'oreille. Le nez. So remember when you get this combination, E Z here at the end of a word it's E. Le nez. Le nez. La bouche. So remember C H combined together will give you this sh sh sound. La bouche. Okay. La lèvre, remember, accent grave here, est, est, really open, la lèvre, la lèvre. La bouche, again, I don't know why, don't ask me, <laughs> I was tired when I made this one, so la bouche, one more time. La langue, remember when we've got this G and then U and then E, we get the sound G, G. Because when you combine this G and then E, remember it was the sound J, okay? So you get to put this U between the two to get the sound G, G. So you get la langue, langue, okay? La dent, final T, not pronounced. La dent. Les cordes vocales. Les cordes vocales. So you can notice that, as usual in French, you've got this mark of the plural at the end, S, and then S here as well, but you don't pronounce them, okay? Les cordes vocales. Indicateur de temps. So if you want to introduce some uh, sentences or concepts at the past, present, or future tenses, then you will have to use them. So let's start now with the past, le passé, okay? And then the first one is hier. Hier means yesterday, okay? Hier. So remember, this H here is not pronounced, okay? So hier. Then, la semaine dernière, okay? So it's last week, okay? But then if you look carefully, we've got la semaine. So semaine means week. Okay, and then dernière is coming after, okay, so la semaine dernière. And in that case, if you look carefully as well, you get dernière, so it's the feminine form, because la semaine, la, is a feminine word. Okay, so la semaine dernière, last week. And then we get this autrefois, so it could be translated like in olden days or in olden times, okay, autrefois, so a u o Fois, final S not pronounced. Okay? Autrefois. Then for the present now, we've got aujourd'hui means today. Okay? So don't be afraid by this word because it looks a bit scary if you look at it like that. But uh, take the time to, well, divide it. So the first one, A, U, O, jour, and then dui. Okay? H is not pronounced. So you only get this dui thing. O, Jour d'huit. Aujourd'hui. And it means today. Okay? Then, cette semaine. Okay? So we've got here what we call an adjective démonstratif. Okay? This, set. Okay? And it's at, at the feminine form. Set. And then, semaine, week. This week. Cette semaine. Alright? And then, maintenant. 
Okay, normally we tend not to pronounce this E, uh, okay, so we get this maintenant, maintenant, okay, now. For the future now, we've got demain, and it means tomorrow. Demain, remember, when you combine this R-E-N, you get the sound un, demain, demain, okay, then la semaine prochaine, so it's next week, okay, and as we had for the past tense here, we had la semaine dernière, okay, so last week and dernière was coming after semaine, exactly the same concept, so you will have to put prochaine, so it's the feminine form here, after la semaine, okay, so next week, la semaine prochaine, mm -hmm. and then bientôt, Okay, remember you put this accent circumflex, but you don't write it. Oh, uh, you, sorry, you write it, but you don't pronounce it. And then the final T is not pronounced. Bientôt, okay, and then you could translate this bientôt as soon. Okay, so something that will happen in the future. All right, so let's see them one more time. First one, hier. Second one, la semaine dernière. Then, autrefois. Aujourd'hui, cette semaine, maintenant, or then maintenant, okay, demain, la semaine prochaine, and then bientôt. L'expression de la quantité. So it's quite important, so I would like you to take a few minutes to watch carefully this video. And we'll start right now. L'expression de la quantité. So the first thing that we'll discover together, it's plusieurs. So plusieurs means several, okay? And so the way you will have to construct it is that after that, you will have to add an, a nom, a noun, okay? But then keep in mind that it should be at the plural form, okay? So several, and then followed by a noun at the plural form. So let's see a few examples now. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. Okay, so remember, j'ai invité, so it's the past form uh, of invité, to invite, okay, plusieurs, and then amis, friends. Okay, j'ai invité plusieurs amis. Second example, il y a, il y a, there is, plusieurs enfants, kids, dans le jardin, in the garden. Il y a plusieurs enfants dans le jardin. Ok? And then, elle a fait plusieurs gâteaux. So, faire here at the passé composé form. Plusieurs, faire, sorry, it means to, to do. Ok? Plusieurs gâteaux, cake. Ok? So, what you can see here is that ami here is with S, so it's the plural form. Ok? Here, right after plusieurs, you've got enfant with S at the plural form. And then here, you've got that gâteau with X. So it's the plural form. All right? So let's see now the second one. Uh, quelques, you don't pronounce the final S here. Quelques means few. Okay? And same thing as we had previously, you will have to add a noun at the plural form. Okay? So let's see the first example. J'ai rencontré, rencontré is to meet. So it's the past form. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues. Colleague. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues. Okay, second example. Nous avons, so it's avoir, to have, at the present form, quelques petits problèmes, petits, small, problème, problem, avec lui, with him. Nous avons quelques petits problèmes avec lui. Okay, and then the last example. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Oh, we get two dots here. I don't know why, but only one is enough. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Okay, so manger here is to eat, past form, and then bonbon, candies. So same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got collègue with S, so plural form. Okay, here it's quite interesting because we've got this adjective petit, small, little, but then it's still at the plural form with S and problem at the plural form as well. Okay? And then bonbon here at the plural form with S as well.
Okay? So now, other possibility would be ne, and then aucun masculine form, or aucune feminine form. So no or not any. Okay? And after that, you will have to put a name, or a noun, sorry, at the singular form. Okay? So ne aucun, ne aucune, plus a noun at the singular form. All right, so let's see the first example. Elle ne veut aucun conseil. Okay, so you can see here that it's elle ne veut, so she doesn't want, okay, uh, vouloir is to want, aucun, so not any, no, and then conseil, it's advice. Okay, so elle ne veut aucun conseil. Other example, je n'ai eu aucun problème. Okay, so here, est eu, so it's the verb to have at the passé composé form. Okay, je n'ai eu aucun problème. Problème, problem. So, I didn't have any problem. Il ne fait aucune erreur. Il ne fait, faire is to do, and it's the present form, aucune erreur. Error is mistake. All right? So, if you look carefully here, you get ne and then aucun. Okay? So, it's, it's the masculine form because conseil is a masculine word. Here, it's quite interesting because, as usual in French, when we get this ne and then we've got a vowel after, so it can be quite tricky. So in most of the cases, this e uh, will disappear. Okay, so you take it away. But then still, aucun is coming here. All right. And then it's at the masculine form because problem is a masculine word. All right. And then the last example, well, you've got the first part, ne. Okay. Not modified because fair starts with F, so no problem. But then it here you've got this aucune. Okay, aucune. So because... Uh, erreur is a feminine word, so you will have to put this aucune. All right, so let's proceed now. Un peu, or peu, and it means a few or few. Okay, so we'll be constructed with la préposition de, so you will have to put this de after, and then you will have to put the noun without the article. Okay, so if you want to construct this a sentence with a few or few, so remember, un peu or then peu, then don't forget to put this de and the noun without the article. Okay? Then if you want to use this autant, it means as much. Same construction, you will have to put this de and the name or the noun, sorry, without the article. All right, so as much, we use this autant de and the noun without the article. All right. If you want to use moins, moins means less. Same thing here, you will have to use de after and the noun without the article. All right, so remember, less, in French it's moins, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use plus, more, okay, in some cases you will have to pronounce it plus, okay, so you will see that a bit later, de, and then the noun without the article, all right, remember, more, plus, or then plus, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use beaucoup, beaucoup means a lot of. It, look, it looks a bit strange, huh? beaucoup, like that. Remember, you don't pronounce the final P, okay? And then you get this combination of vowels, E, A, U, and you get the sound O. So technically it's beaucoup, okay? So it's not difficult to produce orally, beaucoup. A lot of, okay? Same construction, you will have to put the after and then the noun without the article, 
Okay? A lot of beaucoup de and the noun without the article. If you want to use trop, and trop means too many, okay, then you will have to put de and the noun without the article. Okay, remember, too many, trop, don't pronounce the final P. Trop, de, and the noun without the article. All right? And then assez. Assez means enough. Okay? Assez. Remember, two vowels here, a uh, and then e. Uh, and then double S, so it's really strong, the S. Assez, assez, okay? Assez, so same construction, de, and the name, or the, sorry, the noun without the article. Okay, so enough, assez, de, and the noun without the article. Well, we'll see few colors, les couleurs, okay? So not all the colors, because we're just starting, okay? So let's see what we've got. Blanc, blanche. Okay, so I wanted to put for each color the masculine form here and then the feminine form here. Okay, so here masculine, blanc, don't pronounce the final C, and then blanche. Okay, remember when you combine this CH, you get the sound sh, blanche. Okay, so blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. So it's quite funny because you will have to add this E uh, at the end of noir for the feminine form, but then you don't pronounce it. Okay, so phonetically it is exactly the same. Noir, noir. Okay? Gris, don't pronounce the S, but then for the feminine form, grise. Remember? Grise. All right. So when you add this e, uh, basically it gives you the pronunciation or the possibility to pronounce the previous letter here. It's z, gris. All right. So gris, masculine form, feminine form, gris. Bleu, bleu. So same thing that we had for noir. You just add this e uh, at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Bleu, bleu. All right? So let's see them one more time. Blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. Gris, grise. Bleu, bleu. Okay? So let's continue. Bleu foncé. Bleu foncé. Okay, so foncé, this adjective, well, basically it will be like dark, okay, bleu foncé. Bleu clair, so same thing here, this clair adjective is like light, okay, bleu clair. Jaune, okay, so it will be the same at the masculine and the feminine form, jaune. Jaune. Rouge. So same thing here. Same form for the masculine and the feminine. Rouge. Remember, G, E, J, J, J. Rouge. Vert. So masculine form. Don't pronounce the final T. Vert. Feminine form. Verte. So listen carefully. I don't say te, but it's t, vert, vert. Okay. So as usual, this final e uh, only gives you the possibility to pronounce this t, t, vert. Okay. Marron. Same thing for the masculine and the feminine form. Marron. Les verbes impersonnels, so they are really useful and it's quite important to see them. And so we'll focus on three verbs. The first one, être, to be. Second one, faire, to do. And the last one, avoir, to have. Okay? And so the important thing with the, this uh, concept or this idea, les verbes impersonnels, is that, well, you will see in the examples, uh, they are not 
connected to a person and that's the main main concept so even if in french we use this il so the pronoun personnel il okay technically if you want to translate that directly in english it would be translated by it okay but then in french we use this il instead of it okay so let's see now for être for instance so if you use this il est uh, you will you you will <laughs> you will use this structure if you want to uh, talk about the time. Okay, for instance, we've got the the first example here. Il est tard. Tard is late. Okay, so il est tard. It is late. Il est tard. Okay, so even if we use this il, so it doesn't have the concept of he as normally we have. Okay, it's really this impersonal form. Okay, and then il est tôt. It is early okay same thing that's the reason why we, we we use this il form when we put the the when we give the time okay il est 12 heures or then il est midi 12 12 heure, hours okay and then this midi it's noon okay so il est 12 heures il est midi all right second example is faire and then it's really uh, useful to use this faire so Il fait, uh, if you want to talk about the weather, pour parler du temps, okay, pour parler du temps, so for instance, il fait chaud, okay, chaud, warm, hot, okay, so il fait chaud, so if you want to say it is hot, it is warm, then that's the structure you will have to use, same thing if you want to say that it is cold, okay, froid is cold, il fait froid, okay, il fait chaud, Il fait froid. All right? And then, if you want to talk about the, the weather, okay, in that case it's beau, okay, it's a nice weather. Il fait beau. Okay? The opposite, mauvais, bad. Il fait mauvais. All right? Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait beau. So it's a beautiful weather. Il fait mauvais. It's a bad weather. Okay, and the last one, avoir, avoir, so if you, well, we did introduce that a little uh, bit, bit earlier, but then this il y a structure is quite useful because you can, well, situer dans l'espace, parler du temps, parler de l'heure. So if you want to uh, locate in, uh, into space, they say wh where things are, or then parler du temps, talk about the weather, or then parler de l'heure, talk about the time. So that's the structure you will have to use, this il y a, il y a. Okay, so let's see one example. Il y a un parc ici. Okay, so there is un parc, a park, ici, here. Il y a des nuages, clouds. Il y a des nuages. So, even if we've got this il y a, okay, remember that it can be for the singular or then it can be for the plural as well. So this a won't change. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil, sun. Il y a du soleil. So there is sun. Il y a de la neige, snow. Il y a de la neige, okay. And then, if you want to talk about the, the time or a period, il y a 15 ans. So in that case, it's quite interesting because when we use this il y a 15 ans, technically it's 15 years ago. So this il y a will mean ago. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Okay, voyage is to travel. You've got the passé composé form here. En Chine, in China. Il y a 15 ans, J'ai voyagé en Chine. So let's see them one more time. Il y a un parc ici. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil. Il y a de la neige. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Les démonstratifs. Les démonstratifs. So we'll see two types of demonstratifs. The first one will be adjectif, démonstratif. Okay. And then the second one will be Pronom démonstratif. All right, so let's start. So we'll see for the 
adjectif démonstratif, the masculine singular form, feminine singular form, masculine plural form, and then feminine plural form. Okay? Masculin singulier, féminin singulier, masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. So let's see how they are. So when we talk about les démonstratifs, technically it would be translated in English like this. Okay? Uh, but then, of course, we've got in French the difference between the masculine and the feminine form, and then masculine plural and feminine plural. Okay, so we'll see them now. The first one, so for the masculine, so this, this, okay, adjective will be translated in French with ce, so it's the basic form, or set. Okay, so you will have to use this second option here, this set, when you will have a name or a noun after that will start whether with a vowel or then with H plus a vowel. Okay, remember this H letter in French is not really pronounced, okay, so it does it does indicate to you that well, when you get a, a word starting with the, the sound of a vowel, then you will have to use this set adjective, okay? And then feminine form is set, like that. So it's quite interesting because if you listen carefully, the masculine form here, set, and the feminine form here, set, you write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way, all right? For the plural form, so masculine plural, it would be se, okay? And then feminine plural, good news, it's the same. So we've got one form here, se, and the option set, when you've got a noun starting with a vowel after, and then set, feminine form, and for the plural you've got only one form, okay, and it's se, okay, remember, open, se, 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 okay. One example, se livre, so, this book, okay, livre is book, uh, here livre is masculine, so you will have to use the se, okay, and then it doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so it's the basic se, this book, se livre. And now we've got ordinateur, ordinateur is a masculine word, means computer, okay, but then if you look carefully, it starts with O, okay, a vowel. So this se ordinateur wouldn't be possible. So we've got to use the second option, as we saw previously. So it's set, written like that. Okay, set ordinateur. This computer. Third possibility here, we've got homme, man. Okay, uh, but then O is here. We've got this. H letter, remember, H is not pronounced, okay, so you've got the sound of O at the beginning of this word, okay, setum, so that's the reason why you will have to use the set, so it's masculine, but still setum. So now, feminine word, femme, woman, no problem about that because we've got only one option for this at the feminine form, and it's set, written like that. Set femme. Same thing here, if you've got a word like organisation, well, it's the same in English. So it starts with a vowel, but it doesn't change anything for the feminine uh, demonstrative here. Okay? Set organisation. Set organisation. And then plural. So whether it's masculine, so we've got friends here at the masculine form, so masculine plural, and then friends here at the feminine plural form, okay? But then the adjective demonstratif here, as you can see, will be the same. Ses amis, ses amis. All right? And it's quite funny in a way because if you only listen to these two things, here, ses amis, and then ses amis, you don't have really any phonetical um, information regarding the fact whether it's masculine or feminine. That's the way it is. Sorry about that. 
but so let's continue now with the uh, le demonstratif so we'll see now uh, the pronouns okay so same thing we'll see the masculin singulier then féminin singulier then masculin pluriel and then féminin pluriel okay so pronouns okay so it does mean that you will have to use these pronouns instead of the name okay so for the masculine form we will have celui-ci and then celui-là okay so we'll see the difference of use but then celui-ci celui-là uh, in english it would be directly translated as this one okay so you don't want to repeat uh, the name or uh, the thing that was previously stated so you use this this one okay in English it's easier, in French it's a bit more tricky because we will have this celui, okay, and then si and la, so you will see that normally si is coming first and then la is coming next, okay, celui-ci, celui-là, this one, all right. Same thing with the, the feminine form, celle-ci, celle-là, all right, and then for the masculine plural ceci okay remember final x is not pronounced so you get the sound ce ceci and then ce la all right feminine plural celle-ci okay don't pronounce the final s celle-ci celle-là all right so let's see a few examples now so if you ask a question quel est mon livre okay what is my book or which one is my book all right and then the answer could be votre livre your book c'est celui-ci this one okay votre livre c'est celui-ci okay and then normally when you talk or when you say that you tend to indicate that with your finger as well so you point the book votre livre c'est celui-ci. Où est ma place? Where is my seat? Où est ma place? C'est celle-là. Okay. Same thing. You tend to point it at the same time. Okay. C'est celle-là. All right. So you get to remember that we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine. Okay. So singular and plural and then we'll have the difference between this C okay the first option the nearest one okay and then this la second option so it's not the nearest one okay la description avec C so let's start so if you want to use this C option to make a description so say technically would be directly translated as, as it is or this is okay but then in French you will have to add after that the adjective but the adjective should be all the time at the masculine form okay so remember if you want to describe something okay you can use this say and that's really you know a common way to, to to describe things okay it is this is but then remember the adjective that will come after should be at the masculine form okay so we'll see a few examples now and the first one would be the option to to uh, describe uh, un lieu a place okay so let's see now c'est chaud okay it is hot warm huh? could be an option as well c'est chaud it's warm okay c'est froid cold it is cold c'est beau beau is beautiful okay and then c'est tranquille quiet okay so what you can see here is that we've got adjectives like chaud froid beau and then tranquille they are all at the masculine form okay even if I mean the place uh, would be feminine and you want to describe it remember that it should be all the time at the masculine form okay let's see another example so if you want to describe a situation for instance okay 
it would be an option. So, idéal, ideal, c'est idéal. Formidable, c'est formidable. C'est parfait. So, it's perfect. And then, c'est injuste, injuste, the opposite is of uh, ju juste, okay? And it's not fair, unfair, okay? So, c'est idéal, c'est formidable, c'est parfait, c'est injuste. Same thing here, okay? Remember that all these adjectives are at the feminine form. Okay? Let's continue now and see. So, it could be uh, for an object as well. You could describe an object, an objet. So, let's see now. C'est cher. Cher is expensive. C'est cher. C'est Utile, utile, useful. C'est beau, beautiful. C'est adapté, adapted. Okay? C'est cher, c'est utile, c'est beau, c'est adapté. Remember, all these adjectives are at the feminine, oh sorry, the masculine form. I'm getting tired now. All right, so at the masculine form, like I did say previously. Okay, so let's see now another option. So if you want to describe a dish, okay, you're eating and you want to describe a dish, un plat, okay. So, c'est très bon, okay. Très is very and then bon is good, okay. C'est très bon. C'est bon marché. Bon marché, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, this adjective here, so it's a composed adjective and it means cheap, okay. C'est bon marché. C'est salé. So remember, it's quite important because we've got the same adjective here without the accent. So if you don't put the accent, it means dirty, and then you pronounce it sale. But in that case here, okay, you put the accent, and it's quite important because in that case it means salted, okay? Salé. Okay? C'est salé. C'est Delicieux. C'est délicieux. Okay? And then same thing here. If you look all these adjectives, they are at the masculine form. Okay? So, the second option would be to put this structure at the negative form, which is not that difficult because technically you just keep, well, your structure, you just add as usual the first ne and then pa before and after the verb okay then same thing here you will put this adjective at the masculine form okay so we will basically just see one more time all the examples we had previously but then at the negative form so if you want to describe a place ce n'est pas chaud ce n'est pas froid ce n'est pas beau, ce n'est pas tranquille. Situation. Ce n'est pas idéal. Ce n'est pas formidable. Ce n'est pas parfait. Ce n'est pas injuste. An object. Ce n'est pas cher. Ce n'est pas utile. Ce n'est pas beau. Ce n'est pas adapté. And then a dish. Ce n'est pas très bon. Ce n'est pas bon marché. Ce n'est pas salé. Ce n'est pas délicieux. La salle de séjour. So let's start now. Le rideau, le fauteuil. So remember, it's a bit tricky this word. Fauteuil, teuil, fauteuil, le fauteuil. Le coussin, la cheminée, la télévision. Okay, one more time. Le rideau, le fauteuil, le coussin, 
la cheminée, la télévision. Le lecteur DVD, le lecteur de CD, la table basse, le lustre, le cendrier. Ok, one more time. Le lecteur DVD, le lecteur de CD, la table basse, le lustre. Le cendrier, le sol, la table, le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque, One more time. le sol, la table, le tapis. Remember final S not pronounced? Le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque, la cuisine. So in the previous lesson we were in the, la salle de séjour and now we're still in the house but it's la cuisine. So let's discover what we have. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur, le frigo, l'évier, l'étagère. Ok, so let's repeat them. La cuisine, le congélateur, le réfrigérateur, le frigo, l'évier. L'étagère, l'égouttoir, l'armoire murale, le four, la cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle. Ok, let's see them one more time. L'égouttoir. L'armoire murale, le four, la cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle, le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche. L'entonnoir. Ok, let's see them one more time. Le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir. Le décapsuleur. L'ouvre-boîte. Le tire-bouchon. Le presse-citron, la passoire, All right, let's repeat them together. le décapsuleur, l'ouvre-boîte, le tire-bouchon, le presse-citron, la passoire. La râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie. Ok, let's see them. La râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix. Le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie, les fruits et légumes, so fruits and vegetables. So I hope you're ready because we are starting right now. Les fruits, 
l'orange. So I did put this little F just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay? L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. Okay? So les fruits. L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. L'ananas. Le pamplemousse. La pastèque. La banane. La figue. Right. L'ananas. Le pamplemousse. La pastèque. La banane. La figue. La prune. La mandarine. Le citron. L'abricot. La cerise. La prune. La mandarine. Le citron. L'abricot. So by the way, I didn't put it, but it's masculine, just for your information. La cerise. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro, la groseille rouge. I just noticed that I've been making a little mistake here. Sorry about that. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise. La groseille à macro, la groseille rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airel rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airel rouge, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, l'oignon, le chou, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, So for your information, artichaut is masculine. L'oignon, same thing for oignon, is mascul it's masculine. Le chou. La tomate. Le chou-fleur. La pomme de terre. Le poivron. L'aubergine. La tomate. Le chou-fleur, 
la pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine. For your information, aubergine is a feminine word. L'épinard, le fenouil, le champignon. L'épinard, so it's masculine, le fenouil, le champignon. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll discover together les comparatifs. So if you want to compare in French, well, this is the lesson you should definitely watch. So in this structure, in this lesson, sorry, we'll discover three types of structures. The first one, avec un nom with the noun, second one avec un adjectif, with an adjective, and the last one avec un verbe, with a verb. Okay, so if you want to compare with these structures, then we'll start with the first one avec un nom. Okay, so if you want to compare with a noun, then remember that if you want to say more, then you will have to use this plus, de, and then here you will put your noun, after that followed by que, than, and the rest of the structure. Okay, let's see one example. J'ai plus de chance que vous. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Okay, chance is luck. Okay, j'ai plus de chance que vous. Vous is you. Alright. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Ami, friends. Nous, nous avons plus de livres que. Nous avons plus de livres que. Okay, so if I want to be really honest, and I will be, um, there is a strange thing in French language with this plus. Okay, because in some cases you will have to pronounce the final S, and in other cases you won't. So, what I would advise you to do, because uh, we are at a beginning stage, um, it would be to pronounce it each time, especially with this type of structure. So, if you want to construct it followed by a noun, then in that case, my advice would be pronounce it. Okay. After that, if you get the chance to go in uh, French-speaking countries or meet French-speaking persons, then you can listen to them and you will learn how to use it or not. Okay. But the first advice would be, if you're using this kind of uh, structure with nouns, then pronounce it. Okay. So let's see now if you want to say as. Okay. So if you want to compare, so it would be autant de followed by the noun, then with this que, then, and you continue your structure, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Okay, so I kept exactly the same uh, sentences, just to make it more clear, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Okay, so as usual in French, you know, you get this de here, but then if the word, you know, coming right after is starting with a vowel or h, h plus a vowel, then you should definitely take this e uh away, okay? Il a autant d'amis que moi. Nous avons autant de livres que, okay? And then same thing here, as you can see here, you get this que, okay, but then followed by a vowel, in that case, a uh, needs to go away, and then you get this que. All right. Then if you want to say less, it's moins in French, so no discussion about the S here, don't pronounce it, okay? Moins de, and then you put your noun, que, dan, and the rest of the structure. So let's see. J'ai moins de chance que vous. J'ai Moins de chance que vous. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Nous avons moins de livres que. 
nous avons moins de livres que. All right? So that's it. Now let's see if you want to compare and use a structure with an adjective. Donc avec un adjectif, okay? First structure, if you want to use this more, okay? So you will use this plus, and in that case you don't pronounce the S, okay? Plus. Then you put your adjective, and after that you put this que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so let's see now. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Rapide is fast. Okay. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Fort is strong. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. Okay, and in that case, well... You make this little link, little liaison between the two, so you hear a little bit this S, okay? Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right, so let's see them one more time. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right? And then, aussi, then you put your adjective que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so the same examples. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. Okay, so I'll repeat them. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. All right. And then, moins, same thing here, oh, remember, we don't pronounce the final S. Then you put the adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressé que vous. Ok, one more time. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. All right. And so the last structure, if you want to compare with a verb, then, in that case, remember, plus will be with the S. So pronounce it, plus que. Ok, let's see now. Elle parle plus que toi. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Elle parle plus que toi, il mange plus que son frère, nous voyageons plus que vous. And then, autant que. Alright, so it goes like, elle parle autant que toi, il mange autant que son frère, nous voyageons autant que vous. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons autant que vous. And the last one. Moins que. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons Moins que vous. One more time. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. And this is it. Okay. The next lesson is here on YouTube slash Imagier. And then the website is here. Imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye.
Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together, let me click, <laughs> le passé composé of the verb faire. Faire is to do and then we'll see together the passé composé form. So we, we, we did introduce the passé composé in the unit 5, okay, but I just want to check and uh, make it clear that everything is okay for you. So we'll start with faire. It will be quite fast, but still quite useful. Let's start. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Vous avez fait. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right. So to make it clear, one more time, remember that in most of the cases for the passé composé, you will have to use avoir at the present form, followed by this participe passé form. So if you're not sure how to construct that, Check uh, Unité 5 and then uh, you will see the, the, the lesson that explains everything, okay? But then we'll repeat it one more time. J'ai fait. So remember, final T is not pronounced. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Little link between the two. Nous avons. Nous avons fait. Same thing here. Vous avez fait. And same thing here. Ils ont. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right? So that's it. It was the verb faire at the passé composé. Really important. If that's okay with you and if it's clear, then you can continue. And the website is youtube.com slash imagier. Or then more material, imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Well, basically it's for important verbs. And this one, venir, to come is quite important, especially because it's a bit tricky in a way, so we'll see why. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venu. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venus. Okay, so if you remember carefully when we introduced the uh, passé composé uh, construction in the unit 5, I told you that most of the verbs uh, were constructed with avoir, but then we had the list of the verbs that requires this être verb. Venir is among them, okay, so that's the reason why you put être here at the present form, okay, and then remember that if you get to put être, then have a look. At the feminine form here, you will have to add this final E, okay, feminine singular, but then for the plural form, you will have to add this S here, here, okay, and then for the feminine plural, you will have to add this E, S. All right, but then the good news, there is a good news, yes, <laughs> it's that uh, you, you don't pronounce them, so basically you get the pronunciation venu, 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 and then the same thing, venu, you don't pronounce this final E. Uh. Venu, you don't pronounce the final S. Venu, you don't pronounce it, the final S either. Same thing here, venu, and same thing here, venu, you don't pronounce a uh, S. So phonetically, you only have one way to pronounce it, but remember, if you want to write correctly, you will have to put E uh, for the feminine, S for the plural, a s for the feminine plural. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Je suis venu, tu es venu, il est venu, elle est venu, nous sommes venus, vous êtes venus, ils sont venus, elles sont venus. So we'll see together uh, le passé composé form of pouvoir, pouvoir, can, and then uh, we'll see how it goes at the past form, this uh, passé composé form, okay? So, j'ai pu, tu as pu, il a pu, elle a pu, nous avons pu, vous avez pu, ils ont pu, 
elles ont pu. Ok, so if you remember carefully, as I said, uh, in unit 5, when I introduced this uh, passé composé form, most of the verbs are using avoir at the present form, so that's the case here. And then after that, you've got to put the participe passé. Same thing, it was introduced in unit 5, so check it if you want. And then for pouvoir, it's a bit tricky because pouvoir becomes pu like that. Only two letters, okay? But then it doesn't change. If you look carefully, then it's always the same form. Okay, so let's see them together. J'ai pu. Tu as pu. Remember, you don't pronounce the S here. Il a pu. Elle a pu. Nous avons pu. Little link, little liaison between the two. Nous avons pu. Vous avez pu. Same thing here. Little liaison between the two. Ils ont pu. Same thing here. Elles ont pu. Le passé composé. And the verb is attendre. Attendre is to wait. Okay. And so we'll see the past form. So it's just some reviews that we are doing. Uh, but they are really important. So let's see how it goes now. J'ai attendu. Tu as Attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu. Ils ont attendu. Elles ont attendu. Alright, so if you remember, when I introduced the passé composé form, I told you that most of the verbs are using this avoir verb at the present form and then the participe passé. Okay, in that case, Attendre becomes attendu at the participe passé, and then that's the form you will have to add at the end. And it doesn't change here, as you can see. J'ai attendu. Tu as attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. So, two liaisons here. Nous avons attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu, same thing here, vous avez attendu, ok, vous avez attendu, then same thing here, ils ont attendu, ok, liaison here as well, ils ont attendu, ok, but make it fast, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. The passé composé of répondre, répondre is to answer and it's quite useful, so let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. Alright, so it's not that difficult. Keep in mind that répondre, so the infinitive form, becomes répondu at the participe passé form. Okay, so the, this form that you will have to add each time here doesn't change. You know, you don't put the mask, you don't put, sorry, the feminine form or the plural form. You just keep it like that. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu, nous avons répondu, vous avez répondu, ils ont répondu, elles ont répondu. Ok Le passé composé, but this time it will be for the verb partir. Partir is to leave. Ok And then you will see that it goes like that. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est partie. Nous sommes partis, vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Ok? Remember, partir belongs to this group of verbs that requires to use être instead of avoir for the passé composé form. And for that reason, you will have here, for example, when you've got the feminine form, you will have to put this final E uh, at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? If that's plural, like it is here, you will have to add S. Okay? And it's, if it's feminine plural, you will have to add this E uh 
S at the end of your participe passé form. But um, when it comes to uh, phonetics, so what you will pronounce, the good news is that you won't pronounce these a uh, s or a uh, s. Okay, so it will go like parti, parti, and then here same thing, parti, parti, and parti. Okay, so phonetically it's not that difficult, but then if you want to write correctly, remember to put a uh, for the feminine form, s for the plural form, a uh, s for the feminine plural form. Okay, so let's see that together. Je suis parti, tu es parti, il est parti, elle est parti, nous sommes parti. Vous êtes parti, ils sont parti, elles sont parti. Ok? That's it. YouTube.com slash imagier. Next lesson is waiting for you. And then the website is here. www.imagier.net Au revoir. Le passé composé of the verb savoir. Savoir is to know. It's quite used and quite useful. Okay? But then keep in mind that this lesson regarding passé composé is the last one. Okay? So if you're not sure how to make it, remember that in Unit 5 I did a big, big, big lesson regarding le passé composé. And then in Unit 6, few verbs were, uh, well, it was possible to see them. Okay? But then after that, we won't see le passé composé Again. All right, so let's start now. Le passé composé, savoir, goes like J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su. Elle a su. Nous avons su. Vous avez su. Ils ont su. Elles ont su. All right, so for the last time, in most of the cases for the verbs, we will use avoir and then we'll use the participe passé form. In that case, savoir becomes su. Okay, so that's the reason why that's the form that you will see at the end of each forms here. Okay, and then avoir should be at the present form. All right, j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su. Vous avez su, ils ont su, elles ont su. Futur, simple. So basically it's the future tense, okay? When you want to express something that you will do, let's see how we will make it in French. So we'll see the difference between the three, uh, sorry, the three groups of verbs that we've got in French. The first one, first group, is ending with a air, remember, parler, to talk, to speak. So the idea is that in that case, for this group, you don't change anything. So you just keep the basic form, the infinitive form, all right? And after that, you will put at the end a e for je. Okay, so this will be your ending. So you just don't touch the verb, I mean, don't touch the infinitive form, you just put at the end this ending, okay? Second group of verbs, finir, to finish, to end. Well, the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verbs. You don't modify anything, you just keep your infinitive form and you will put the ending, ae, here as well. So you get, je parlerai, and then you will get, je finirai. So it's not that difficult for these two first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this e, uh, so the vowel e, uh, okay? As usual, what we'll do, we'll take this e uh, away. So we get now l e r, and after that, we just put the ending. Je lirai. All right? So it will apply for most of the verbs. Of course, because it's French language, it's not all the verbs. We've got exceptions, but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson. But still, that's the, that's the idea of uh, constructed it. If it's ending with this uh, vowel, take it away. All right? You get that. 
and after that we just put the ending. All right, so let's see. The ending for je will be a i. All right, and you pronounce it a. Remember, open a. Okay. The ending for tu will be a s. You don't pronounce the s, so you pronounce a. All right. The ending for il l will be a. Okay. Phonetically, exactly the same thing as for tu. Okay. A a. The ending for nu will be o n s as usual. Okay. Remember, you don't pronounce the final s. You get the on sound. Okay. Nasal in your nose. On on. All right. The ending for vous will be as usual a z, but then you pronounce it e. Okay. And then the ending for il l will be o n t. You don't pronounce the final t, so you get the nasal. All right. So, e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay. So let's see how it will go with parler, parler to speak, to talk. Okay. Je parlerai. Tu parleras. Il parlera. Elle parlera. Nous parlerons. Vous parlerez, ils parleront, elles parleront. All right. So as I said, just keep your basic form and just put your endings. Okay. E, a, a, on, e, on. That's it. Let's see now. Choisir to choose second group of verbs. Je choisirai. Tu choisiras. Il choisira. Elle choisira. Nous choisirons, vous choisirez, ils choisiront, elles choisiront. Same thing, remember, just keep the infinitive form, the basic form, and just, just put your endings at the end. <laughs> e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay? Let's see now. Écrire, écrire is to write. Okay, so third group, but then remember, as we saw with lire, lire, we took away this final e, uh, okay, and only with the first part, we just add after that the endings. So, j'écrirai, tu écriras, il écrira, elle écrira, nous écrirons, vous écrirez, ils écriront, Elles écriront. All right. So it's not that difficult. Okay. As I said, you take away the e, uh, and after that, e, a, a, on, e, on. All right. So of course we've got some exceptions. As I said, the first one is être. Être will become sœur. So the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change. But the endings will be the same. Okay, so the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same. Okay, so the only thing that you've got to remember is that être will become sœur. So that's the part that you will first, you will have to put and then you will combine it with the ending and it will become je serai. Okay, remember, ending for je was a i, je serai. Okay, avoir is becoming or. Okay, so tu aura. Aller will become ir. Il ira, elle ira. Faire will become fer, f e r. So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sort, S-A-U-R. Vous saurez. Voir will become vers. Ils verront, elles verront. All right, so remember, être is becoming sœur. Avoir becomes or. Aller, ir, faire, faire, savoir, 
sort, voir, vers. Okay? But then, after all these forms, you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously. So, AI for JE, AS for A, A, ONS, EZ, ONT. Other exceptions? Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir, voudre. Tu voudras. Pleuvoir, pleuvre. Il pleuvra. Devoir, d'œuvre. Nous devrons. Venir, viendre. Vous viendrez. Courir, cours. Il, elle, courront. Ok? So, pouvoir is becoming pour. And it, mean, it means can. Vouloir, voudre. To want. Pleuvoir, to rain, pleuvre. Devoir, to have to, d'oeuvre. Venir, to come, viendre. Courir, to run, cours. Okay? And then, as we saw previously, you only add after the endings. Alright? So, remember one more time. Je, ending for je, is AI. Tu, ending for tu, is AS. Il, elle, a, nous, o, n, s, vous, e, z, il, elle, o, n, t. Ok? So, e, a, a, on, e, on. Le pronom complément en. So, let's see now. Um, We can use this uh, pronom complément en, whether with a, an article partitif, so this some concept, or then it can be an article indéfini, a, in English it would be a, un, une, or then it can be at the negative form, so that's what we'll see, and then we'll start first with l'article partitif, okay? So let's see now how we can make it. So if you have a question like Nicolas, mange du pain. So, of course, first possibility that you would have to, you could have, would be to answer, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So, manger is to eat, du pain, some bread. Okay, in that case, that's really the partitive form. Okay, so you don't want to specify the quantity, but it's some. Okay, so, of course, the first option that you would have would be to answer like that, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So, you repeat everything. Normally, that's not the way we will do, because we tend to replace things with pronouns when it's possible. Okay, so the first option would be to replace Nicolas in that case. You don't want to repeat Nicolas, so you can say, oui, il, he, uh, instead of Nicolas, because it's masculine, mange du pain. So, that's the first step. Okay, the second step, you want to replace this du pain. Okay, so this partitive thing. And that's when this pronoun en is used. All right, so oui, il, en, mange. Okay, so in that case, you use this il just to avoid repeating Nicolas because it was previously stated. And then you want to use this en the pronoun, just to avoid repeating du pain, because it was in the question. Okay? Oui, il en mange. So, remember that this en pronoun should be before the verb. Okay? So, let's see now another example. In the first example, we had the masculine form, and now I wrote same sentence, but then here we've got de la salade. Okay? Salade is feminine word, so in that case it's not du, 
but then it's de la, okay, but still it's the partitive form, some, okay. Nicolas mange de la salade, okay, so as we saw, first option would be oui, Nicolas mange de la salade, so you repeat the whole sentence. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas, oui, il mange de la salade, okay, and the last option, you don't want to repeat either Nicolas nor uh, de la salade, so you get oui, il en mange, okay. Let's see now if you've got de l'eau. Nicolas boit de l'eau. Oui, Nicolas boit de l'eau. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il boit de l'eau. Third option, will, sorry, oui, il en boit. Okay, same rule, en goes before the verb. Boire, here. It's the, the infinitive form is boire and it's to drink. Okay? De l'eau, some water. D'accord? Okay, let's continue now. Second structure, if you want to use le pronom en instead of an article indéfini. So let's see how it goes. In that case, you know, you've got a question. Nicolas mange un biscuit. So it's quite interesting because the difference between what we had previously with the, the, this partitif, some, uh, when you use this partitive form, you don't really um, give any information regarding the quantity. In that case, you use un, so that's clear, it's only one. Okay? Nicolas mange un biscuit. First answer, oui. Nicolas mange un biscuit. Same thing as previously, you just put everything again. Second possibility, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui. Il mange un biscuit. All right. Last option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas and you don't want to repeat biscuit. Okay. The, the difference here between what we saw with the partitif and now is that you've got the, here you've got the quantity. So you know exactly how many or how much. Okay. So you get to put that at the end of your sentence. Oui, il en. So you put your pronoun here before the verb. And after that, you put un. Il en mange un. All right? So let's see now if it's feminine. Une banane. Nicolas mange une banane? Answer. Oui, Nicolas mange une banane. Oui, il mange une banane. Oui, il en mange une. Okay, so the information that you've got now is that you will have to put the masculine or the feminine form after. Okay, here you put une because banane is a feminine word. All right? So let's see now. Nicolas mange des céréales. So here we've got the plural form. Oui, Nicolas mange des céréales. Oui, il mange des céréales. Oui, il en mange. All right. So basically, when you've got the plural form for des céréales here, you don't put anything after your verb. All right. So when you use this article indéfini, you will only need to put something after your verb if it's un or une or then in other cases, but we will come to that a bit later, okay? So, let's see now la forme négative. Nicolas ne mange pas de céréales. Okay, so you've got the question, but here you've got the ne and then the pas, so you know that it's négatif. Nicolas ne boit pas d'eau. So, let's see the, the answers. Non, il n'en mange pas. Non, il n'en boit pas. Okay, so the concept is still the same. You put your pronoun here and here before your verb. And then, as usual in French, normally you should have your ne coming here. But then, look, the pronoun is starting, is starting with a vowel, starting with e. Okay, so you should take this e away. All right. Il n'en mange pas. Il n'en boit pas. All right? 
And then le pronom en, well, it can replace the preposition de plus a noun, and especially a noun for a thing. Okay, so let's see now. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Okay. Est-ce que Frédéric est content? Content is to be happy, satisfied, okay, de son nouvel new ordinateur, computer. D'accord? Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? All right. So it's exactly the same concept. You could answer, I mean, you could make a, a long, long answer uh, reusing every, every uh, objects or everything in the, the, the question but then in that case we'll try to go a bit faster and so we don't want of course to repeat de son nouvel ordinateur here okay so the concept is that we will use this pronoun en instead oui il en est content all right so en same thing here before the verb And then after that, of course, you continue your sentence because satisfied should be in the answer, okay? So, oui, il en est content. Negative form, non, il n'en est pas content. So, same thing, en stays before the verb. And then you've got the first part of the negation, ne, but then e is going away, all right? Oui, il en est content, non, il n'en est pas content. Est-ce que Frédéric parle de son chef Oui, il en parle. Non, il n'en parle pas. Ok So, same thing, same concept. Just put it before the verb. Ok When you get the negative form, then you should take this E uh, away from the first part of your negative form. Il n'en parle pas. Est-ce que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Okay. Avoir besoin, it's to need. Okay. Notre aide, our help. Est-ce que, est que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Same thing here. We don't want to repeat de notre aide. So, oui, il en a besoin. Non. Il n'en a pas besoin. All right. And now, let's see how it goes when you construct it with one verb, avec un verbe, with two verbs, with two verbs, avec deux verbes. And then if you construct it with one verb composed, like for the passé composé, for instance. So let's see now, avec un verbe, with one verb. So you've got a question. Laurent prend un biscuit. Oui, il en prend un. Non, il n'en prend pas. So remember, we saw that previously. Huh? If you've got un biscuit, in that case, you've got to state the amount here. Un, okay, so in that case, it's masculine. Un biscuit, so it's un. Oui, il en prend un. Okay, so you put un before the first verb. Non, il n'en prend pas. Laurent prend deux biscuits. Oui, il en prend deux. Okay, so in that case, you get to put the amount. Il en prend deux. So it would be the same if, we, if you would have trois biscuits, three. In that case, you would put oui, il en prend trois. But then keep in mind that if you put the negative uh, answer, non, il n'en prend pas. So you don't need to state uh, the amount. Okay, il n'en prend pas. Now, we'll see the same structures, but with two verbs. And so, the best way to construct with two verbs, if you want to make examples like that, is to construct that with the near future. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. He's going to take a biscuit. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Oui, il va en prendre un. So, the interesting thing here is that if you look carefully, you've got first... Aller here, so the first verb is here, and then you've got the second verb here, so it's 
at the infinitive form because that's the rule in French when you construct with two verbs the second one will be at the infinitive and keep in mind that your pronoun en here should be before the second verb okay so I'm not going to tell you that it should be between the two because you could have other things between the two okay it should be before the second verb oui il va en prendre un Okay, and you get a good example here for the reason why I told you it should be before. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. All right, because here you get your aller verb, va, but then you get the negative form, ne va pas. But then your pronoun should be before the second one. Okay, il ne va pas en prendre. Let's see now. Laurent va prendre deux biscuits. Answer. Oui, il va en prendre deux. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Okay? So let's see now when you've got a composed verb. So we just need to put the same sentence at the passé composé form. Laurent a pris un biscuit. Oui, il on a pris un. Okay? So, the important thing now is to try to remember that when you've got this form, a pris, even if you've got two parts, well, technically you don't have two verbs, you've got one verb. Okay? So, your pronoun en should be before the verb, so it means before a here. Okay, one common mistake is to put this en between the two. Okay, because you tend to think that maybe you've got two verbs, but no, 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 no. It's here, okay, il en a pris un. Negative form, il n'en a pas pris. All right, non, il n'en a pas pris. Laurent a pris deux biscuits. Oui, il en a pris deux. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Le pronom complément Y. So in the previous lesson we saw another pronoun, so it's uh, the pronoun uh, en, okay, and in that case, in this lesson we'll see le pronom Y. Well, you pronounce it I, of course. So le pronom Y, we'll see that it can replace un lieu, a place, okay, or then it can replace la préposition a and then a noun of thing and then we'll see how to construct it when you get a negative form, okay. So let's see now for a place, un lieu. So let's see a question. Isabelle va en Finlande. So va, remember, it's aller, okay, and then en Finlande, in Finland. Isabelle va en Finlande. So, of course, you will have many options to answer to this question. The first one would be maybe the more logical. Oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. So, you just take all the elements that you had in the question and then you answer with that. Of course, in many situations, we won't because French people like to use pronouns when it's possible. So, the first option that we would have is to uh, avoid repeating Isabelle, okay? So, elle va en Finlande, all right? And the other option we would have would be to avoid repeating this en Finlande, okay? So, it's a place, it's a country, okay? And in that case, it does mean that it would be possible to use this Y, so I, you pronounce it I, okay? So, oui, elle, I, va. So keep in mind that it's a pronoun and then it should be here just before your verb. Okay? Elle y va. Alright, so oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. Oui, elle va en Finlande. Oui, elle y va. Okay, so let's see another example now. So if you're using a name of a town because previously we had a country and now it's a town and so it's Paris, okay? Isabelle va à Paris? So it's a question. Of course, you can answer like we saw previously. Oui, Isabelle va à Paris. First option, repeat everything, no problem. 
Second option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle. Oui, elle va à Paris. And then, last option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and then Paris. Oui, elle y va. All right? And now, it's a place. Cinéma. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Repeat everything. Second one, you just don't want to repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle est au cinéma. All right? Third one, just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. All right? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Oui, elle est au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. Second situation when we can use this pronoun I or Y, it's when you replace it. When you replace this preposition A and then a noun of thing. Let's see now. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense, pense is to think, à son examen, exam, okay, to think about. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense à son examen? First option, repeat everything. Oui, Isabelle pense à son examen. Second option, you just don't repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle pense à son examen. Third option, you don't repeat Isabelle. And same thing for à son examen. So, oui, elle y pense. All right? Same concept, remember, y should come before the verb. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis so in that case, remember, it's O, but then O is clearly the combination of the preposition A and then the article LE tennis, THE, okay? So when you combine these two, you get this O tennis. So still, it does give you the information that it is the preposition which is modified. So still, it's possible to use this pronoun, OUI. Isabelle joue au tennis. Repeat everything. Second one, oui, elle joue au tennis. And the last one, oui, elle y joue. All right? So you can see that it's, it's, it's quite short. It's quite short, but it's quite useful because you don't need to repeat all the things that were stated in the, in the question. Okay? So remember, as usual, the pronoun should come before the verb. All right? So now we'll see how to construct these sentences with the pronoun Y, but then when you're using this negative form, okay? Est-ce qu'ils a... Sorry. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis? First option. Oui, elle y joue. Second. Non, elle n'y joue pas. All right? So negative form should be before the pronoun here. Okay, and then as usual, remember the N followed by a vowel, they don't really get along, so E should go away. So you take it away and you get NI, JOU, and after the verb, you put your PA form. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, elle y est. Non, elle n'y est pas. Same thing, okay? Negation here before your pronoun, but then E uh, is going away, and then PA after your verb. Okay, so let's see now how you construct it with one verb. Alexandre va au concert? Oui, il y va. Non, il n'y va pas. Okay, so no changes from what we saw previously. Okay, so before your verb, and then here, when you get the negative form, your ne is coming before the pronoun, and then your pa is coming after your verb. Okay? When you get two verbs now. Alexandre va aller au concert? So it looks a bit strange, sorry about that, is going to go at the concert. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's just, just to show you how it works and I don't want to, to, to change the, the sentence, okay? So, oui, il va y aller. Okay, so you can see here now that this pronoun y should be before the second verb, okay? Il va y aller. Negative form, non. 
il ne va pas, okay, so your negative form is before and after the first verb, and that's the key thing, okay, and then your pronoun is coming after, before, so your, your second verb, okay, so your pronoun e should be always before your second verb, okay, and now let's see how it will work if we've got Compo compose tense like uh, tense like um, aller here and it's at the passé composé form so Alexandre est allé au concert okay it's the past tense oui il y est allé okay so keep in mind that even if you've got two parts here okay it's only one verb huh? it's the verb aller at the passé composé, okay, so it's composed, so we've got two elements, but still it's one verb, so it means that your pronoun Y should be before, il, i, est, allé, all right, and then the tricky thing, normally it's the negative form at the passé composé, look, non, il, so you put first the negative part, so ne, Obviously, this E uh, is going away because you've got a vowel, okay, as usual. Il n'y est, and then you put, as we saw previously in uh, Unit 5, or I don't remember, I guess it was Unit 5 when I introduced the passé composé, you put this pas here between être and your participe passé form, okay? So, non, il n'y est pas allé. All right. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, Leçon A. And in this lesson we'll work together on the adverbs, les adverbes. And to be more precise, we'll see three cases. The first one will be with an adjective, an adverb. Second situation will be with un verbe. And then the last one will be with une phrase. Okay, so let's see that. Right now, the first case we'll discover or we'll work on will be with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so let's see. The idea would is normally that the adverb should be placed, adverb placé, devant, before the adjective or the other adverb. Okay, so if you've got a structure with one adverb and one adjective, your adverb should be placed before the adjective. If you've got two adverbs, then this one should be before the second one. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, first example, ce thé est trop chaud. Okay, ce thé, thé is tea, of course, and then here we've got the demonstratif. This tea is too hot. Okay, so we've got the adjective chaud here, and then this trop should be before the adjective. Okay. So it's quite easy. Uh, another possibility here, you've got two adverbs. So this one, trop, two, and then rapidement, well, fast, okay? And then parler is to talk. Il parle trop rapidement. Okay, so obviously this trop, uh, too fast, uh, should be before rapidement. Okay? And then, last example, ce film est assez intéressant. Ce film est assez, assez, enough, intéressant, interesting, okay, so assez comes before intéressant. All right, so remember, if you've got one adverb, then you should put it before the adjective or the second adverb. All right, so let's see now how you will construct it if you have a verb. So the rule goes like that. L'adverbe est placé, is placed, so the adverb is placed en général, in general, so that's quite important in French because, of course, we've got exceptions all the time. We will have exceptions in French, but en général, okay, après, so after the verb, okay, adverbe placé en général après le verbe. So let's see how it goes now. Je... Lis, lire, lire is to read, okay, so it's the present form, je lis, I read, rapidement, okay, so fast, je lis rapidement, so you can see that this rapidement, fast, comes after your verb here, lire, okay, second example now, elle 
parle, parler to talk, doucement, ok, quietly, elle parle doucement, same thing here, your adverb is coming after your verb, alright, and then the last one, il conduit, conduire is to drive, il conduit très bien, very well, sa nouvelle voiture, his new car, il conduit très bien, sa nouvelle voiture. So, as you can see here as well, this très bien, very well, is coming after the verb conduire, to drive. All right? So, remember, the adverb is placed in general after the verb. Okay? And then, be careful, of course, if you construct it at the passé composé tense. So remember we saw that previously, you should check the unit 5 if you want to know how to construct this passé composé. But then for the passé composé we will have of course some exceptions. The exceptions are assez, enough, beaucoup, a lot, bien, well, déjà, already, Mal, bad, mieux, better, trop, too, too much, too, okay, toujours, always, and then presque, almost, okay, so assez, beaucoup, bien, déjà, mal, mieux, Trop, toujours, presque. So, try to remember them, and then in the next page, I will show you how they change. So, if you take this trop, remember it was too much. So, je parle trop. I talk too much. So, if we've got the, the present form as we do here, basically it does respect the rule as we saw previously. So, it comes after the verb. Okay, je parle trop. But then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, okay, so remember, passé composé, you've got avoir or être, and then after that you get this participe passé form, all right? So you will have to put this adverb, trop, between the two here. J'ai trop parlé. All right? Let's see now another example. Il se repose. Se reposer is to, re is to rest. Okay? Il se repose beaucoup, a lot. And then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, il s'est beaucoup reposé. All right? Il s'est beaucoup reposé. So remember, present here, present form, you've got this adverb. It's coming after the verb, but then here, it must be here, so between the two. Okay? Another example. Je dors mal. So, dormir, it's to sleep. Okay? Mal, bad. Passé composé form. J'ai mal dormi. So, same thing. Doesn't come after, but it's right here. Okay? Elle sourit. Toujours. Sourire, to smile. Toujours, always. Present form, elle sourit toujours. And then, passé composé form, elle a toujours souri. Alright. And now, let's see if you want to make a sentence. Because you will have to remember that in some cases, well, the place of the adverb can change. A variable. Okay, so let's see. You've, you've got an example here. Malheureusement, so malheureusement means unfortunately. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Perdre, it's to lose. Okay, ses clés, her keys. Okay, and it's the passé composé form. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Okay, so that's one option. So you can start here, as you can see. You start with the adverb. And then you continue your sentence, all right? But then, it would be possible as well 
to change the order and to start like elle a perdu ses clés malheureusement okay so you can see that it's possible to start with the adverb or then you can end with it as well so it's possible to move the adverb in this case it doesn't need to be at the right beginning of the sentence okay we'll see another example récemment récemment means recently il a décidé okay décidé to decide de changer to change de travail travail is work okay récemment il a décidé de changer de travail okay and it will be the same here if you look carefully you can start with il a décidé de changer de travail so the same portion that we had here you can start with it and then you put récemment at the end okay so in some structures well keep in mind that it's possible whether to start with the adverb or that to end with the adverb if you want okay uh, well it's for, <laughs> for once it's quite easy in French all right okay so I hope it was clear so this was the first lesson of unit uh, seven unit set if you want more lessons well you can find them here and then the website is waiting for you imagier.net have a great day bye bye